Members, the Right Honourable the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 13th of April 2021. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their life in defence of their country, at sea, on land and in the air? Thank you. Members, please be seated. Members, that takes us to item five on tonight's agenda, which is apologies and leave of absence, of which I have none. And item six is the confirmation of minutes from the third, uh, 9th of March and the 23rd of March. If I could have someone move the minutes, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder, thank you, Councillor Mackey. Uh, members, if not, can we vote? The minutes be accepted. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, deputations, member, um, for item number seven, we did receive a deputation uh, which was not allowed um, due to it coming in outside of the required time frame. Uh, it was a request from David Burton in relation to item 10.4 on tonight's agenda, which is the uh, land management agreement. Um, Members, I have at 8.1 a petition. I would ask that uh, members accept the petition. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Second to Councillor Abraham today. Members in favour? Those in favour? Those against? That is accepted. Um, at item 9.1, uh, we have the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. I ask for a member to move the advice. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Second to Deputy Lord Mayor. Members? If not, to the move it to summer. Are we not taking the two advices? No, I just, uh, I'm doing, yes, 9.1 together. Um, sum up. Sum up, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. At 9.2, members, we have advice and recommendations of the audit committee from the 19th of March, and I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Seconder, Councillor Hyde. Members? If not, back to the mover to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, 
those against, that is carried. Um, members, I have a, uh, a late update I need to present to you in confidence. And as we have an external legal consultant attending in support of this matter, I seek your leave to bring the item forward. Um, this is only a brief update for your noting. Um, could I also suggest that there's one other confidential matter on the agenda for tonight and that we deal with them both together, and that's item 11, which is for um, item 12.1.1, which is the expression of interest results for the Rowan Club building. Um, and then we'll, uh, if, if I can actually have leave that we can bring that forward. Members, happy we bring that forward, thank you. Um, so I'll proceed to the exclusion. Uh, members in the gallery, um, we, we will go to exclusion and then go to the main reports. Um, hopefully we won't be very long. Um, so councillors, two items for considerations. These require a motion and decision to order exclusion of the public to enable consideration in confidence. If I can have a move and a second of for a motion to order the exclusion of the public item 13.1, which is presiding members report CEO update. Look for a mover, Councillor Hyde and a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, does anyone wish to speak? If not, to the move to sum up. Councillor, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. The second is, uh, I'll move in a seconder to order the exclusion for 12.1.1, which is the expression of interest results for the Rowan Club building, Red Gum Park, Harawira, part 12. I look for a mover, Councillor Canal, seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak? Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor uh, Martin. Sorry. Yeah, look, uh, Lord Mayor, I do wish to speak. Um, and it is because this item is uh, of a nature that it does not require a confidentiality order. There is but one party involved. And the consequence of our hearing this in confidence is that there's a lot of speculation. And in fact, I was con contacted by the media uh, and asked directly if this was a proposal for the Adelaide Crows and uh, something that was close to Adelaide Oval. And uh, while that might seem surprising to you and to me, because we know what's in there, uh, given the speculation that abounds about any aspect of the parklands and the Adelaide Crows, to place this on the agenda was to invite, uh, uh, to place it on the agenda in confidence, was to invite um, uh, that kind of speculation. Now, I urge uh, the council to not hear this in public, uh, to hear this in public, not in confidence, uh, or at a minimum for it to be released immediately, this meeting concludes, uh, because it's just unwanted confidentiality. It is a simple process, a proper process with a clear outcome, uh, and its quick dissemination to the community generally uh, will aid enormously in quieting down some of the rumours that are spreading through the city. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and I'm sure that administration will lift the confidentiality as soon as possible. And I think it's in the recommendations. Um, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, so it looks like members, any members.
Councillor Hyde. Uh, I wish to move an alternate to 10 1. I would wait one moment while I just um, wait till people come back into the gallery. Um, I actually am going to do a call over on, on block. So you can call 10 1. Okay, members, I am going to uh, do a call over and see if any of these, if you let us know if you want to call them out. Um, so, members, 10.1. Thank you. 10.2. Councillor Martin. 10 10.3. 10.5. 10.6. 10.7. 10.8. 10 10.9, 10.10, 10.11, which, uh, yes, we know that's, hang on. Sorry, 10.12 and 10.13. So, members, uh, I would like someone to move on block 10.6, 10.9, 10.10, 10.12. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Second to be Councillor Kira. Uh, Councillor Abraham's, oh, members. Could we have those numbers again? Ten, so, what's been called out is 10.6, 10.9, 10.10, 10.12. Uh, no, I called out 10.9. Sorry, did anybody count call out 10.9? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Councillor Martin. Apologies, Councillor Martin. So we have 10.6, 10.10, 10.12. Uh, moved and seconded. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Six, ten, twelve. So we go to 10.1. Councillor Hyde. Uh, I have that alternate. Um, so members want a moment to read it or please. Thanks, I, I need a seconder, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Councillor Abrams. Um, what this alternate does is, is tidy up some parts of the policies, Lord Mayor, and removes um, uh, some of the vagaries in there. As came through in committee, um, there was, I think, general concern from the elected body that we are um, uh, talking about talking about facilitating things without any targets on them, without any percentages on them. Um, you know, the, the concern from some members was that we just do the 15%. The concern from someone like myself is that this policy would enable uh, an activist administration to go and draw up plans for council ratepayer owned land that may have 50% um, uh, uh, target on there. So um, by removing the facilitation aspect of it, um, it firmly cements council's role as an advocate in this space. Um, rate players' money is not there to be played with. It's not there um, uh, to play monopoly with, putting houses and hotels here and there. It's there to serve the community. It's there to maintain our infrastructure. It's there to deliver community programs. Um, uh, this, the changes that I'm proposing to this policy, which is before us, firmly cement our role. Um, uh, we know that we do a lot for homelessness. We have done a lot. In fact, I would say that we've pioneered um, the, the policy that has currently been adopted by the state government, um, the collaborative approach. Um, never mind that we didn't have the competing alliance funding model. We just brought everyone around the table and got them to work together. That's fantastic. That's very much what our role is. We can help with policy. Um, you know, we're leaving in, or I'm proposing we leave in advocacy on mandatory inclusion, inclusionary zoning, and that sort of stuff. We can advocate. We can talk about planning. Um, uh, but what we don't do as a small local government area of 25,000 people 
is pay for community and social housing ourselves. That's completely outside of our purview. I think a lot of our ratepayers would expect that we do things like fund our critical infrastructure, which we'll be talking about later today, as opposed to putting their hard-earned money um, towards these sorts of projects which lie with other levels of government. Councillor Abrams, did you wish no, to speak? No. Members? Yeah. Councillor Martin? Um, look, Lord Mayor, this has uh, generated uh, a deal of discussion uh, through the community and quite surprisingly, I hadn't expected people uh, to pay much attention to this policy. Um, but I was uh, accosted uh, by a ratepayer, um, uh, a normally friendly one, um, who said to me, uh, essentially, you blokes should hang your heads in shame. And uh, the nub of the argument that was put to me is that this is actually a, a conservative political agenda. That is, um, moving away from uh, some of the things that the council has for some years been at the forefront of. Um, apart from uh, uh, rate concessions to uh, some organisations, we've always not rated or reduced rates uh, and putting 30 grand into a housing study uh, by the state. We've moved from being an active uh, participant in many of these areas, in homelessness in particular, to a, basically a non-combatant. Um, on homelessness, we were an innovator and a leader. Um, we were funding to the tune of hundreds of thousands, the Dunstan Foundation, to get people off the streets and to have functional zero uh, rough sleeping. Uh, the Homelessness Alliance asked for our continuing instruction financial support. And in this report, the City of Adelaide has pretty much replied, no, that's not on. And, and at a time, extraordinarily, when Sydney, Melbourne and Hobart have all taken up pretty much the work that the City of Adelaide was doing. Um, uh, and uh, there are, uh, if you would care to have a look at uh, the websites, for example, for the City of Melbourne, you'll see all of those initiatives. Um, we have effectively become uh, the national laggard when it comes to homelessness rather than the trendsetter. Um, we've not even committed to continuing funding organisations like the Adelaide Day Care Men's Centre um, uh, and, and others, including the Hutt Street Centre. Uh, they provide uh, services to the homeless, uh, but as the administration says in uh, one of the documents here, that's, that's under review. In fact, so under review that there's nothing in our uh, budget or business plan that identifies that. And uh, on social housing, um, noting that it proposes that we're simply an advocate or a facilitator. Uh, the very report we're reading says in postcode 5000, there are 18,000 families uh, feeling rental stress. A and extraordinarily, I can't imagine why that doesn't figure prominently in our thoughts. And the very same report says uh, that uh, if you are living in postcode 5000, and earning less than $1,300 a week, $1,300 a week, way above the average wage. Uh, all addresses in postcode 5000 are either unaffordable or severely unaffordable. Um, Lord Mayor, may I have uh, 30 seconds? Members? I need to say show of hands, members, if we're going to fill out. Thank you. Um, and uh, the other thing which is causing some anxiety is our policy setting to be a provider of social housing. Now, I know that uh, uh, Councillor Hyde addressed that a moment ago and said that uh, that's uh, part of the intention. But uh, I guess that the uh, what the sector is feeling is a, a bit of a kick in the, the guts is uh, when at our committee meeting, uh, Director McCready said basically uh, that we, uh, with changing subsidy arrangements, uh, would need to look at selling down our uh, social housing. That is uh, to sell off uh, about 50 plus residences in uh, the city, potentially, and I know we're a long way from that, but potentially. And if that were to happen, then inevitably people would be tipped into the streets. So uh, I understand the, the, the depth of feeling in the community when uh, people accost me and say, hang your head in shame. Um, 
But I do think that uh, to support this um, is such a reversal to our previous positions. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, well, the original motion was a diminution, and I understand in tight uh, I was prepared to vote for it. I won't be voting for this. Homelessness is a serious issue. You can see it in our streets, particularly in our streets. Um, in the city of Adelaide, we should be stand, we should be put shoulder to the wheel with the other levels of government. Um, we shouldn't be taking over. I agree with Councillor Hyde there, but we should be doing our utmost because it is such a serious social issue. Um, when you look at uh, removing clauses relating to facilitating community housing track changes as necessary, I mean that just removes a huge part of the second one. Remove the clause related to facilita facilitating fixed price purchasing and track changes as necessary, well, that just completely cuts this whole thing off at the knees. Uh, humorously, the, the, the part C, it is aimed at low and middle income earners rather than key city workers. I mean, a key city worker could be a surgeon, an anaesthetist, a dentist. That is certainly not who this is uh, aimed at. This, don't be fooled, this is a hardcore conservative policy change. It is not helping the homeless. It is completely uh, nullified, negated um, our policy. We don't have one anymore. If you if you accept these changes, we're not helping at all. Members, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I don't support these changes. Um, I think that if we are to accept the current policy as has been proposed, it already makes it very clear that housing provision is not the primary focus of council. However, with these additional changes, essentially, we're saying, as Councillor Moran just specified, that we're, we're shifting the focus with point C and talking about key city workers instead of the very intention of this policy, which is around homelessness and social and affordable housing. And in the very first point, we're saying we have zero role whatsoever in this area. We're saying not only, and, and that is a substantial shift from where we currently sit. And I think very importantly, if we were to make this very substantial shift, then it would require public consultation because I would suspect that if we took this to the community and said, would you give some of your rates to be used as rate rebate for those who are homeless, who are living on the streets, who are living rough in the city of Adelaide, I would suspect that the majority of our ratepayers would be very happy to see their rates used for that purpose. So I certainly would not suggest that we should be supporting these amendments without a significant consultation. It would be uh, making assumptions based on zero information back from the community. And I think our uh, policy team has done an excellent job in, in uh, shaping the policy to date. Members? Councillor Mackey. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I too, and following your um, statement at the last meeting, I rise to speak against this motion. Um, uh, as is noted in part eight of the discussion, um, that uh, the outcomes of the workshop seem to indicate that we have retreated from any kind of active role other than advocacy in relation to supporting homeless people experiencing stress. Um, I certainly did not speak in favour of that at the workshop. Um, it concerns me that the Zero Project, that councils retreat from support for the Zero Project um, means with nothing to replace it, means a further diminution. And I, I really do reject the analysis that says we are a tiny council of only 25,000 people. We are a capital city council who derives almost half of its income from business operations, largely car parking, and we have the CBD commercial rate uh, hall, uh, which exists for us to behave and perform and provide services like a capital city council. We have within our council uh, catchment area, not only a lot of um, our services that are designed to support uh, homeless people, we have the primary healthcare services that support not only homeless people, but a lot of people who, who live on social wage or who live on low income. Um, we are, we're, a, we're a city with a proud history and tradition of support for um, uh, mitigating the impacts of homelessness. I, I, I really would hate to see us go backwards. Members? 
If not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, first, I'd like to correct some of the misconceptions. First of all, yes, our grants are under review um, as they should be and as was recommended by KPMG and the Audit Committee. And I think that recommend, recommendation came through while Councillor Martin was on the Audit Committee. Um, so first correction. Second correction, this policy, this policy is a new policy. We have no policy in this space at the moment. To, so to say that my suggested changes which clarify certain points will actually take us a step backwards is a complete mischaracterisation. Uh, we are moving forwards either way. Um, what I'm worried about is if councillors understand how policies are used, they are used by the administration in the 99% of work that they do that we're not privy to. And so what I am concerned about is if we have parts of this policy which enable things which we're not even contemplating right now, then they will go away, they'll do that work, they'll spend lots of time and effort going and doing it and bring it back into council. That's what I'm concerned about. Now, um, when we're talking about community housing, the rebate that we provide to the community, house, community housing providers was there before this policy, and it will be there after this policy, regardless of whether my changes are carried or not. That exists, it's legislated. I think much of it, there's 75% of it at least. So um, uh, to, to say that this is a great step backwards, I think is a complete is a complete misnomer and it's actually wrong. And, and Lord Mayor, I just reflect that um, us as councillors, we do need to know our place and our place is roads, rates, rubbish. That's what most people were elected here for. Um, and in fact, the only person who ran on a platform of more social housing has recently resigned. The same person that requested this policy is no longer here to consider it. So um, when I look around the room, I see uh, common sense people representing their ratepayers, and the ratepayers are telling me that we should not be dabbling in things that are the purview of state government or federal government. We should know our role, we should know our place, and dare I say, Lord Mayor, we should get those jobs right before we start going and trying to solve the problems of other governments. Let's solve our own problems first, of which we have plenty, before we start trying to save the world. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Members' division's been called. All, all members in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abrahamsado. Uh, members, uh, we have 10.2, which is Homelessness Services Coordination Feasibility Study and Aboriginal Mobility Data Report. I look for a mover, thank you, Councillor Hyde. I look for a seconder, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? Um, only to say that I'm very, very pleased that this funding, which I first moved for, for homelessness, and I'm one of the only councillors, if not the only, to move that we do give more funding to the Adelaide Zero Project. Um, of course, that funding was contingent on uh, a 50-50 state government funding. It's very disappointing that they haven't um, uh, come to the table. This is a very, very good example of the sort of work that we should be doing in the social services um, uh, sector. This is about, this is about uh, bringing all the various social service providers together uh, to solve a problem that is very local um, and localised to our community. Obviously, in Southwold, we have lots of social service providers. Um, uh, we have uh, lots of usage of the parklands um, uh, as well, where there is antisocial behaviour, problem drinking um, and drug use also. Um, this funding, I'm, I'm quite happy, given that we've had two years of radio silence from the state government, um, just about. Uh, I'm quite happy to release the rest of this funding. Um, to go towards the fantastic recommendations that it will be uh, contributing to. Thank you. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you just speak? Or is that your right? Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, I'd just like to uh, make a correction there. Um, Councillor Hyde is not the first person on this council that has moved for more money for Aboriginal services, homeless, etc. And may I also remind Councillor Hyde that that was a resolution of council uh, backed by, I think, a unanimous vote. Um, to take credit for that and take it away from the other councillors, I think is a, um, a diminution and of the decision. It becomes a decision of council supported by everybody. And for people that have been here a bit, little bit longer than Councillor Hyde, there have been many, many people that have put money towards yeah, these, Councilor including Ryan, the Lord Mayor. In favour of one? Um, yes, of course, I'm speaking in favour of Robert, as I always have over the 26 years. Thank you. Members? Councillor Martin. Um, Lord Mayor, look, I, 
I'm a bit conflicted about this. On the one hand, I want to support it. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I, I see it as a restatement of uh, what has uh, previously been discussed, and that is that we are moving out of providing the kind of level of assistance that we have done in years gone by to fight homelessness, to fight rough sleeping particularly, by adopting this policy. Um, we have, in fact, um, again, rejected the Australian Alliance for Social Enterprises approach for continued structured funding support uh, to enable them to address the issues associated with homelessness. Um, our efforts in recent years have been diminished and certainly one of the things that you can do to diminish your contribution to such, uh, such initiatives is that you make your funding conditional, conditional on government funding. You know, we'll do it if you give it uh, the same amount or, you know, unless somebody else contributes something, we won't. It is a uh, striking issue, in my view, of something that is in the purview of uh, the City of Adelaide. Um, and, and contrary to assertions that uh, councils need to stick to roads, uh, rates, uh, roads, rates and rubbish, um, this is actually core business. Uh, it should be. Um, but we're not doing as much as we could. And, and these matters are incredibly sensitive. Um, uh, I think we ought to be uh, thanking Dr. Thomas and uh, Ms. Bunnell um, for what are some, some groundbreaking proposals and backing them in a much more substantial way. Um, I am delighted, uh, on the one hand, that we have this report here um, at a time when we're actually um, uh, reviewing uh, the way in which we've dealt with um, uh, Aboriginal Australians um, 30 years after the inquiry into uh, deaths in custody. Um, and that in itself is another story, and uh, it is sad that uh, 450 Aboriginal deaths have occurred since then. But um, uh, the information that's being put to us um, is substantial in that it does, for example, uh, point out that we need to uh, de decriminalise the offence of public drunkenness. Um, and by adopting this report, we'll also endorse that. And I note that only New South Wales has done that. Um, and it also uh, acknowledges that the parklands are a, uh, a home for Indigenous people in the uh, city of Adelaide, not necessarily Ghana people, people from other places, and implores the council to um, look at ways in which we can improve the amenity of our parklands. Um, uh, but the other side of it is, as I say, that um, there should be a greater commitment. Um, uh, I'm uh, disappointed that we're not providing that that kind of direct assistance. Um, it would have been good to stand here and say, um, I am uh, pleased that we have met our obligations, um, but we are not in this uh, in this report. Members, if not, I'll go back to the move to sum up. Councillor Hyde. Um, only to say, Lord Mayor, that I was talking specifically about giving more funding to the Adelaide Zero Project and funding the recommendations of the Dave Louise Casey um, Institute of Global Homelessness report that, that occurred in March 2019, and I know that was a unanimous vote. Um, what wasn't a unanimous vote was when I then suggested further that we carve out, I think it was $60,000, and devote that um, out of the remaining budget to dealing with issues of Aboriginal mobility. That indeed wasn't unanimous. Councillor Martin uh, spoke against that, and I know Councillor Simmons did as well. It was cast at the time as racist, um, which I think was wrong. We now have experts who have come back and told us um, that we can spend this money, we can spend it on this project, and we think we can get good outcomes out of it. So I invite councillors to correct their previous assertions with their vote right now. Members to the vote. Sorry, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand, remain standing. To all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Carer, Councillor Hogue, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Abraham today. Members, 10.3 is the seeking variation of the encroachment policy hurdle square. Councillor Moran. Lord no, Mayor, members, I members. Declare a conflict of interest. 
uh, as I uh, currently sit on camp. Okay, thank you, Councillor Mackey. Um, Lord Mayor, I have to declare a conflict of interest because I have a contractual relationship with the. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Mackey. Uh, Councillor Martin. Um, yes, look, Lord Mayor, uh, this is uh, complex. I have been advised by the administration as the principal of this company. Um, is a member of the Adelaide Economic Development Authority and whose appointment and remuneration I approved, I could be seen to have a conflict of interest. And it is my decision to either uh, stay in the room and not speak and not vote or to leave the room. Uh, given that I have openly supported Mr Holden, I will be leaving the room. One mind, members. Um, members, I'm just asking the CEO to share some advice. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, through the Chair. Um, so as Councillor Martin indicated, um, he asked for advice relating to um, potential conflict of interest having endorsed Craig Holden, um, his appointment to the Adelaide Economic Development Authority, and obviously other members in the room would also have participated in that decision. Um, and also having had meetings at the request of Mr Holden uh, to discuss um, residential development more broadly. Um, the legal advice that was received was that uh, Councillor Martin does not have a material conflict of interest as there doesn't appear to be any identifiable uh, benefit or loss. Um, we actually don't know if there's any further conflict um, and obviously that's a matter for Councillor, Ma uh, Councillor Martin to manage and as you've seen that's how he's managed it. Um, on the basis of the interactions, um, we believe um, that um, in, you know, in, in any um, uh, situation such as this, um, Councillor Martin could declare a perceived conflict of interest um, and it, the legal advice went on to say it's entirely appropriate and proper for Councillor Martin to fully participate in the item, having made his dis disclosure. So based on that advice, we should all say that we have a perceived conflict of interest but then go through to uh, voting on the item. My reading of the advice is that is correct, Councillor. Okay. So, members, I would like to nominate that I have a perceived conflict of interest because I voted for um, Craig Holden to be on the AEDA board. Councillor Donovan. I too have the same perceived conflict of interest. Thank you. But we'll stay in the room. Yes, I may have a perceived conflict of interest as outlined earlier. I will remain and vote. Councillors? Uh, I too have a perceived conflict of interest but will remain and vote. Councillors? Councillor yes, Hyde, I, I can walk past the development. No, I have a perceived Councillor conflict Hyde. of interest. I also, I also, I also did uh, participate in the interview panel for Craig as well, as well as the rest of the board and the chair, um, and participated in his uh, appointment. I too, Lord Mayor, have a perceived uh, conflict of interest. I too was on the panel and uh, selected Craig Holland uh, to be on the AEDA board, and uh, I will um, stay and uh, vote. And Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, I do not have a perceived conflict of interest. I neither met with Craig Holden or participated in his appointment. And I'm happy to move the motion. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran has moved the motion. I'm looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? I don't wish to speak. I recommend the motion. It is clear and it's totally accepted. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Hyde? Members? Councillor Donovan? 
Just a quick question, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to confirm that the if this does proceed and is approved, that the encroachment uh, would be charged the fee as standard in our policy. Acting CEO. Uh, thank you. Through the chair, um, yes, an encroachment fee would be charged as per existing fees and charges. Thank members, if not, Councillor Moran to sum up. Summed up. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against, that is carried. Um, thank you, Yeti. <laughs> Members, that takes us to 10.4, which is Wave Land Management Agreement. Lord Mayor, can I declare another conflict of interest as I sit on cap? Thank you, Councillor Abrahamsday. Um, uh, 10.4 I'll look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? No, Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak to it? Members? Councillor Martin? Um, yes, Lord Mayor, look, um, I can't agree to this. Um, it is about, uh, as we've discussed before, uh, waiving a land management agreement. Uh, the Chamber agreed that it was not appropriate to waive this land management agreement and the administration has brought it back uh, clearly because it thinks it will be passed on this occasion when it wasn't on the last one. Um, and the principle, however, remains, the principle is that uh, we enter into land management agreements to provide certainty, um, uh, not only to uh, the, the person with whom we've entered into the agreement, but also all of those who are neighbours living nearby. Um, this one has been uh, changed many, many times uh, for properties on uh, Finner Street to accompany a, a particular design, but this change um, before us, as the administration uh, comments on, uh, also involves the demolition of a once heritage listed property, which has been compromised, the administration says, because they've changed the windows, um, that is, they've put glass ones in there and the frames have changed, uh, and therefore it's compromised. Uh, and, uh, you know, God help Buckingham Palace or the Champs Elysees if they ever change the windows because uh, it will be demolition material. Now, th this one I think is going to displease uh, many people in North Adelaide because it does represent uh, an attractive, previously heritage listed uh, historic building. Um, I know this is going to be approved on this occasion. Uh, I can do nothing about it. But I do remind elected members that when you say to people living in Franklin Street, we support land management agreements and we won't let you down, when they actually approve this one being revoked, um, they are saying, well, I flip flop around when it comes to land management agreements. And so I will necessarily vote against this. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, um, I speak in favour of this. Um, this is um, this land management agreement has been changed many, many times, as Councillor Martin has said, and has been um, put forward in council and uh, changed around because of the type of, uh, of because of the, the land management agreement re required to do so um, for the developments to happen for. For, for future developments. However, in this sort of case, in this case here, it is not about the heritage of the property. It's about the block of land itself. Um, it needs, uh, in order for this land management agreement for this block of land to be built, it needs to um, have this um, uh, revoked. The the assessment the assessment panel will come into play here in regards to the development of the whole site. It still needs to go through the proper process. It still needs to be assessed on its own merit. Um, and in not doing so, we're not giving the opportunity for this block to be developed because it's sitting there vacant and uh, a bit of an eyesore. Members, no, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, just to touch on the point regarding land management agreements, of course, engaged quite heavily with the residents of West Franklin, for example, to compare this um, rather small building to the rather large 50 metre building um, that that LMA discussion was around is, is quite absurd. I understand it may be a principle, but it is a principle of we do not want anything. 
that's what the principle is. If you put if you put two three story buildings along along you know right next to a fifty meter building, the principle that you're applying is we want no change, we want nothing. We say nay, naysayers, nimbyism, not in my backyard, Lord Mayor. It's it's quite absurd, and the characterisation of this particular project as one that will destroy heritage is again a mischaracterisation. This land management agreement is not protecting um, uh, the heritage building. That is, that is on the site. We're not actually even talking, we're talking about the block next door. So um, I appreciate that we want to protect heritage and I certainly do as well, but what we're looking at, my heritage, my heritage as a, as a resident of the city of Adelaide, you know, fifth generation on one side of my family, colonial heritage, right? It, that is not the heritage building we're looking at there. That is a decrepit, it's very sad, it's very sad, but that is a decrepit rundown building um, it's overgrown with plants and all manner of weeds and what have you. If this block can be uh, turned into a beautiful family home for someone, that is not something I think we should stand in the way of. And moreover, moreover, um, if we're dealing with setbacks and what have you with this LMA, if we don't approve this LMA, um, that heritage property will still be knocked down. This block will still be developed just in a lesser form. A lesser form um, uh, which, which detracts from the value of it, and I'm not into ruining people's value, but also detracts from the value of the surrounding properties as well. I'm looking at these plans, and you know, I don't sit on cap and I haven't, but look, they look to be very, very high quality plans. I think this is a good example of excellence in design, which we should always be encouraging here in the city. Um, and I see no reason why we should knock this back a second time. This is a beautiful family home that someone wants to build. Um, uh, it's it's a good design. Um, I think it does suit North Adelaide. Not that we should be ruling on that. That's Cap's job. But um, I see no reason why we should put this down. Members to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. Division. That is carried. Division has been called. Council members, the division has been called. Please stand if you're in favour. Thank you. Councillor Carer, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Hyde. Members, I have item 10.5 as proposal for the Adelaide Cabaret Festival, the famous Spiegel tent. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. You were seconded, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, members, Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I have a question, and it is a repeat of a question I asked, but I ask it in the context of new information. Um, the trading hours that are proposed for the Cabaret Festival are uh, listed at 2.30 under Section 7, and it includes two Fridays, uh, three Fridays, in fact, a Thursday, um, and two Thursdays, actually, three Fridays, two Thursdays, um, each 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. closing times, which the administration says is consistent with the APLIMP for that part of the parklands. Now, I actually have the APLIMP for that part of the parklands, and it says that operating hours, specific uh, precinct criteria, close 3 a.m. Saturday, Sunday, and Monday public holidays midnight on weekdays, open 11 a.m. daily for alcohol trade. Events can commence from 7 a.m. So uh, the policy from my reading is that um, we should not be approving uh, the 3 a.m. closing for Friday the 11th, 18th and 25th, um, and certainly not the Thursday closings for 2 a.m. Now, am I mistaken? Is there some other document that I haven't seen, an updated one or something else? Because this is this is it. This is the APEC. I'll ask the question, Councillor Martin, uh, through the Acting CEO. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, I've just clicked on the link to try and um, find the old park, so I'd need a few minutes. But 
Um, my recollection is that um, it's a 3 a.m. close uh, normally. Um, as indicated last week, anything um, beyond um, midnight requires a council decision, a new event, which is why it's come in, even though it's been held there previously, it's not subject to an ongoing land use agreement. Um, and it was a Thursday night that doesn't align to what's in the plan. It's a Thursday night, so I think you said midnight and they're proposing to. Uh, no, it's, uh, well, well, it is uh, on uh, weekdays, midnight. Uh, so Thursday and Friday are both weekdays. Um, I guess that's what, why, why are we uh, doing this for five nights? They're week, weeknights. Acting CO. Um, I think that's at the request of the proponent. Okay. All right. Um, well, look, uh, may I speak to this, uh, Lord Mayor? Uh, certainly, Councillor. Thank you. Look, um, there are, as, uh, as you can see, five uh, of the eight events uh, for which approval is being thought, um, closing hours of 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Uh, for working days. Now, I, I have to make clear, I am an enthusiastic supporter of the Cabaret Festival. It, it was one of the great things that Frank Ford contributed to this city. I'm sorry, Councillor Martin, I, I don't mean to interrupt, but I do have a conflict of interest because I'm a board member of the Adelaide Festival Centre Trust. So I will vacate the chair um, and I'll ask my deputy to come and take the chair. My apologies. Please continue, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Do you want me to start again? Or? Oh, no, we left off. It's just fine. Fine, OK. Um, yes, uh, having said I'm a great supporter of uh, the Cabaret Festival um, and can't imagine the city without it, um, there is a consideration, a compassion that we need to show uh, to residents who feel the impacts of noise from the Miller Park area uh, and who have made known those concerns on previous occasions, most famously when the barge used to be anchored there. And I'm not sure in an area where there is a women's and children's hospital and many residents who work Saturdays especially, operating businesses, they're business operators and they're also workers too, why they should have to endure not only possible noise from events, and I uh, uh, respect that noise mitigation measures will be adopted, but it's also people uh, leaving events. And as someone who uh, lives in Finner Street, I can tell you at 3 a.m. there will be people uh, uh, straggling home along that street uh, uh, making a deal of noise. It doesn't bother me, but I know that some of my neighbours are troubled by it. So um, here we have a plan that's clearly going to distress residents. Uh, I would have liked a, a compromise for weeknights. Uh, the policy is very clear and it's now being proposed that on five occasions uh, we will cast that to the wind. Um, my community will regard it as uh, disrespectful um, and uh, I understand that they would want me to stand up and speak in this manner about it. Um, that is all I have to say, except to implore members to consider North Adelaide residents and to invite you as the acting presiding member, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, um, uh, to illuminate us with your view on this subject as well, as a North Adelaide councillor. Councillor Kamal. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, I support this motion, but I, I'm just trying to clarify a little bit. When we think about this, this tent, where it's positioning, etc., it is being positioned close to the Festival Theatre with 350 people in an enclosed tent. So if we think about that, this is not a pontoon which has open sides and all the rest of it, and certainly significantly further uh, towards North Adelaide. And you know, if there is a potential, well, obviously that would be a lot greater. But if I'm looking at the times, and we've had this conversation before, it is not 
the, 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 the only day that's really out is Friday morning at 2 a.m. because the rest of them are on Saturday, uh, it's 3 a.m. Saturday morning, it's 3 a.m. Sunday morning, it's 3 a.m. Monday morning on all ends. It is that, and that's the reason why it's written that way. It's that 3 a.m. is part of the day before, it is part of the next day, and hence we've had this conversation before around that topic. And I think uh, we need to remember that. So this does fit in other than the Thursday, because that's on the Friday morning. Uh, you know, that could be an issue. But again, I mean, this is a great initiative, and I think uh, it's, it's uh, obviously a positive for the city, and at least when we think about this as an opportunity, it is one that is uh, much more controlled than the pontoon was. Uh, it, you know, it, it is an enclosed area. It is in a much more appropriate position, and I think we'll we'll get a lot of use out of it. And uh, we have had a tent there uh, during the festival theatre, and I don't know if we had any. And maybe it's a question for administration if there was any any uh, compliment, uh, uh, complaints or anything about that. Um, Thank you through the presiding member. Um, yes, as, uh, um, as indicated last week, the event was held in the same location last year um, and I can confirm there were zero complaints. So in, in all of those counts, this has been managed and they have done a good job and they do understand uh, you know, what, they, what they need to do and it hasn't been an inconvenience because otherwise somebody obviously will complain if there's an issue. So um, across all of those sort of things, I think this is, is a great opportunity. Thank you. Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, can I just ask a couple of questions? Uh, what, were the uh, closing times the same in the speaker tent last year? Um, from memory, they did operate to 3 a.m. on those days last year. And what does my memory serve me well that in our committee we were told that the times adhered to the um, policy? I've been assured that it does, apart from the Thursday night, which doesn't. So the d Thursday and Friday don't, because they're weeknights. Through the presiding member, just the Thursday. Is that because the Friday goes into Saturday? Okay, so the Thursday. That's correct. It's the Thursday into Friday that doesn't. So that was a, an omission in the, um, I mean, I only supported it because it was within our policy. Uh, I think I still will, because it is an internal tent. Um, but I, I must warn councillors that by, because people don't officially complain to council uh, through your whatever laborious ways, if you can get it complained in, uh, they do complain about the um, late night people going back to park. So it's not quite uh, so, you know, this went, went well, nobody complained. Lots of people did complain. Um, but, um, and, I, and I urge the administration in these reports when it says it adheres to our policy, that it does actually adhere to our policy. One day not adhering means it nearly adheres to our policy. So um, we trust your reports and these, these sort of things erode that trust. Thank you. Councillor Hyde. Yeah, I, I, I respect the North Adelaide based councillors' um, perspectives. Everyone is entitled to the quiet enjoyment. Um, of their property, but uh, you know, if I was if I was in the arts, I'm a consumer of arts, but I'm not in the arts. If I was working in the arts, I would be very, very upset if my capital city council um, was not supporting a fairly reasonable event um, uh, that would provide work for artists, that would uh, provide entertainment for purveyor purveyors of the arts. Um, uh, I would be really, really concerned, and 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 as a as a you know, a, a long-term resident of Adelaide, Greater Metro, and the city as well. Um, uh, I would want my capital city council uh, to say yes to these sorts of things. I'm really concerned at um, how sometimes the nimbyism creeps in uh, to some of these arguments. Oh, I love the cabaret, but I just don't want it to be anywhere near. Point of order. It's quite literal. I didn't say I was refusing. Where? I actually said I was supporting this motion, so I object to being included as a North Adelaide councillor. He didn't name you, Councillor Moran. I, uh, I was referring to Councillor general... Martin, and I, I respect his, Councillor Moran's support for this um, uh, because it is it is a reasonable project. It's in it's inside for goodness' sake. Um, it's only a hundred three hundred and fifty people. 
Um, I imagine the speakers will be faced away um, uh, from, uh, from the lake, from the river, um, uh, and going up the hill into North Adelaide. And I think the fact that our administration knows how to manage these events very, events very effectively, and last time we saw zero complaints despite the same operating hours, um, uh, I, I think we should be supporting this. And I'm sure North Adelaide residents will be going down to the speaker tent and, and enjoying themselves as well. Councillor Martin, do you have a question? Yes, I have a question, and I want to offer a personal explanation, uh, uh, acting uh, presiding member. Um, that is that I was misrepresented in my comments about the Cabaret Festival. Um, uh, Councillor Hyde has a silver tongue, but it misrepresented me in saying that I did not support this event. I do support this event. I'd encourage uh, the Cabaret Festival to operate every night of the week at that venue. Thank I'm you. You've made your... Um, no, no, I haven't. I haven't finished. I am simply asking, I'm simply asking that we stick to our policy. And on that, I wish to ask the administration, because it does need clearing up. Um, it is being inferred by the administration that the policy that says 3 a.m. close is permitted Saturday, Sunday, and Monday public holidays, midnight on weekdays, the administration now regards Friday as a weekend, as part of Saturday. If it does so, does it also understand it is saying that Sunday night um, is is a um, uh, potentially that is it goes into the evening it, it also is covered by that 3 a.m. close or 2 a.m. close yeah. uh, you've got to have it one way or the other uh, thank you through the presiding member. So the operating hours for that park are Sunday to Thursday close at 11.59pm, so that's the midnight close. Fridays and Saturdays close 3am the following day. Sundays that precede a Monday public holiday close at 3am 3 3 on the Monday morning, opening at 11am. Events can commence at 7. And, and uh, uh, acting presiding member, that's exactly my point. Closing at 3 a.m. Friday is not an apt description of what's proposed. You're, we actually need to refine that. Councillor Martin, you've already spoken. Um, I know, I'm, ask, I'm asking. Isn't that so? Can you repeat that question? Y yes. Isn't it the case then that the policy is confusing if we are saying that it is possible to close at 3 a.m. on Fridays? Um, do we mean? Uh, that is three hours past midnight on Thursday, or do we mean three hours past midnight on Saturday? And in those circumstances, do we also mean three hours past midnight on Sunday or midnight on Sunday? CEO, did you get that? Uh, thank you through the presiding member. The PLEMP has been in place since 2016. Um, we have used it, I think, quite effectively and consistently for many years since 2016. It's due for review. If council members wish to review the operating uh, times of parks, then certainly we can do that. I think the administration's been um, clear in all our reports to council on our interpretation of this since 2016. Uh, tonight is the first time we've had further questions in relation to operating hours, but of course, happy to feed that into any review that council may wish to undertake in the coming months. Members, anyone else like to speak? Real quick? Okay. Councillor Mackey, would you like to sum up? Um, yeah, thank you, um, uh, Acting Presiding Member. Um, just a very small, quick uh, procedural thing. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you second the motion? I just spoke to Jenny about that, and uh, it's, all, okay. it's all, all good. Good, lovely. Yep. Um, look, just in, in summing up, I, I want to clarify in case anybody is wondering, I do have a connection with a, ca a cabaret festival, but not the cabaret festival. I am the chair of the cabaret fringe, uh, which is not the same organisation. Therefore, I just to clarify, I do not have any conflict of interest in in speaking, in, in moving, and summing up this motion. Um, uh, one of the very near neighbours, and I appreciate the concerns that um, Councillor Martin has has raised on behalf of residents, but. But let's be real, the cabaret festival in the Spiegel tent is not a doof, doof, doof. Um, it is a very, very genteel, uh, good time to be had. Um, and indeed, the minister who was responsible for supporting the cabaret festival in its very first incarnation, uh, the now 
Honourable Dr Diana Late or AM lives just by the cathedral and I can guarantee you she'll be there um, enjoying the evenings at the fabulous Spiegel tent um, uh, with, with, with relish. Um, Cabaret Festival. This is the largest cabaret festival in the world. Um, it is something that we should be very, very proud of. Um, I have in my past been a, a trustee of the Adelaide Festival Centre and uh, was in, around at the very beginning of the cabaret festival. Um, therefore, I'm, I have great delight in, in commending this motion. Uh, looking forward to a great old time with Alan Cummings' brilliantly curated Australian Cabaret Festival. Thank you, members. We take this to a vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Yes, please. A division has been called. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Abraham today. Can someone please ask the Lord Mayor to come back into chamber? Uh, thank you, members. We're up to 10.7, which is the increase in contract award. Quinton Kenahan, Councillor Martin, and I'll look for a second, Deputy Lord Mayor. No, I'm proposing one. That's why I'm on the feet. Sorry, I've got Councillor Martin first. Um, Councillor Moran, I think, was going to second this, but I might ask for another second. What's this? Are you seconding the uh, proposal in front of no, you? No, if you'd like me to outline the amendment, uh, it adds three. And it says that the acting CEO writes to the Auditor General advising state government funds have been expended by the City of Adelaide on a project that experienced design and safety issues and in such a manner not consistent with state government standards or expectations. Uh, members, I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Mackey. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, uh, the words used by uh, Premier Marshall in October 2018 when uh, committing one million dollars of state money for an inclusive play space uh, for Quentin Kenahan were, quote, we will work with the Adelaide City Council so we can have an appropriate memorial for Quentin, close quotes. So uh, it, it is clear that the government had some high hopes and we all had uh, high hopes that this would be a fitting memorial for Quentin uh, Kenahan. Um, but we now know from pretty much the moment that the playground was officially opened in December um, and uh, sadly Quentin's mother uh, was excluded from uh, that opening that this has been a, a bit of a mess. Um, it has been a particularly difficult period for our stakeholders, um, uh, many of whom Lord Mayor have taken uh, to the, uh, the pages of Adelaide now, to the comment pages. Um, and calling us um, uh, lots of names from numpties to um, uh, worthy of a script from a Monty Python movie. Now, the administration has advised at least 10 separate adjustments, 10 separate adjustments 
including the wheelchair trampoline, which will now mandate the presence of a carer, will uh, need to be made before this is a uh, disability compliant uh, play space. Now, um, a disability uh, friendly play space means that it has to be disability friendly, not only to um, uh, those uh, who go there uh, to enjoy um, uh, a day out with their uh, um, children, but children uh, with disabilities of all descriptions. Um, and this one is not it. Now, um, these issues have been raised uh, with the administration, and, and I know there were displeasure with the, uh, uh, the questions that were posed and not answered. Um, uh, but I think we owe it um, to Quentin and this memorial to endorse this uh, reconsideration as well at part two, and this will also enable that. Um, and I thank the administration for making it so open-ended that is to approve any variation, because I think we should all agree that at this point in time, uh, whatever it costs, this needs to be finished to uh, the standard to make it a fitting memorial. Uh, and I think uh, we should also at the same time, and that's the purpose of the amendment, um, uh, provide some assurance to the state uh, uh, that it can have confidence in dealing with the City of Adelaide, that we will admit our mistakes uh, and allow them to see how we might improve that. Um, it is a reasonable proposition, uh, and I hope that the, uh, uh, the elected members will support it. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Um, Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, I will not be supporting this. Um, this is actually completely against what uh, Quinton's uh, family wanted. The fact that this has been out in the media is absolutely appalling and, uh, and they are devastated by what has taken place. And to further, to further drive this is absolutely against everything that the family wanted. I have worked closely with the family since January in regarding the issues that the playground has, has um, been highlighted by children, disabled children using the playground. Um, I don't know here if anyone's ever built a house and it's been perfectly built from the first moment they built it, then good luck to you. But this is not this is the same case in anything that we do. Um, there are going to be always some issues when we start out, when we finish projects. And this is just another one of them. And I, I understand that this comes with a lot of emotion, and it does. It comes with a lot of emotion. And you have really, this has really, really hit a core with this family. And I will not subject them to any more of this, taking this further to give it any more ridicule. We are working towards, as a council, to rectify the issues. We've identified the issues with the family. We've talked through it. We will be rectifying them. We may need to have further discussions, which we will be, which they will be with the administration. And um, it is an unfortunate circumstance. It's not perfect from the moment that we had to open it for the funding deed in December. That, that was the timeline. Um, however, um, this is uh, this is what the uh, agreement was. We were in COVID during the time. During that time, um, the toilets weren't. Uh, were on their way, but they weren't there at the time uh, in December, but they are there now. Um, and there are other things that we would need to obviously um, rectify to uh, better use the uh, play area. But I'm sorry, I, I cannot support this. I do not say I'm sorry, I cannot support this. I will not put the family through any more heartache. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde. Well, of course, we know, Lord Mayor, that the Auditor General is able to inspect and audit the expending of any state government funds on any project they so choose. In actual fact, um, it's the Auditor General that picks what the Auditor General um, uh, audits, um, and, and it would be an incredibly arrogant move um, uh, for a, a ward councillor to go to the Auditor General um, and, and suggest strongly that they look into this. It is a move designed Lord Mayor to embarrass the city. It is a move designed uh, to throw muck on this play space. Um, it is it is designed to do that. And because we know Lord Mayor, and this is what concerns me most about what we know with this project. Obviously, um, if 
the, the lack of DDA compliance and, and other aspects of the project um, is incredibly disappointing to everyone on the council. Um, uh, and it's also not, not you know, it, this, this project is not an orphan when it comes to uh, infrastructure projects having issues with them. And there is another one, obviously, that was on this agenda this evening. But um, what concerns me, Lord Mayor, is that uh, based on the evidence that council has been provided with um, over email, um, this issue was first raised um, earlier in January uh, by Councillor Martin. And uh, considering that Councillor Martin has aerated this topic in the media quite substantially, Members. And, and considering that uh, there are clear issues um, uh, with with the, the delivery of this project, it really, really bothers me, Lord Mayor, that uh, more effort was put into getting a news story up Councillor, than was put Councillor. into fixing the issues here. Councillor Martin had at least uh, two or three council meetings where this issue could have come before us, and it didn't. There was umpteen opportunities in order to call a special meeting uh, of council to deal with this matter, uh, and that didn't happen. Um, so forgive me, Lord Mayor, if I think it's a little bit disingenuous to uh, to come here now. Uh, again, not proposing any fixes to the problem. I know Councillor Kouros has an alternative motion because she is actually engaged with the Kennehan family. She has actually engaged with them and actually understands from the stakeholders' perspective what is wrong with this project. That's how councillors should act not in the way which is designed to embarrass the city the most. And this is just another attempt to embarrass the city. Now, it's councillors' role to hold administration to account. And, and this, the fact that this has come before us is incredibly concerning. And the fact that until we brought the delegation down from $4 million to $1 million, as we did during COVID, that this would not have come to us is equally concerned, if not more concerned, because who knows what else has gone through. Um, uh, but three should be completely ruled out. It Council. should not be supported. Um, uh, are we happy to vote for the original motion Thank this morning? Thank you, Councillor. time does come back. Uh, Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, can I ask that this be taken in parts? You can, Do Councillor Moran. Oh, well, I actually have to go to the um, mover that we take it in parts. Mover and seconder. Seconder Thank says yes. Mover has not said yes. Yes. Um, I know that the team won't vote for anything that's put up by a non-team member, so I know that only one or two will get through. Um, but I would like to, to object, Lord Mayor, to the... Uh, I look forward to the motion that's coming, that bad behaviour and personal insults are removed from this chamber, but it does disappoint me when you don't pull Councillor Hyder, who's just bullied the mover of this motion, a quite a reasonable motion. Um, I'm not sure I'll support it, but um, uh, Councillor Hyde constantly plays the man, not the ball. It's a disgraceful way to conduct himself in this chamber. Well, Councillor Moran, you're just and doing the same thing, so I'm asking everybody to speak to the motion before them. Well, you didn't ask him to speak to the motion. You asked, uh, you're asking me to. He used the word muck, uh, muckraking, um, what I'm concerned about in the future motion is that the rule will apply just to me, Phil, Greg, and to a lesser extent, Helen. Um, this motion is should be looked at. Um, it is the role of the, the elected member to um, point out when the administration has got these projects wrong. I have got, um, and I'm sure that the Kenahan family are not that concerned. Um, they are very pleased that the corrections are being made, and they probably would be concerned they weren't made a little bit closer to the opening of the uh, the playground. To not have disability toilets on the day that you open a playground is a huge um, mistake and quite offensive to disabled children. I would have said I don't think the Kenahans would have approved that at all. Um, but um, I think we just get on with the job. I don't think I will support the third part, um, although I completely understand why it's being put up there. Um, I think this is this is a, a bit like our bike paths. It's been a, it hasn't been a good process. It's not brain surgery to to um, build a disabled playground. It's not up to Council, Ward, North Ward Councillor Mary Kouros to design it either. Um, it is up to the experts to design it. Every city, practically every council area in the eastern states has one. Why don't we just take a photo of that and copy it? 
Um, so uh, this hasn't been a good process. I do feel sorry for the Ken Hand, but not for the same reasons that Councillor Hyde is saying. Um, and his comments in social media have been disgusting and disgraceful. The comment that I made, if I have, have a bit of leniency, was that I, would, I queried whether Quentin was well enough to run a campaign. Um, I, I met Quentin. Councillor Moran. I think no, we're, we're going off topic now. Personal explanation. We're going off topic now. I think Thanks, Councillor Moran. Just to uh, explain so, myself, as he has accused me. No, I'm, of I'm not talking about that. We are actually just talking about this, the approval of this contract. Well, of course, we're going to approve the contract. We've made terrible mistakes, um, as we did with other things. It's got to stop. Um, this, we believe money on these pro projects such as the bikeways. It's probably why nobody trusts us to build another one. So um, I recommend one and two, and I can understand number three. Members? Um, Lord Mayor, can I ask a question? You may ask so, a question. Um, if this motion fails, um, can I amend it? Because um, I've already spoken. No, thank you. Yeah, sorry, just one moment. Yeah, so because we're taking in parts, Deputy Lord Mayor, it means that the motion itself, parts of it, so the motion, the entirety of the motion won't fail. Right. Parts may or may not. So therefore, if there's a, an alternate motion or amendment that has to be made by someone else. So, Councillor Knoll, sorry, you've already spoken, to yeah, Councillor. I, I, th I think I think what we're getting at, Lord Mayor, is that Councillor Kouros has some improvements on the original, which she would like to put. Um, uh, but he, he so, could, could government the question. Please, please clarify that if all three of these parts fail, that we can then return to the original substantive. This is the alternative motion. So we, we often, where we have alternates, can return back. So, no. Yeah. Yeah. so we can move an amendment to this to rule out number three and replace it if you wish, but you can't vote against one or two and then vote for no, it. No, sorry, I, I'm predicating. My, my question is predicated on the fact that we vote against all, the, if the chamber hypothetically voted against all three parts, could we then the return to the original as published in the agenda, which can then be considered afresh and amended afresh? It's not because you've yeah. you've voted against one and two, which are the original. Okay, thank you. Councillor Cano. Um, in regards to the, uh, the amendment, um, there is, I don't, I'm trying to ask a question at first, so obviously there is an amendment uh, that has been uh, presented earlier. Um, is that possible, one, to replace uh, the, the uh, third item or make it a fourth item and still take it in parts? You can replace the third item if you wish or you can add a fourth item and take it in parts. You can do either. Well, uh, replace the third because that's... Uh, with, yeah, with an amendment. And yeah, haven't you got that already? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, what I have before me. So, I just need a second to Councillor Knoll. It has to be someone who hasn't spoken. Thank you. That's right. Councillor Hart, you can do a variation to that, yeah? Yes. And if it, uh, it has, uh, it's written as authorises the acting CEO to spend up to $500,000. Oops. For any additional spending required to ensure the Quinton Kinnan inclusive play space. And you complain about violating. Uh, is of the highest standard as in as an all inclusive play space. They're only asking for two hundred. No, they're not. Members. 
members. Board member Tom Two proposals, no limit. Councillor Kouros is proposing to limit it to 500. The top of our So number two knocks out number three uh, because you're saying approve any variation to the contract and then you are capping the spend unless you actually want to see prove any variations up to the value of 500,000 is the only thing that I can think of that you could put there. Or delete number two. Yeah, well, and uh, then up to any variation up to 500,000. Let's do a million. Do ten million. Ten million. Million. What's that? That's not a space. I so, um, Councillor Ho, are you still happy to second that? And then I'll get Councillor yes. Knoll to speak to that so that we are clear as to what we're trying to achieve with it. Well, I mean, the objective here is, is to ensure that uh, uh, it has sufficient funds to act well, as it says, uh, make it the best possible play space uh, that is all inclusive. And uh, it's just uh, up that which has been sort of uh, written in the uh, actual original motion about the, what this, what they were looking for. And you know, I mean, in, in, just in a general case, that this is it's not something that we build every day. You know, the, this, uh, the inclusive play spaces. So we are doing something we haven't done before. We've done it with the advice from all the various, uh, as many as, as stakeholders as possible um, that can help influence how we do this. And obviously we've constructed something um, that is you know, relatively unique. Uh, and uh, obviously it, uh, it's a work in progress. And I think uh, by doing all of that, and, and the fact that uh, with, uh, if we're, it's interesting with these uh, contractual requirements uh, to have to have opened it, et cetera. So they did what was necessary to comply with, with the actual um, you know, agreed deed, uh, the deed. So therefore, uh, you know, they were able to at least have the funding done and settled, but it didn't mean that we were able to have everything finished in time. And COVID, let's not forget uh, how much disruption that caused. And this is, this is not an administration problem. This is not anything else other than we've had to deal with issues beyond our control and still uh, move forward with our projects. So I think um, this enables us, well, one, we need to do this anyway so that we can com complete it and, and have sufficient funds to do it. Two, it allows sufficient leeway uh, for administration and, and the authority to uh, enable them to uh, make the best possible uh, adjustments so that it is uh, in a state of the art in this area. And I think it's it's, it's just a fitting uh, tribute uh, you know, to Quentin um, and, and try to do it as the best possible way. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Hyde. Um, at the risk of generating mass scoffs across the chamber, am I able to uh, move an amendment to this? We have to deal with this amendment before we can deal with another amendment. So there can only be a small variation if it was accepted by the mover and the seconder, but a variation is like up to two words. Yeah. Um, and you can't what, propose what, an what, amendment because you've already spoken. What I can't, what, sorry. Yeah, no, I can't move an amendment to the original because that's a silly rule. Um, uh, I, I know, but it is the rule. Um, what I was going to suggest, sorry, Lord Mayor, is uh, uh, meet the scope of the project, comma, um, uh, as, as requested from the stakeholder group, the Canahan family. Because I think that's the primary issue that the uh, that is attempting to be addressed, but it's not explicitly there in the motion. Okay. So, it, uh, so governor's advice is that it is in keeping with the intent, um, but it requires, of course, the mover and the seconder to accept that 
and leave of the meeting. So I'm going to ask the mover and the seconder if you'll accept that as a variation. And the seconder. And then I'm going to ask for leave of the meeting to accept that as a variation to the motion before you. Members, by a show of hands, we accept that as a variation. Yep, thank you. Um, I think I'm up to Councillor Martin Sorry, to speak. Oh, yeah, okay, you haven't spoken to it. Um, just, 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 just to be very, very quick, Lord Mayor, the um, the primary issue that was uh, seeking to be remedied by the Deputy Lord Mayor um, is that, as I understand it, while there are parts of this project which, by virtue of passing this, the administration will make DDA compliant, um, uh, there are further uh, further uh, variations that some key stakeholders may request over and above that DDA compliance. Now, compliance is the bare minimum and compliance is uh, merely the framework that has been uh, outlined by uh, uh, by the various acts and regulatory so authorities. Just, just as my apologies, as a point of clarification, the playground is DDA compliant. It has had a safety audit and it is compliant. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear that. Well, and that then goes to the point, Lord Mayor. Um, it is DDA compliant, but it's still not 100% functional per the wishes of the stakeholders. Now, um, I'm told through my investigations that um, there is more than what has been proposed by the administration um, that would be desirable. I think we owe it to the stakeholders and to the Kennehan family to ensure that we get this project um, right. That was certainly the intent in the original uh, motion and through some swings and roundabouts, I think we've landed here. The variation that I've suggested makes it crystal clear to the administration um, that you need to go back to your stakeholder group, you must listen to them, uh, and you have up to $500,000 over and above what is currently in the contract here, with which to implement uh, the changes or variations or extra infrastructure or what have you that they think the playground requires. And just in closing, um, lots of council areas in the greater Adelaide metropolitan area do have inclusive play spaces. I have never heard of issues like this with any of those council areas. Um, uh, I would uh, almost echo what Councillor Moran said and say, look, perhaps we need to take a leaf out of the book of other local government authorities um, who have done these projects. Well, also, I know that we did have a very large stakeholder group. I do wonder if too many cooks spoil the broth sometimes. Um, but look, that's why our administration are here um, uh, to ensure that we get these things right. And I would implore you, this is our opportunity to fix this. Okay. Uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I want to begin with a personal explanation to the allegation that I've been throwing muck. Um, I want to assure elected members that when this matter was drawn to, to my attention by uh, friends of the family of uh, Quentin Kennahan in uh, December last year, um, I was uh, a bit surprised, but uh, I sought further information from them. They were concerned particularly that the family had not been invited to the opening as a consequence of Facebook posts. No, Lord Mayor, that was, I am imparting to you the information that was given okay. to me. I can just, I can just um, assure the council members that they were invited. Um, they were not available and we decided that given the disability toilet hadn't been complete, that we would have a celebration uh, when the artwork was installed, which was in uh, Quinton's memory and also the disability toilet. That well, I'm, I'm sure there's an explanation, Lord Mayor. One doesn't do um, things to offend people. I am simply giving a personal explanation. That is how it came to my attention. On uh, receiving documents from the administration at the beginning of January, I did the right thing. I went and investigated the site. I read the documents. I arranged to meet with the head of the department who was on leave. And it was arranged that I would meet with him on his first available date on his return. He did not attend that meeting. Somebody else was sent in his stead. I raised all of these issues carefully, methodically, not knowing that there was a DDA compliance issue. And I was assured after an explanation of why these things had occurred, that there would be action. Subsequently, no action occurred. The matter appeared in a public agenda. There were inquiries from media. 
There had been inquiries and conversations with media long before that, but nevertheless, I pursued the appropriate course. Nothing happened. The playground opened, was accessible to disabled children, and with faults that are now clearly outlined by the administration, and I raised concerns about those matters. Now, if it is to be a bit of a whistleblower, an offence, an offence to Councillor Hyde or any other member, then I plead guilty. There is no problem letting the world know when the council has stuffed up. And this time we stuffed up big because not only did we not correct those faults, but we were, and I'm now speaking, Lord Mayor, we were racing racing to meet a deadline. And we've learned tonight, the state government deed, which was entered into to 20, 2019, it now appears expired in December 20, which is why the administration raced to open it just before Christmas, knowing that the playground itself had problems. It did not have a disability toilet, no doubt about that, but the pathways, the playground equipment and other aspects of it were not safe to disabled people. Now, I understand we've had a safety uh, report on this playground, but the clear understanding I have from disabled people who have been there and from the representative of a disabled organisation is that it is not safe. My motion uh, proposed uh, to leave in place the capacity for the administration to spend whatever it wanted to finish what is a fitting memorial to the Kenahan family. Councillor Canol and the rest of the team Adelaide have amended it so that now it's capped at $500,000. And that has to, works required to ensure accessible pathways connecting the place space to Rymel Park, Decatable Terrace and Rundle Road, upgrade existing car parks in the Rymel car park and the addition of four new accessible car parks, specially designed latches to allow normal function of pool gate locks, um, additional signage included to and uh, not limited to, and it goes on, rubber softball to be extended, allowing wheelchair access the entire way around the climbing net, super loop path, this is a new path to be 3D, not 2D, Wheel catch points in transitional services to be rectified on and on. And this botched job, this botched job of an inclusive play space continues tonight with the likes of Councillor Canole and others proposing we limit to $500,000 the job to fix this. This is actually proof of what an incompetent, incompetent project this has been. And Lord Mayor, I, I am just appalled. I will sit down, I will sit down, satisfied that everyone can now see what a bunch of nunties Thank we are. Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak um, to the amendment? Well, it's really hard. Lord Mayor to do that because um, we just had a lovely speech by um, Councillor Martin and you know I really wish to aspire to be just like him to be Councillor Nicoros we're speaking to the amendment that um, builds a, a narrative and um, makes it sound as so disastrous but um, nevertheless uh, this gives uh, administration the the, the ability to be able to finish the project to what is required and to work closely with the uh, stakeholder group and with the Kenahan family as they have been doing. I have met uh, with the family in January and I've met directly with the family, not family friends or people that know them or people that might gossip about them, directly with the family. And we have gone through the issues that they would like to see rectified because safety is their priority and they would like people to have a very um, uh, wonderful experience at uh, using the playground. But I think we all got to have to realise here that this is an all-inclusive playground. This playground is meant to be designed for all different disabilities, but also able-bodied children. So we have to be very mindful that, and this is what Quinton wanted, 
Quinted wanted to be able to have a disabled person to be able to play with an able-bodied child. That's what he wanted. He wanted two children to come together and that is the aim of the playground. Yes, it is probably a very unique playground in that sense because it's not just targeted to one disability. It's targeted to a different range of uh, disabilities. And we will get there and we will have a unique playground and we will have the legacy that Quinton wanted. What he did not want is to be someone to take it through the media and to make oh, it sound on, like that man. no disabled person can use it because it's absolutely a botched job. Interrupt. Oh, that's what the words that were used here tonight, Lord Mayor. Okay. These are the words that were used here tonight. And I'm sorry, I have to stand up here and say that is not the case. There are things that need to be rectified. We're giving administration the ability to work with the family to do so. And let's all move on. If Councillor Martin got his airtime, applause to that. Let's move on and rectify it. Members, any other speakers? Councillor Mackey. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, just a question through you, Lord Mayor, to um, our administration. In relation to the motion, and uh, I must admit I'm on pain medication, so um, maybe my focus has been a little um, variable. Um, sorry? <laughs> um, the, the motion, as I read it now, approves increasing the contract sum to over one million, so that relates to the contract, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And then the, the now clause authorising the Chief Executive Officer to approve any variation up to 500,000. Just again through you, Lord Mayor, is that to clarify that um, if it costs $520,000 to fix the situation uh, and that schedule of, of um, um, uh, corrections and, and um, uh, works that have been identified, that it will then need to come back to Council? Acting CO. Uh, through the presiding member, yes. Uh, Which is um, in accordance with all of our contracts. If we put a, a dollar amount, they all have to come back at this variation. Okay. Um, Over so and above. Thank, thanks, all. If I might then just um, speak to this. I look. I don't want to denigrate or question or undermine the intent, the sincerity of any member who's spoken in relation to this from the original mover, Councillor Martin, to the, the amender uh, and uh, to the Deputy Lord Mayor, um, who I, I know is very sincere uh, uh, in respect of um, the dialogue with the Kennehan family. What, uh, I've known Quentin, I knew Quentin for 25 years. Um, uh, that's not a matter at, at question here. I, I, I would rather, in order that this not keep coming back like the boomerang job that it is. I, I would honestly rather um, uh, us cut the acting CEO a little more slack uh, than simply saying 500,000. We already know that um, 1.27 million uh, was the approved budget for the works. We already know that to bring it to DDA compliance, and overall community and stakeholder expectations that the contract sum will need to increase to a million and ninety thousand and twenty six dollars. Um, and again, right, Councillor Canole, I don't, I don't doubt your sincerity in wanting to make sure this doesn't become a runaway, runaway train project. But um, let's try and actually just deal with this once, get the problem resolved, um, and um, graciously move on. Um, thank you, members. Are there any other speakers? If not, I'll go to Councillor Donovan. Just briefly, Lord Mayor, I think some of the conversation tonight is pretty unreasonable. Um, the playground is an incredibly complex piece of infrastructure that includes things like a carousel that wheelchairs can access, in-ground trampolines, a sound and sensory garden, a sway swing that rocks, a water pump, 
So the fact that it has gone over and above the initial contracted amount, I think is probably quite reasonable. There are some things that have been identified to be fixed, but I think we need to consider the scope of this project and that administration have done a pretty marvellous job in moving toward the point that it's at at this point in time. And there are improvements that we will get to. I don't see the point, however, of this particular amendment because I think as it stood, it left it uncapped. So I won't support the amendment but I do uh, certainly support the original and think that administration has done an excellent job in producing what we have today. And no doubt the final uh, playground will be an outstanding piece of infrastructure that will last many years. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Canole to sum up. Councillor Canole. It's been an interesting conversation. Um, I just think, uh, for first, uh, I just feel, you know, I feel sorry uh, uh, for the family, etc., about how we, uh, we we progress this as a conversation and and the attempts uh, in prior to this to, um, you know, make it uh, increasingly difficult for the administration and unpleasant uh, uh, with the extra requirements. But here, it is just simply. Uh, you know, to get the job done, um, the, um, the administration would have had all the work already worked out and what they needed to do and what they needed to have as, as a, you know, a final sum to uh, deliver the project to fully what they needed. I'd like to thank Councillor Martin for going through the list of all the things that the, the administration is going to uh, do to uh, amend and, and uh, improve the facility. And I do remember, as again and earlier, uh, the, the, you know, the um, Deputy CEO was saying that uh, uh, it was DDA apply, uh, compliant. It's so these are things that are over and above. So uh, we are trying to do the best to make this wonderful space, and I think we just need to keep that in mind and um, and move the project forward. Thank you, um, Councillor. Uh, so members, I'm going to the vote. Those in favour. Those against. That is carried. And that becomes a substantive. Um, so I now go back to the original mover, which is Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I do regret um, that uh, the original uh, motion was not accepted. Um, the intention was uh, to find some accommodation with the government, which I know is concerned about this matter. Um, it has figured in uh, media attention for some time um, and there was likewise concern about this council um, basically rejecting after uh, some considerable time and two terms of council three million dollars in funding that would have enabled the construction of a east-west bikeway two of them together uh, i think uh, have damaged our credibility with the government uh, and an investigation by the auditor general may well have not only thrown some light on the process but it may have afforded us the opportunity um, to proceed with these um, uh, projects and the like in the future. Um, I am uh, disappointed that we are capping this at half a million dollars. Half a million dollars is not enough, and it is my view that this will have to come back to Council again. And when it comes back, if it is a large amount, there will be further media coverage and criticism of the city. Had we had uh, the, um, I guess, the, uh, the insight to accept what the administration proposed, that is to accept any variation as required to finish the job, then there would be no possibility of uh, this coming back and further embarrassment. Um, but I, uh, I concede that this is the will of the majority. Uh, the majority does want this to come back to council clearly uh, because in the face of advice from administration that it would, they still agreed to it. Um, uh, members, uh, I still um, uh, puzzle about this. I will support this. I want to see the project completed uh, and the sooner the better. Um, and 500,000 um, will at least get some work done, hopefully on those things which uh, present a danger um, to those um, using the playground. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, 
right. Members, so we'll do uh, 10.8. Um, no. We'll do 10.8. Um, I'm actually looking to see that we'll have a dinner break soon. Is everybody happy to do one more before we go to a break? Um, um, you had some additional info in your packs. Uh, so at page 245, and that was based on members' feedback uh, at committee. Um, so link one was the responses, and link two was uh, proposed changes to the draft CLMP. So with that, I'll hand over to members, and I'll look for a mover. Deputy Lord Mayor. I have an Yeah. Alternate um, motion. Sorry. An alternate motion. Alternate motion. For you. And I'll look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to him? Um, yes, I think. Uh, Taking on the advice of the administration and tightening up the um, the uh, the agreement is uh, limiting the uh, amount of um, events that they can have um, throughout the year. Um, and this wording here, um, I believe, uh, working with administration gives the ability for them to um, be able to do what they need to do. Um, and uh, to um, you know, limit the amount of events that they do have there. And I know this is going to be an argument in regards to um, this affecting North Adelaide residents. And I looked over the um, uh, the consultation. Um, we didn't have a very many people uh, respond to the consultation, and that is really hard to base your decision on very small amount of numbers. And I know that Councillor Martin will probably write a letter out and call me, you know, a, a demon of North Adelaide or Councillor whatever. Councillor Kouros, um, please, um, please, that's very inappropriate. Sorry, I'm that's sorry. Disrespectful. I just feel, sorry, I just feel always confronted whenever I get these newsletters and, uh, and, uh, and I feel very um, confronted by it. Thank you, if you can speak to get the these newsletters. Um, but in saying that... Lord Mayor, um, I have not bullied Councillor. Is that a point of order? It's a point of order. And what is the point of order, Councillor? I have been accused of bullying Councillor Kouros. I did not, I have not, I will not. In newsletters, I do feel that. I'm entitled to feel that I have been, and I do feel that. Um, but in saying that, um, I feel that, you know, our, we have suffered a lot um, as a uh, as a city, uh, we are really needing to open up our city more to events and vibrancy. We do um, understand that businesses have suffered um, and uh, we need to have an increase of more uh, people coming into our city. So I'm looking at this as a way of increasing our economy. Um, if businesses, if people come to these events, which I believe they're all more for concerts, um, they will more than likely will um, spend more time in the city. They might stay in one of the hotels, they might dine, they might, um, you know, go shopping, who knows, let's make a day of it. And uh, it's really important that we continually look at ways in which we can do this for our city. Um, but in doing so, I do take on board what admin said in the workshop in saying that there were, were words that we needed to tighten up in, in regards to the um, agreement plan, management plan. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Um, no, and I might just withdraw my seconding because I have to dash at the loo. Okay, I'll, I'll look for a um, second. It's okay, that's all right, you just don't speak. Um, <laughs> would anybody else like to speak to the motion? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, I acknowledge um, uh, the changes that Councillor Kouros has proposed, and I had a discussion with the administration uh, this afternoon when they were proposing exactly uh, those changes. Um, and uh, though that may provide some comfort to some people, I think the issue is primarily that uh, we have had a public consultation. 
um, uh, we went out to the community and asked them what they thought. And standing here diminishing that feedback, saying, oh, well, only you know this number applied, um, is really, um, uh, I guess, offensive to them because they all sat down and spent considerable time answering all of those questions. And I guess the inconvenient truth is that uh, the result was not what was expected. The majority of people on the majority of questions proposed uh, that we not proceed. They did not want to see these concerts at Adelaide Oval 2. And uh, by far and away, the vast majority of people, 65%, uh, absolutely said no um, to letting the SMA use Adelaide Oval 2 as a car park. And, and uh, you know, you can't help but speculate that in the absence of any plan for sporting events at Adelaide Oval 2, uh, we don't know who's going to play there, when, uh, what they're going to play. We don't know any of that. All we know is that we are now going to adjust the community land management plan to reflect what they believe is their legislated right to use, and it may be, it may be, their legislated right to use part of the parklands, Adelaide Oval 2, as a park for 1,300 cars. And it's, you know, for footy, it could be for cricket or whatever. Now, uh, I do acknowledge the status quo in respect of Pennington and Creswell Gardens. Uh, they will not change. But what troubles me now with this CLMP is the possibility that Adelaide Oval would be used uh, as is fitting for some major event like the Ashes, or maybe even an AFL Grand Final. And it is possible with this community land management plan for the SMA to say, we want Adelaide Oval 2, Stelhoff Park, Pennington Gardens, Crestwell Gardens, we want the whole lot. And the 55,000 in the Oval uh, itself can be expanded then to an excess of 75,000. That is, that is a real prospect. And that will have huge impacts on residents who are inconvenienced enormously by these things. Uh, uh, and neighbours like St Peter's Cathedral, um, who almost every day of the week hold services. And they may be church services, funerals, weddings. Uh, they are potentially in deep trouble because of this. Um, and and I, I just can't accept this. Uh, and it's fully thinking to be arguing that this is good for businesses, this is good for events. It's actually bad for local businesses because what happens is, uh, may I have a minute, please? Look. Members, Chamber. What, what happens, Lord Mayor, is that the area is just swamped with traffic management uh, 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 companies managing the flow of cars, traffic crawls all around the businesses, all of the parks that are available, even the ones that are two hour event parking, are filled by those in the know who sneak out during uh, uh, the, uh, the break, move their car and come back in. Um, look, for businesses, it is just as big a nightmare as it is for residents. And if you go down O'Connell Street or Melbourne Street and say to the businesses, is this helping you, these events here at Adelaide Oval? The answer is always no. We get no benefit or there is a little benefit during cricket. That's the extraordinary thing. Cricket is a bigger money spinner for uh, businesses than football. But the, the biggest winner in all of this is, of course, Adelaide Oval. It's a big money spinner. Um, which is um, uh, what they need because, as we all know, they couldn't even make their loan repayments to the state government on the hotel this year. Thank um, you, Councillor. Look, Lord Mayor, uh, right now, I, I think uh, my community wants me to say, please don't support this. This is an unreasonable impact on their amenity. Thank you, Councillor. Um, members, Councillor Mackey. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I rise to speak against the substantive and the varied uh, motion. Um, but a question first before I speak to it through you, Lord Mayor, to our administration. As we are the owners of a very substantial market share of off-street car parking, commercial car parking, and we are also the, on behalf of the people of South Australia, the custodians of the Adelaide parklands. Do we have a conflict of interest in making decisions about a third party state management authority uh, being granted access to 
um, a commercial exploitation opportunity uh, on the park uh, for on our parklands uh, in terms of the charging of car parking um, admission. Acting C. Uh, thank you through the presiding member. Um, so the car park is part of the legislation as Councillor Martin did indicate. Um, in terms of whether um, there's a conflict of interest, I don't believe so. Um, we do um, allow events to be held in other parts of the parklands and um, associated with that there may well be a commercial uh, car park where um, people do charge, um, the event organiser may well charge people a commercial uh, rate to park on the parklands. Thanks, um, uh, uh, Claire, and through you, Lord Mayor. Um, just to speak briefly against this, in, in setting policy for the utilisation, the temporary commercialisation of parts of our parklands, we are, by that very nature, undertaking a form of, of social or socio-cultural engineering and I understand that that is our role as a, as a part of government. We also, I believe, need to have regard to the other uh, precedents that have been set in respect of the approval of uh, other places within our parklands and, and also parts of our parklands that are owned by uh, and operated by a state government statutory entity. In, in this case, I'll talk about botanic uh, gardens um, uh, um, uh, and state herbarium uh, statutory authority. Um, it does concern me that in granting, in, in regard to the concerts, an intensification of competition in a marketplace that ultimately is competing um, between Benithan Park, between um, Botanic Park, uh, between other parts of the parklands. And it does concern me greatly that by granting Adelaide Oval, the Stadium Management Authority, the opportunity to uh, leverage uh, uh, commercial harvests uh, in regard to concerts that might otherwise appear in other parts of the parklands, including, of course, with the Tennis Centre upgrade that is going to um, uh, re release a very substantial new set of opportunities for those of us old enough to remember, as I think I might have commented upon uh, in, in a previous debate, of those of us who remember Memorial Drive as a major music venue. Uh, it does concern me, uh, and for that reason, uh, and for the reason of the car parking uh, uh, intensification. When people can park in car parking stations south of the Torrens and walk through this amazing recreational precinct that uh, largely state government has uh, has enabled, um, that um, we, we, we're overkilling. We're overkilling and, and uh, I'm, I'm all for a little bit more kind of restraint in that regard. Thank you, members. Councillor Hart. I'm disappointed, Lord Mayor, to see the same arguments being wheeled out um, in many respects as they always are. And I, I, I'm similarly disappointed to see great um, advocates for culture in the city um, uh, bowing to the to the pressure um, uh, from some in the community in North Adelaide. They are a minority in the community. I respect their views and I again respect their right to quiet enjoyment um, of their property, but they are, um, of course, acting on um, a quite hyperbolic propaganda that was distributed and the majority of people who read that um, decided not to act on it. And it's those people um, that I feel that I represent. And as a capital city Lord Mayor, um, it's those people that I think we should be catering towards. On the one hand, for us to say um, that we will be happy to have smaller artistic soirees and cultural um, events with um, the Spiegel tent, um, uh, which caters for 350 people and arguably a smaller niche in the greater metropolitan South Australian community, right? For us to say that we will have that, but we're not gonna have, uh, I think it was, um, as I understand it, was Kylie Minogue, um, or, or other, or Pink, um, or other huge artists, which are, unfortunately were cancelled to COVID, but this council, not this council, previous council, made decisions to vary 
uh, to vary the CLMP on that basis in order to deliver entertainment and enjoyment to thousands upon thousands of South Australians. For us to pick and choose and say we're going to cater um, uh, uh, for the, the fringe and, and quite literally, you know, the fringe, some of the uh, some of the more unusual and wacky and quacky um, sorts of entertainment that one might like, but then in the same breath say that we are not going to cater um, uh, for the everyman, for, for the ordinary people oh, in South Australia. To, to, and I'm sorry, not, not, sorry, Councillor, what was your point? I'm not reflecting on anything. So, sorry, Councillor Mackey has a point of a clarification. clarification. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I reject utterly Councillor Hyde's inference that uh, in my advocacy, I'm bowing or kowtowing in any way to the, uh, in response to North Adelaide residents. My, my concerns as expressed, and they're certainly not anti the enlivenment and the continued enlivenment of our city, it specifically concerns the intensification of commercial activity in that part of the parklands when we have already established and under leveraged arguably um, uh, in regard to the approvals that are in place for other places that can Thank cater you, to thousands Mackey. of people. Um, but of course by that same logic Lord Mayor we would be in this council voting against um, the uh, tennis uh, stadium. Uh, we would be uh, highlighting a position no, wait, against well, if we're against commercial if we're against intensification commercialization Lord Mayor but of course that was the same argument used to oppose um, uh, the uh, generally applauded uh, efforts at Adelaide Oval. We like the little oval we like the little oval we don't want the big one um, but of course the public have spoken and they they quite like the infrastructure there so um, look Lord Mayor I think this strikes a balance this strikes a balance between what we were asked for, which was eight, what APLA actually recommended, um, which was six, which of course includes a representative from the Parklands Preservation Association. It, it, is, a, it is our skills-based advisory board for the Parklands. It also includes uh, distinguished people from the events sector like Rob Brookman AM. Um, uh, you know, that's APLA has advised six and we're now actually going for four. I think this strikes a balance, Lord Mayor. Now, I know I could reclaim my time, but I won't. Um, I actually gave you extra time. Thank you, thank you. I've thank made you. my points. Thank you. Um, well, I made up the time for, for so that Councillor Mackey could speak. Um, members, any other discussion? If not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Um, I just think we're, we're just missing the, the point a, a little bit here and I, it's no disrespect to anyone that did fill out the um, consultation and I believe that's 31 of them and I think that's what we're calculating to the 65% that Councillor Martin is making up of 31 people that did, a, that did consult on the um, on the consultation, but I just in, put it in perspective here. The Botanic can only hold, I think, about 8,000 people. Yes, correct. The Botanic Entertainment, oh, Entertainment yeah. Centre holds about 8,000 people. I think is that about right? Okay. So until um, I know that uh, uh, our Premier has pledged a wonderful entertainment centre um, as part of his pitch um, for his re-election, and that would be great. But until then, we don't have any really big facility to attract artists. And I think we need something up to 15,000 receipts or something like that or more um, for it to be worthwhile, worthwhile for international artists to come to our, and I say it again, capital city. Because that's what we are, it's a capital city. And if we can attract international artists to our city, we're putting ourselves on the map. And that's what we want to do. We want to put ourselves on the map. We want to be relevant. We want people to say, yes, I want to play Adelaide because I can, because it's easy enough to do for the organisers and it will happen. We could have had Kylie, we could have had Ping, we had Adele, that was a fabulous concert, everyone loved it. You can do dinner deals uh, for businesses and if they can fill in the hotels that they um, in, in the city. There is a million and one things for the businesses can do when it attracts entertainment like the big stars that do come here, big entertainers. So I think we need to give that opportunity. I think we need to put ourselves on the map for it. APLA did recommend eight. We're, we're cutting it back to six. 
anything more than six, they need to come back to council and, uh, and we need to uh, obviously approve it from there. I think it's really important for our city to get it out there that we are available to come to our city, capital city, to play their concert. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Carer, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abraham today. Um, members, I know we still have a number of reports tonight and motions, but I'm going to call a dinner Lord break. Lord Mayor, could I just request that we finish off the recommendations and then just start fresh with the questions and motions and then we're done? Uh, There's only, I think, one or two I left. I think we've got a few. Uh, we've got um, actually members, um, because 10.11, which is the budget, there are six motions that impact the budget. So I'm going to move 10.11 to after we finish with motions so that we know what the impact is going to be on the budget or not. So that leaves us with the draft community land management plan and the cultural investigation report before we go to the break. Is everybody happy that we do that? Are we happy that we do that? So right. Do. Okay, so we are 10.9, which is the draft community land management plan. Um, I'll look for a mover, Councillor Hyde. I'll look for a seconder, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today? No. Mem members? Councillor Martin? Uh, look, Lord Mayor, um, I have to say to you that I, uh, I support the notion that to make it administratively easier um, that there is a case to be made um, for having standard criteria at the beginning of each community land management plan. But in this case, um, I actually think putting in the broad brush to all of that for all community land management plans um, doesn't enable us to um, apply the fine grain uh, as we might. Uh, and I, I think three things need to be said. Um, and, and the first is that this plan says basically, though it's subject to our consideration of normal guidelines, um, we're pretty happy to have memorials in each of the parks. Um, now look, I don't want memorials in every park. I, I, I think that is a fine grained thing. I think that we determine that a particular park is acceptable, not that all are on the table, and we'll consider particular proposals for particular parks. And I think too that it's it, it's uh, prescriptive, too prescriptive, to ban drones from all areas of the parklands. Um, there are in fact aviation laws that prohibit the use of drones where there is a fear that they will interfere with aircraft movement, movements. Um, so um, we are effectively saying that across the parklands, this growing hobby of people taking photographs with drones, and it's not that they're up to any um, uh, thing that's inappropriate, they are actually looking for great photos of great features in our parklands. Um, they're great advertisements for our city. You see them on Facebook, but you won't see them too much longer because we are moving to ban them completely. And then to say, uh, with dogs on leash, um, we will allow it in just a few areas. And I say, uh, if you look at the map, North Adelaide is pretty much ruled out a whole lot, but it has to be two metres. And as uh, somebody who has two daughters with small animals, which are absolutely under control um, when they're more than two metres at nine feet or 10 feet, still under absolute control, there is a breach of um, the parklands rules, which is what we're agreeing here tonight. Um, it is much too prescriptive. I accept that there are some parks and places where it's not appropriate to have dogs off leash and that two metres or one metre might even be more appropriate, but it's not appropriate to, in the plan that's proposed, uh, to say, that's it, these areas are gone. So, um, look, you know, I, I just wish that we could take a, a, a finer grain approach to this. Um, I will vote against it. I really hope that everybody else does, because I think there's a really good conversation to be had about particular places. 
Um, I will just remind members that this is to this is an approval for us to go out to community and stakeholder consultation. So all of those things will be, I'm sure, part of the consultation, which will then be tabled at APLA and come back into council before it's approved. Um, are there any other speakers, Councillor Moran? Uh, yes, look, the only problem um, I have, and I do agree that it is too prescriptive, is um, changing the dog on leash and off leash area and the, uh, and the um, banning of the stretch leashes. Um, we brought that in some time ago. Um, my husband was attacked by two rock wheelers and we decided then to look at off leash areas. It causes a lot of consternation because people were then allowed to have their dogs off leash but under control in all the parklands and all our streets. It was a hard, uh, hard thing to sell to the public. Um, we were very careful where we put the off leash and on leash areas and people have now complied well, but they do like using the, putting the little fluffy dogs on the, on the long stretchy leashes. It is a plan that was um, well, well executed by the administration, well thought out and generous and sensible. Uh, it took us a long time to do it. There have been no major dog attacks. You might remember that the other thing that um, triggered it was the two little girls down at Benitham Park being attacked by rock wheelers. So we had a real problem with dog, dog bites. We haven't had a problem. So to upset the public, and after consultation is a, nobody, nobody listens to the consultation. It's just 31 um, irritating North Adelaide people and the North Adelaide Society. So that's always dismissed um, by uh, Team Adelaide. So the only I thing I, I will that. vote against this because um, I think to open that can of worms when we solved the problem some time ago, why reinvent the wheel, why upset people? Is it to distract them from the other things in this? Because if you put this out to consultation, they won't be talking about Phil's drones, they won't talking, be talking about prescription, they'll be talking about the dog area. So I think we should not put that out. It's not broken, we don't need to fix it. Everybody's happy and I'm suspicious as to why it's in here. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. And the division. Council Members Division has been called on a motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing for all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Carer, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor and Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, uh, we are, as I said, I'm going to uh, defer 10.11 to uh, after we have finished items at at 17. Um, so that leaves the culture investigation report. And I will look to the floor. Councillor Hyde, are you moving? Yes. And um, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? Oh, is that my right? Councillor Abraham today. Is that my right? Thank you. Members, Councillor Moran. Oh, yes, look, I'm quite happy to um, vote for this. Um, the behaviour of some councillors has been extremely challenging. Um, and I, as a long-term member of council, can assure the new councillors that some of the behaviours here by the new councillors has certainly challenged my mental health and my well-being. Um, and I'm sure it has challenged the staff as well. Uh, I've never seen anything like it in my whole time on council. And I might not be the sharpest tool in the shed or the sharpest politician, as Councillor Hyde constantly refers to. Um, but I do come from a perspective of knowing, as Justin does and as Claire does, what a good council looks like and what good behaviour looks like. And this looks nothing like that. So um, all I can ask you, Lord Mayor, is that you fairly um, uh, use these new rules um, and do not favour the majority faction. And it is not used as a weapon when uh, I went to visit the local government minister, I asked her and she agreed to look through the prism of any changes to punishments, behaviours, through the prism of those, those changes being made to beat the, the smaller independent fat people about the head. Because I've been on councils that that has happened. Uh, it is the risk of tightening up the rules. 
uh, three strikes and you're out. Well, I think I've got two, someone would, um, for things that weren't important, weren't um, serious breaches. But you, you can, in a way, could I ask that Councillor Hyde and Councillor Kuros do not keep talking when other people Sorry, I couldn't hear them. I was listening to you. Um, we have witnessed, as Greg has, how these uh, punishments can be abused and uh, used to intimidate um, independent councillors. I hope that the Lord Mayor won't let that happen. I'm happy to tighten up the behaviour. Um, some of them I'm not happy at all with. I think that, uh, can we still speak to Lucy, Claire, or um, do we have to ask you all the time? Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on the, um, the CEO, um, but, and none of these, need the next council term, I think we would need to take the foot off the throttle and uh, reverse a lot of these things. But I'm talking about this council for the next 18 months, I think it's necessary. I'm sick and tired of the personal abuse. I'm sick and tired of being bullied and I'm sick and tired of this chamber. So I recommend these changes to this council when if and when I get into the next council, hopefully there will be a different chamber and we'll be able to remove most of those and I'll be able to talk to Clinton, Tom and uh, Justin again, not just poor old Claire. Okay, thank you. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. I think we have to be reminded that this was, uh, this is brought forward in regards to uh, our report that I asked uh, for an investigation on the on the culture between the elected members and the administration. So this is brought forward um, by the acting CEO for a feeling of a need that there needs to be some sort of uh, order and protection in within the administration from the elected members. So let's be mindful of, of that, first of all. Second of all, let's also um, be mindful of the fact that there have been um, numerous amount of emails um, that the administration staff are CC'd in, some totally inappropriate emails, which completely shocked me when I first came into council. I was shocked at the way that senior members of council spoke to each other, spoke in emails to not only to uh, other elected members, but also to administration. You would not get away with that in the private sector. And honestly, it is shameful, it is embarrassing, it gobsmacked me, and it interfered with my own mental health because I could not understand how this is possible in local government. So I commend the CEO for bringing this forward and putting some order and some space between elected members and administration for them to do their job and not get involved with the ridiculous language and, uh, and insinuations and et cetera that I could, can't even, don't even want to bring into this, uh, this chamber and discuss because it's honestly, the behavior is appalling. It is and very if very you want to tomorrow. keep on talking about uh, the division that was created from the moment that we stepped into council, that is also appalling. It was created by a narrative that Someone took from an election, I won't name them, but we know who they are. Um, someone took from an election camp that, that was out there and they twisted it and minced it into a narrative that the media brought in and it's continually displayed in the media. Great, congratulations on working on that narrative. But we are here, we are here as elected members and we're here to represent ratepayers. We are here to do a job. This is not about you. This is about the city. This is not about anything else but, but us doing a job and representing our ratepayers. They are working hard out there. They're doing it tough. And they don't want to hear the, the, the crap, if I might want to call it that, that comes out of this council sometimes. We Councillor Moran, you are interrupting. That word because I don't know what else to call it. You it is not, it is not Moran. appropriate to have these conversations out there for the public to see and to be and to know. 
Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, they say bad things happen when good people do nothing. Bad things have happened in this chamber. Bad things have happened by email exchanges. And from time to time, I felt necessary to intervene and to correct the record or provide clarification in those emails. There's a reason why I get involved personally, myself. There's a reason why I get involved in those conversations, because I believe each and every single one of us are bystanders. And I believe that an active bystander or any bystander has the responsibility to be an active bystander and to correct the record and to stand up for the right things. I've seen countless emails where abuse has been perpetrated by some of these elected members here in this chamber towards staff and towards other elected members. So this here, what we have before us, gives every single one of us the opportunity to become an active bystander, to stand up for what's right, and to stop some of this um, behavior and to call it out. That's essentially what we need to do. We need to call that out, and we need to stamp it out, and we need to get rid of it. Lord Mayor, we've seen media reports, we've seen ombudsman's reports, we've seen all sorts of things that have come through this chamber. So now this here well, gives us the opportunity. Yes, councillor. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, councillor Abraham today. What ombudsman report? What Sorry, ombudsman report? It's councillor Moran. If you can allow him to answer the question. Uh, the ombudsman report that was. Uh, was it 2019, 2020 that came into this chamber? I, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is a serious accusation that this councillor has seen ombuds. One moment, one moment, please. Um, I knew somebody's well, seen sorry, the ombuds. Councillor what Moran, what just a moment, please. Well, how does the press know Councilor so much Moran, about it? I'm just getting advice there was an ombudsman report that came into the chamber and if i could just finish listening to what jenny's saying i'll let the chamber know a moment please the last of the <laughs> members just a minute Okay, so the advice from governance is they do believe there was an ombudsman report that came into the chamber in 2019 about a breach and that was tabled in the chamber. Um, we can have a look, it was 2019, and we can actually get that information to members at a later moment. I'm sorry, the council said ombudsman reports plural. And the concern is that I have read in the paper excerpts saying that they were from, particularly this. There, there have been no reports there, distributed there at this point. Ombudsman report. Oh, so okay, changed. an Ombudsman report yes, in yes. 2019. And, yes, Thank and you, Councillor. And countless media reports about, about this Council's actions. Lord Mayor, as I was saying, this here gives us the opportunity to reset, restart, set the time, set the precedent going forward. So, so we know what's right and what's wrong. We know what's bad and what's good, and we're all on the same page. So I commend the uh, uh, recommendation for us. Councillor Mackey. Um, Thank thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I was glad to um, have the acting CEO clarify for me this afternoon that the new um, ramping up of constraints that are being put on councillors, elected members, engagement with administration doesn't extend to uh, um, treating with Lucy with regard to the registration of complaints. So I appreciate that. I should also add, uh, and I think I have, am the only person who's been standing up and saying I'm speaking in support of the motion, Lord Mayor. And it um, is appreciated, Councillor. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, a, a question, though, um, in regard to the constraints that are now being applied to elected members, I, I, do I assume correctly that that also applies to you as an elected member of the chamber as well, and that you will treat through the CEO? Uh, I do work through the CEO, so I don't think there'll be any change to what I'm doing. 
I uh, have Councillor now. Councillor Hyde, did you did Councillor Canole had his hand oh, up? Oh, and yes. so I've got you next. Is that all right? Yes. Councillor Canole. And uh, I will I support this motion. And as I said, uh, I, I appreciate very much the considered way that it's been uh, written out. I mean, I, in the organisations that I've worked in and our businesses and such, I mean, our, the care for our staff is critical. How can I, and, and my, our role as leaders is to protect them, but enable them to do their job and hold them also to account in a, in a fair and reasonable way. And that is by the various processes and the various expectations. And you do that in a way that is a positive experience and enabling them to do their job. And that's the first, uh, and how we respectfully talk to each other. All those are critical. I think, um, you know, and, and this process now, it also is an enabler because anything that goes through the ticketed system is held and is accountable. That means that we're able to track it, we're able to go back and we're able to have a proper uh, development of whatever the issue is or whatever the action is. And I think that's really important because we all need to know, we all need to be able to go back and ensure that we are moving things forward because this is about trying to create positive experiences uh, and interaction because we do have a business here and it's quite an amazing large business with such a great diverse uh, need and and also a community interaction, and I think we have to remember that, and you know that does that, and that formality also takes away and uh, some of the emotional context of the way things are done. And we are about creating good outcomes. We can disagree on what they are, um, you know, but at the end of the day, we are here to do for the benefit of the majority, at least all, if we can, and. Uh, and I talk, I think to my, uh, about uh, being an elected member, I would have to say that I've always attempted uh, to be fair, reasonable and caring, uh, always try to uh, speak in a manner uh, that it is considered. And I also have to say that, um, that I have had sufficient occasion where uh, the way I uh, have been uh, reacted to has been quite awful, quite unnecessary, and uh, uh, quite relentless. And I feel um, that that is a great issue, simply because we don't need that sort of interaction. Um, and I think that amongst each other, uh, that we need to consider that as well, because we can have differences, etc. But at the end of the day, uh, uh, how we speak to each other, and it is about for a purpose of this council, it's not about denigrating each other, and it's not about attacking or calling names. And I have sufficient uh, uh, emails to that uh, end uh, that really are unpleasant. But hey, I have learned to uh, accommodate those, and uh, um, you know, and that's it, just if that has part of the course, then I'll, I'll work with that. But I will not lower myself to that. Members, are there any other speakers? If not, I'll go to Councillor Hyde to sum up. So no, no, just no, a moment. No. Uh, sorry, Councillor Martin, did, did you wish to speak? No, I had my hand up to take my original speaking spot. Okay, all right. So, um, but before I start that, Lord Mayor, I have um, a collection of 170 emails to take uh, for inclusion in the minutes. That is my right under the meeting regulations. They're all internal documents of the council. I've tabled documents before. I'm just going to take some advice on that, Councillor Hyde. Um, governance has said you are able to table documents as long as it's relevant to the matter before us. Oh, very much so, and that's that's what I'll get to, Lord Mayor. And, and so, in tabling these there's almost 200 um, emails, I just want to thank the CEO for bringing this report in and progressing this work. Um, we have all seen the awful harassment and bullying of staff. It's very sadly in the last two and a half years. Um, and that extends to councillors uh, as well. But of course, this report isn't necessarily about us. But the behaviour that staff are, are subjected to and that they see of the councillor interaction with one another also leads um, to issues of, of not having a safe workplace. And it's precisely why the Deputy Lord Mayor, um, or now Deputy Lord Mayor Mary Corus, and I called for this investigation um, in the first place, Lord Mayor. And while I cannot comment on that, um, as it remains in confidence, I can still highlight some of the abusive material um, that I have seen over the last two and a half years that has been directed at staff, that has been directed at me, and has been directed at fellow elected members that staff have been privy to. And what I'll read is precisely the sort of behaviour that has led to the report before us. 
um, uh, it's behaviour that has never actually been acceptable under the existing behavioural code. Um, and it will be further called out by these changes and, and for that I am grateful. Many of these emails are single line emails. Um, some of them uh, are just mocking emojis. All of them are offensive and disrespectful um, for the purposes of the code and there is more abuse almost every day. Uh, we have demanding emails issued to staff like um, these four, which CC'd in dozens of members of the public um, from Councillor Moran, and I quote, uh, Vanessa, what is going on here? Exclamation mark. Vanessa, can we sort this out? Vanessa, that can't be right. Unbelievable. And then just one Vanessa. And then, of course, we have other emails to the CEO from Councillor Moran. Bloody hell, Mark. What does this all mean? Very unsatisfactory, Mark. We are your employer. And then after these emails, uh, it continues from Councillor Moran. Mark, it is totally unacceptable for you to not answer emails. Of course, we can understand perhaps why Mr Goldstone wasn't answering. Uh, then we have, of course, the bullying of colleagues, Lord Mayor, to which staff are usually included, such as this from Councillor Moran. Councillor, are you, do you have a point of order? Isn't this a whole motion to stop um, councillors bullying people? He's bullying me now. I'm reading your words back to you, Councillor Moran. Um, such as this email from Councillor Moran to Mary Kouros. Are you simple? Exclamation mark. Or this one to the Lord Mayor. OMG Sandy, what is wrong with you? Followed by eight question marks. And then unbelievable Sandy, followed by seven exclamation marks. Or the sarcastically, you really are a chance Sandy. And um, then Lord Mayor, there are emails which CC'd Councillor, in. Um, Hyde, I'm actually asking, being told that you need to, I need you to actually, uh, that correspondence would have to be moved and seconded to be included because it's correspondence between members unless it's correspondence to the public. So, um, and I well, need I you to speak to the subject matter of the motion. Yeah, of course, the, the subject matter, Lord Mayor, and, and there are a large number of examples which have CC'd in staff, um, which is one of the reasons why we're here today. And I come now to the comments directed to me by Councillor Moran, and I quote, and they're all here on the record. You are a loser. You are cringeworthy. You, my friend, are a lightweight and should zip it. You rude little shorty. Napoleon, I suggest you stop talking, Alex. And she's here laughing still. Tool, you are distasteful. You are toast. Very funny loser. And of course, after I ask her to stop including me on this abuse, I get the response. Oh, these were not poor publicly baby. published emails that he's reading out. Half of them CC the public, for goodness sake. No, I didn't. I have not pub CC'd the public. These are private councillor to councillor Council emails. Council members, I think in order for this to be included in the public minutes, we're going to need a motion, a mover and a second to, to accept that these are okay and we need to review them. Well, because yeah, that's we, a given, isn't it? Yeah, and we, I think we need to review them because, I mean, we, we haven't actually read what was planned when we said that you can table anything. So I think we, you need to exercise this caution, stick to talking to the motion, or, or give us time to review what you're proposing. And I think we need a move and a second or two. Um, but, but again, we haven't reviewed to, to, what's to, going to be included to, either. So. Point, point of clarification, Lord Mayor, um, there is a motion before us which, quite understandably, uh, uh, requires evidence to be adduced in favour of the motion. Uh, I don't see that this is not uh, evidence that's entirely germane to the motion. No, through Councillors. Yep. <laughs> through, through you, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, sorry. What I'm seeking is a mover and a seconder to, to include in the minutes this table document. That's what we're, we're saying we need a mover and a second for, because it wouldn't normally be necessarily included. But given the nature of what it is and members have been called out in it, that is an appropriate thing to do. Okay. To, um, to have these in public when they were private. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Moran. Really That's why I'm just trying to say, and given they have haven't been assessed by governments, and account. therefore we're not going to get a move in a second unless we actually have it to go through review through governments. So we won't be tabling that. We'll have to pause on that. That's fine. If, if I may just. So I need you to talk to the motion, Councillor Moran. If I may just continue talking to the motion. Lord Mayor, some of this so correspondence... So no more, no is, more correspondence until because it hasn't been reviewed. Well, Lord Mayor, these are actually, this is actually public. This is public material. A lot of this material 
CC the public. It's been forwarded on. We know so, that councillors have a propensity to CC. That's what needs to be reviewed. I'm sorry, Councillor Hyde, but no, I'm getting very no, clear governance advice. I, I, I'm sorry, Lord CEO, Mayor, I'm acting. trying to speak out here about the abuse that I've I been I know you are, to. Councillor Hyde. It's just that there is, um, I've been asked by governance that it hasn't been reviewed. Therefore, until it's been reviewed, we can't have a move from second week's um, to accept I'm, I'm that into the minutes. I'm table the documents. Nevertheless, my address still stands, and I will still highlight the paper that I have been subjected to. The tabling is procedural. That's fine. That's fine. Um, um, so as long as you're talking in general terms rather in, than... Yeah, in, in general terms. The, the behaviour generally that has led to this includes examples like, oh, poor baby, when I ask for the behaviour to stop. It includes examples from Councillor Moran, such as honestly Councillor, grow up. I, Councillor, or, I'm going to have to stop you there because we, again, we haven't reviewed the documents. We don't know if they're public or private. It doesn't matter whether you've reviewed and the also, documents or not. And completely out of context, it doesn't give the other side of the email argument. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Um, they're out of context, they're defamatory, and I will take action. And if you don't stop Councillor, it now, Councillor I'll include Moran. Them. Well, you Moran, have to stop you are, Councillor Moran. I know. Well, don't stop yelling at me from the chamber and when I'm trying to actually stop Councillor Hyde from continuing. Yeah. Councillor Hyde, Look, I, we've I given will, you very I clear just, advice from governance that will, we cannot continue because we uh, these are terms. not in I general terms general. without quoting because that is not general. Without quoting, without quoting. Well, I don't need to quote Lord Mayor, but I can say that these are just the tip of the iceberg. These are just the tip of the iceberg. There are hundreds more. And what I'm attempting to do, Lord Mayor, is to pierce the veil so that the public can see the rot in this place. This is going to get harder before it gets easier, Lord Mayor. We need to have, we need to be totally transparent about the issues that have led us here. Some will argue against that transparency and rail against it. That's their right, and the public will have their say on that sort of behaviour. The measures before us are about regulating elected member conduct and subjecting staff to abuse over electronic messaging, and a large portion of that abuse includes what I've just read out, Lord Mayor, to this chamber. A large portion of that. And I'm not going to stand up here and cry crocodile tears about my own mental health. That's not why I'm here. I'm here to cry tears for the ratepayer for the rate I object to that. Here. Excuse me. That 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 I find that absolutely objectionable to have um, that belittled and thrown back at me. This is exactly the abuse that this motion is seeking to stamp out. I'm voting for this motion, so there's no there's no attempt by him to convince me. He has defamed me and he's insulted me and he's called my my uh, mental health admission to up to ridicule and I really think Lord Mayor this is what's this person is who we need thank you Councillor Moran well Lord Mayor Councillor... if that offended Councillor Moran I will withdraw withdraw that remark and, and claim that my point was actually that despite the fact that my mental health has suffered as a result of Councillor Moran's consistent abuse of me despite that fact I'm not actually worried about that it does concern me I'm not worried about that I'm worried about the ratepayers I'm worried about delivering for them I'm worried about our staff, their health, safety and well-being. So this report is not about elected members. And while I want to pierce the veil and expose the abuse that's been flung around, I want us to get back to our business, back to our core business, which is delivering for our ratepayers. And I'll leave it there. Members, Councillor Martin. Yeah, Lord Mayor, if I may ask a, a couple of questions of the administration. Um, this item is called Cultural Investigation Report. Um, it is not attached. Uh, I have not seen it. Has any elected member seen that report? Acting CEO. Through the presiding member, I can't comment on that. All right, let me ask specifically, has any councillor seen that report? Through the presiding member, I can't comment on that. Well, I, 
I do ask you to comment on the basis that if it has been shown to particular members who are councillors and not to others, do, does the CEO believe that would be a problem? Acting CEO. Through the presiding member, um, I have a copy of the report. I have not shared it with a single council member. Can I ask the acting CEO, has she shared that report with the Lord Mayor? Has the Lord Mayor studied it? Through the presiding member, I've had a copy of the report since the end of January. I've not shared it with a single council member. That includes the Lord Mayor. Okay, so uh, I hear that the Lord Mayor has not seen this report. Can I ask the acting CEO, have you read this report in its entirety? Through the presiding member, yes. You've read it in its entirety. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, the only person in this organisation to have read that report is the Acting CEO. That would be a correct interpretation? Acting CEO. That wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought because um, we had a, a CEO who it also um, has the report. It, he read it before he went on sick leave? That's a question for him. I can't comment on that. I understand that. Um, um, so we are being asked to agree to recommendations um, for solutions to problems that none of us know about on the basis of your recommendation. Is that correct? Acting CEO. Through the presiding member. Um, members will remember last month, um, I shared a confidential report with a public attachment, which indicated that I, as acting CEO, thought there are a number of actions that I should be taking as acting CEO to improve um, and ensure the wellbeing of staff. That's what I'm continuing to do, Councillor. I, I understand that, and that was uh, from the confidential report, uh, which has been published. That is the con confidential report of the CEO's recommendations. Acting CEO. Through the presiding member, the public attachment said that there will be a number of actions that I will be undertaking. This continues that piece of work. Okay. Uh, but again, we, we don't know what those problems are, but you do. Thank you. I think that's Through another question. I think member, you're asking the same I question think, over yeah, and over no, again. Um, did you wish to speak to I'm the motion, Councillor? I'm just being absolutely clear. I do, and I have one final question, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, there is an edict um, in this recommendation that excludes councillors from having direct contact with staff and dealing uh, from, uh, my understanding of it, uh, the acting CEO uh, on all matters as a filter, as well as through the elected member email system. Um, will this also apply to the Lord Mayor? That is to say, the Lord, Lord Mayor will not be speaking to directors or staff members. Acting CEO. Through, through the presiding mayor, um, through the presiding member, sorry. Um, beg your pardon, I got distracted. The Lord Mayor was talking as you asked your question. Could you please repeat yes, your question? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, the, the question, Thank you, the question Martin. was that councillors are excluded from talking to all staff except the acting CEO and through the email system addressed to um, whoever is appropriate through a staff member. But we are not under this proposal permitted to speak to staff independently, will that same rule apply to the Lord Mayor? She will not be able to speak with directors. She will not be able to speak with associate directors. She will not be able to speak to the, uh, the staff within her office. Through the presiding member, what this recommendation is asking is that you use existing processes already in place to enable you um, to um, get answers for your constituents in an efficient and effective manner, which is through the SRS system. That's what um, we're asking, what I'm asking for you to do tonight. In relation as to whether you can or cannot um, talk to um, directors, I think that um, is certainly a conversation we can have. I'm not asking you not to. 
um, what I'm suggesting and what I'm asking for is that when you do, that it's in a respectful manner. What we are asking you to do is not to copy council staff into your correspondence and to continue to, when that's a council member group email, and continue to copy the CEO into that. And that's been working well, and I thank members who've been committing to that in recent times. Um, is the Lord Mayor subject to similar um, processes. I think that's what you were asking originally, Councillor. Um, obviously, the Lord Mayor, as presiding member, has staff in her office who conduct and carry out uh, work. Um, obviously, those staff report through to me as acting CEO, and that will continue. Um, in relation to whether the Lord Mayor will meet with staff and whether the Lord Mayor will meet with directors, um, as similarly to all of you here who have continued to meet with directors in recent weeks, I don't see a need for that necessarily to change. For the Lord Mayor or for elected members? Or for members? both. For both. All right. Okay. All right. Um, look, thank you. That, uh, that has helped. Um, and I take away from that that the communication that councillors have with staff um, will be facilitated, uh, contrary to what the report says, in the manner it has previously proceeded in terms of directors, uh, and that the Lord Mayor will have the capacity to talk to all of her staff and directors, but uh, obviously with those people reporting to you. I've got it right. No, it's a bit confusing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, it's not really confusing, Councillor. I'm, I'm sorry that you, you're finding it so confusing. Um, what we're, what I'm asking is that um, council members, in dealing with council staff, uphold the behavioural code as outlined in your code of conduct, use the processes provided by um, the organisation to direct queries, which is the SRS system. So um, it becomes really challenging when council members ask for um, numerous pieces of information and it flies around the organisation. It's inefficient. Council members then sometimes um, you know, don't necessarily get the answers that they need in a swift and timely manner. Sorry, I hope that pen's not going to get drilled into your head. No, You're I'm looking very tense there, councillor. Um, I'm asking you to continue the practice of not copying council staff in, into emails unless I suggest that. So, for example, recently there were some questions um, in relation to the supplementary election. I copied in our chief operating officer into that email. General business practice and um, good manners would suggest that that's okay for you to copy him back in when you respond to that email. Um, but on the whole, I'm asking you not to just copy in staff, and council members have been doing that in recent times. We're also, also asking you that you direct questions through the Law Mayor Chair and CE during council and council committee meetings along with the other suggestions as well. Okay, uh, look, I, I, I have a, a, a bit more information, Lord Mayor. I, I'm thinking I'm understanding it, um, but certainly the, uh, the ban on talking to staff that I read about in the advertiser uh, and uh, the CEO's description of a more effective and functional means of uh, corresponding is actually about more things than just this cultural investigation report. Um, all right, Lord Mayor, may I speak? May I have my... Yes, Councillor. Um, this really is about um, us making sure that we behave in line with our code of conduct and that we actually use the systems that have always been in place so that we can actually get the information flowing through in an efficient way. I don't think that is uh, anything, we're not asking for anything in terms of, you know, a process, using a process that is foreign. It's been there. You still have access to Lucy, of course. It is the elected members request system. So I think it's fairly straightforward. Thank you for that. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, last time this came up, I excused myself. Uh, on the basis of what I thought was a conflict of interest because um, certain members of council were claiming on social media it was about me uh, and um, uh, through journalists as well complaining that um, it was about me uh, and in fact there were subsequent reports. 
Um, it was said that I engaged in inappropriate behaviour and bullying, and in fact, Councillor Kouros used that slur tonight as well yeah. in saying that she felt bullied by my newsletter. And Point uh, of my newsletter. Lord Mayor, I'm entitled to say how I feel. Is that so? That's how I felt. So. I, I understand that the Deputy Lord Mayor is entitled to feel bullied. Um, but used in this context, with this report floating around, it is, in my view, inappropriate. And moreover, it is not founded on anything of substance. The newsletters report how the councillor votes and what she, the Deputy Lord Mayor votes and how she speaks, what she says, and that she's a, a member of a group, a voting group. That's all it says. Now, that is all reasonable commentary. But what we've got here in this environment is people suggesting that this is bullying. Now, what I've been told by um, both uh, media uh, and others is that um, this, uh, this uh, constant innuendo, uh, particularly about me, isn't borne out by the report, uh, and that there are uh, more details in there. Um, I can only speculate about that, but I'm told that the health and safety of staff, particularly because of late night meetings, is a substantial part of that report. I have no idea. But the point is, no one in this place does. No one has seen the report apart from the acting CEO. And uh, we are being asked to deliberate on it. Now, what has happened is it is clear that it is being used as a political tool. Uh, by councillors here tonight. And for months and months, it has been used as a political tool. And what I say is, look, I'm prepared to accept all this, but show me the report. Give me the examples. Tell me where this is occurring, that it necessitates this action. Now, if I, if I can have that, then uh, that would have uh, probably my wholehearted support. But right now, uh, people are just responding um, to nothing. And let me just say, I, I'd like to also table uh, emails from Councillor Abrahim today and Councillor Hyde that I regard as abusive and bullying. Um, would you like me to move that? Same would apply, Councillor Martin. So it would need to be reviewed by governance. Okay. Um, Lord Mayor. Um, Sorry, it is time, Councillor. Well, uh, this will be a test. I would like one minute longer. Members. And that's exactly the point. I'm being bullied into silence. Bullied into silence oh, by these people. So, members, we didn't see hands. I'm going to actually ask for your hands again because it was. Uh, Okay. Correct. All right, members, uh, being asked very simply is an extension of um, time, yes or no, hands please, so that we can see them. No, that's, so and, it's not. And that's thank the whole Councillor point Martin. Of the that's um, the members, whole would point. anybody else like to speak? Councillor Kira, thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, I must speak to take issue with the uh, assertion uh, put forward by Councillor Martin that we are acting here in a vacuum, that we are acting about something uh, we know nothing about. Uh, I take uh, the issue with that uh, of a person uh, with a pair of functioning eyes uh, and of a person with a basic uh, connection to reality. Um, look, I have been person, always, person, I have, I have always person, been, I have always been, no, I've always stop been, interrupting. I, I, I've always been uh, quite forthcoming in saying that I think that, uh, you know, when it comes to councillors, generally speaking, the rule is we are big enough and ugly enough to look after ourselves. I do think, and I've said this before, uh, this is a chamber of, <coughs> chamber of government. We have an adversarial system in the courts here. We have an adversarial system uh, in parliament and in, in, in all levels of government. And I think the robust debate and discussion, I've got no problem with it whatsoever. However, uh, what we've got here is, is really just an absolute muddying of the waters. Uh, this was brought about because we are talking about uh, the welfare of the administration. Uh, that was the purpose of the report. That is the principal purpose of the motion before us. Uh, and I do think there is an extent uh, to which that is uh, being obfuscated by a lot of the debate here tonight. Um, 
As I said earlier, we don't need to see the report to know uh, what has uh, been uh, so problematic. Uh, we've all seen uh, uh, the steady stream, the constant sort of streams of emails that come out CCing the administration. I can only imagine the kind of sick feeling in the stomach that some of the staff would probably have when they see yet another email, which they feel compelled uh, to read because it's coming from a counsellor, even though, even though technically speaking, we don't employ the staff, uh, we employ the CEO. And my understanding is we speak to the uh, administration uh, at the uh, prerogative of the CEO. Uh, it is absolutely tragic that it's come to this because we had a good system whereby we could contact uh, uh, directors uh, and even other uh, uh, staff members uh, and because we had a generally productive uh, interaction with them. Sadly, uh, that leeway uh, has been abused, in my view, and we now come to this juncture uh, where we will lose that, uh, that, that uh, um, efficiency. Uh, so be it. Uh, I do think um, uh, in, in all the circumstances, let's keep our heads level and let's focus on the effect on the administration. We don't need to see the report. And another thing, the reason the report is not made public uh, is quite plain. You will cruel and chill the ability of staff members to be honest and open up about what they've experienced when the report will simply go uh, into the hands of politicians who will then, for their own small-minded uh, political reasons, leak it to the media. That is the effect of making a report public. You can't do that. You can't. There's a reason we don't have it, but we don't need it, Lord Mayor. None of us members, let's be real, Again. need to see the report to know what the problems are, but we do know that this is a way forward. And I really commend some of the speeches that I've heard. Councillor Abraham him today was absolutely spot on. Councillor Kouros, let's just move forward and do it. Members, if not, I'll go to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, I'm I'm sadly unsurprised that Councillor Martin needs to see the report to understand what is wrong with the behaviour in this place. I'm unsurprised, Lord Mayor, but ultimately, Councillor Kira summed it up um, beautifully. This behaviour must stop. It's totally unacceptable. It does a disservice to us, and more importantly, it does a disservice uh, to those that we represent. Uh, well, this is the problem, Councillor Martin. You keep asking which behaviour. <laughs> so, members, <laughs> members, let Councillor Hyde sum up, please. If I, if I could, Lord Mayor, if I could. Look, Councillor please. Moran, stop interrupting, please. It's this report. This report is about our staff, and and I hope I hope that it does come out of confidence one day in the future, the, the still confidential report. Um, and I hope at that point, at that point, um, these measures may be honed to deal with those particular elected members that the staff may have particular uh, complaints about, um, that, and that are, I assume, the, if you will, the uh, primary subjects of the report. Now, I don't know what's in it. I know the behaviour that I see. That is completely, he's already identified me as who he thinks is part I, of the report. Now he's doing it again. I we haven't seen the report. So thank you. We That's a point of clarification. So you're summing up so to the motion, Councillor Hyde. Well, if, 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 I, if I may sum up, Lord Mayor, if I may sum up, I, again, I just want to, I just want to congratulate um, and thank the CEO for seeing this work through to its completion. I want to thank the acting CEO. Um, I want to thank uh, all the staff that were involved in, in pulling this together as it is. Um, the whispers that I hear in back corridors is that it was not a pleasant thing to revisit, and but that it is something that was desperately needed. Desperately needed. And we know we've lost good people, Lord Mayor. We know we've lost good people. Councillor, we are summing up. We've lost good people because they've not subjected motion. themselves to this behaviour. And I don't blame them. Your I don't blame them. I'm here to serve out my full term, perhaps some way. But, um, uh, you know, time will tell as to whether or not I want to put myself through this again. Um, but the staff, this is their job. This is their job. We're just part time councillors. This is their job. And they shouldn't have to look at this every day. They shouldn't. And I hope that these reforms will go a long way to fixing it. Members, we're going to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Council members, the division has been called carried. on the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing till all names have been called. Um, Councillor Moran, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abraham today.
Members, we're going Procedural to take... Procedural motion, Lord Mayor. Uh, I move that Council adjourn this evening, having met for four hours, out of an abundance of concern for the health and safety of staff and elected members, and resume at a time and date to be determined by the CEO. Having been abused for So I'm looking for a seconder for the deferral of the meeting. Yes, I'll second. I'll go anyway. So, members to the vote, those in favour? Sorry, we're trying to actually close the meeting, adjourn the meeting, not adjourn for dinner. So this is adjourning the meeting, not adjourning for dinner. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Moran, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan and Councillor Martin. Okay. Members, we're going to take a 20-minute break to have some dinner. Um, uh, we will be back here at... Um, uh, actually, we do 25 minutes. We're back at quarter past.
Society members report. Um, so we've had some fantastic projects come to fruition over the past months. We celebrated the launch of our three City of Music laneways, the Sear Lane, No Fixed Address Lane and Cold Chisel Lane, and it was an honour to be joined by members of No Fixed Address and Jimmy Barnes for the occasions, and I thank the Deputy Lord Mayor for chairing on those occasions, the three occasions, um, and those members that attended. Uh, the project recognises Adelaide's musical greats and will attract music fans and tourists to our city, and the lanes feature signage and beautiful public art that pay tribute to the musicians. And I got some feedback from the West End Association that they are being photographed uh, at a regular basis at the moment, and they're surprised how many people are searching out the lanes to see the public art. Um, we also witnessed a pandemic defying success with the Adelaide Festival season last month. I'm absolutely in awe of what we were able to achieve here in Adelaide. It was a great pleasure to welcome artists and organisers of the Adelaide Fringe, WOM Adelaide, Adelaide Writers Week, and the Adelaide Festival to the Adelaide Town Hall for a civic event on the 11th of March expressing the City of Adelaide's appreciation for their hard work in pulling off the festivals this year while keeping everyone safe and adhering to the COVID-19 restrictions. Um, Adelaide is the festival state and following last month's success, I attended the launch of Illuminate Adelaide last week. This new major annual winter event will take over our city streets, laneways and buildings from the 16th of July to the 1st of August 2021 and celebrate innovation, music, art, technology and light. I'd like to uh, thank the Premier for his investment, as well as the co-founders and, and creative directors, Rachel's Party and Lee Cumberledge. As part of Illuminate Adelaide, we will have the exhibition Van Gogh Alive at 88 Van Gogh, sorry, Van Gogh Alive, at 88 O'Connell Street, beginning on the 24th of June. Um, this is going to be extraordinary and we hope we'll bring lots of business to O'Connell Street. It will be an absolute draw, draw cut to North Adelaide. The Van Gogh exhibition was one of the topics discussed at the recent O'Connell Street Roundtable last me uh, week with traders uh, um, and how we can actually take best advantage of that, uh, along with various improvements to the streets amenity that are now being considered. On Friday, April the 10th, I attended the launch of the Collections Project, and that's a, a partnership with Guildhouses, one of the City of Adelaide's 2020 cultural strategic partnerships, which were delayed due to COVID. These partnerships are a series of projects and initiatives which will build on Adelaide's reputation as a mecca for arts and culture. I marked Harmony Day by welcoming new Australian citizens at a citizenship citizenship ceremony at the Adelaide Town Hall on the 19th of March and also celebrated International Women's Day on March 10th. I spoke at a showcase SA luncheon with the Young Australian of the Year, Isabel Marshall, Chief Scientist for South Australia, Caroline McMillan, founder of Body Image Movement, Taryn Brunsmith, and the uh, community builder of Impact SA and founder of Young Impact SA, Catherine House. Um, myself and the Deputy Lord Mayor then hosted a group of students from Adelaide Botanic High School, St Mary's College, St Aloysius College and Pulteney Grammar School for afternoon tea in the council chamber. The students asked us some very great, excellent questions about women in leadership and local government and we encouraged them to dream big. Actively supporting and mentoring young women planning for succession and always being open to new ideas and new ways of doing things is so important and I hope more women will consider using their voice and standing for local government to represent their community. I would ask that someone move that be accepted. Thank you Deputy Lord Mayor, Seconded Councillor Knoll, those in favour. Thank you members. That is carried. Uh, members, item 14 was uh, Reports from council members. Um, Councillor Cannot. Um, I just take leave. Uh, uh, we were given a plaque uh, from the results organisation, and this is a, uh, for our contribution towards Light Up Red for tuberculosis campaign um, for World Tuberculosis Day on the 24th. Uh, 
uh, members. Uh, I need someone to move the report be accepted. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Seconded, Councillor Martin. Members, any comments, changes, suggestions? Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, for the information of members, um, a uh, community group has this evening uh, completed a public protest meeting in uh, the city of Adelaide, um, arguing uh, that the city has betrayed um, them after such extensive community consultation on the guiding principles for 88 O'Connell, uh, many of which have been ignored. Um, they claim that novices and non-residents with no lived experience have no appreciation of the cultural and historical impacts on people's amenity and the suburb's historical uh, reputation. Um, and uh, they asked me to pass on uh, their continuing frustration with the council's approach to the development and that there will be further public meetings in the city of Adelaide. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, anything else to report? If not, I ask that uh, the report be passed. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, I have 11 questions on notice, which I will take as read with leave of the chamber. Members, by show of hands. Thank you. I will take those questions if it's read. Uh, members, the questions without notice. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, uh, Lord Mayor, I uh, thank the administration for their answers in uh, respect of uh, the questions that I posed. Uh, but I am puzzled by their response uh, to question 15.2.2 in which it is suggested that there would be a considerable loss to the city um, if hypothetically that proposal had been approved. Um, can the administration confirm uh, that it is referring to decisions that were taken after the 11th of August and not prior to the 11th of August? Acting CEO. Uh, thank you through the presiding member. Um, it's quite a detailed question on notice at 15.2. Each of the responses is stepped through. Um, so you're asking in specific well, I'm relation just wondering... to the 88 no, no, it's all right. that's carved up. Uh, uh, so which bit provide... was it you wanted to? May it's quest right. questions. Well, it's no, it's just questions. You ask a question. No, you I'm, ask I'm the clarity asking... on 15.2.2. Yes, I'm asking uh, if I can provide a question that is more detailed that will help the administration uh, because I don't understand why in asking, uh, as Councillor Hyde did, what would be the impact of selling smaller parcels of land as moved uh, on the council meeting of 14th of July 2020 uh, when the council administration applied a solution um, based on the outcome of a decision that was taken on the 12th of December. So. Is there a reason for that? I, it just seems like uh, either the administration has not understood the question or has um, given the wrong answer. No, no, you, you can't I, Sorry, ma members, act, the question is going to the acting CEO. Sure. And uh, thank you through, through the chair. Um, the question um, asked us to provide modelling of a single alternative long-term financial plan based on the following assumptions with everything else unaffected. That's what we've provided. Um, obviously, there are some assumptions within that um, in relation to specific elements, and we've tried to um, talk to in some detail what we have um, made our assumptions on. A supplementary question, Lord Mayor. Um, could the administration confirm that the heads of agreement which operated uh, b before the signing of the LFA with the developers of 88 O'Connell Street allowed the council to withdraw from the agreement uh, equally as it did allow the developer prior to the signing of a LFA? Through the presiding member, um, I don't have that answer, so I'm unable to answer that tonight. Apologies, Councillor Martin, if you'd um, like to put that on notice for the next meeting. No, that's fine. I, I just thought you would know that. That's okay. Thank you. Members, 
If not, uh, we will go to item 17. Now, as I uh, said before, um, what I'm going to do is pull forward any of the items uh, under motions on notice that um, uh, pertain to budget. Um, could I just check, could anybody advise whether Councillor Moran has actually left? Oh, look, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. Um, I was specifically asked uh, to explain to you that Councillor Moran is quite ill, actually, um, and uh, Councillor Mackey is ill as well. I, and I know Councillor Mackey has had an accident, was on painkillers. I, yes, I last saw uh, them getting into separate taxes. So with that, we withdraw 17.1, 7 17.1, and I will go to, now, if I could just, um, Acting CEO, can I just have clarity around which we did talk about there were six, I think, that pertain to the budget, and I'll just make sure that I grab the right ones. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Member Chair. Um, Justin, are you able to just please um, highlight which um, motions relate directly to the budget, please, yep. of the Chamber? So we've got 1713, 1714, 1716, 1718, and 1719. Thank you very much. Okay, so members, we're going to bring those uh, six motions forward. Uh, we'll start with uh, 1713, Councillor Hyde, uh, City Shaping Projects at the uh, Move and seek a second. I look for a second, members. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and I thank the administration uh, for providing a very detailed comment uh, on this item. Of course, this is about determining now as a council chamber what we wish to use the proceeds of our future fund for. Um, I note in the comment, and I was aware of this when I drafted it, that the future fund is not projected to have substantial enough holdings in it um, to fund the central market arcade as and when our financial commitments therefore due. Um, uh, but what this is about is, is laying it out very clearly now that we will seek to reduce and remove those borrowings as a result of the Central Market Arcade Redevelopment as quickly as possible um, because it is an excellent project. It is a project that will deliver millions and millions of dollars to us um, uh, in rates, in rent, um, it will revitalise a key part of the city, and that's exactly what the Future Fund is for. It's going to sh city shaping projects, but also those that generate revenue. And this is definitely a new revenue stream for us. It is a fantastic project, and it's a testament to all the staff and our development partners, um, all our development partners that are left involved um, uh, in this very, very exciting project. Every day I talk to uh, traders in the arcade who are a little bit concerned about what's going to happen during construction, but they are really, really buoyed um, uh, by the prospect of having such a magnificent, magnificent um, uh, built form next door that will cater to over a million more people per year. Um, that is the sort of project we should be funding uh, out of the Future Fund. It's absolutely what the Future Fund um, is intended for. And I note as well that while we're only spending um, 28 odd million dollars on it. And I know we've got contingency in our budget, and I'm sure um, we won't need to use that. But uh, while we're only spending 28 million dollars on, on it, we are having an asset in excess of 60 million dollars returned to our balance sheet. That is everyone I talk to in business and development, I, I give them those figures and I give ratepayers those figures. That is probably the best deal the city of Adelaide has ever signed. Um, uh, it is a fantastic project. Um, uh, it's a shame not all councillors were in the meeting when we voted for it, um, because I really would have wanted to have my name on such a project. And um, it's exactly the sort of thing that the Future Fund should fund, and that is precisely what this motion does, while also mitigating um, uh, the risks of increased borrowings over time. Um, it brings down our borrowings. Uh, it invests the Future Fund in a very lucrative project. Um, and of course, when it comes to borrowings, um, you know, we do have a motion on the agenda about modelling interest rates and what have you, and that's fine because we do want to limit our borrowings. 
Um, but of course, I am also concerned around the effects of um, uh, of quantitative easing leading to inflation and then leading to higher interest rates, which is the primary driver for me wanting to limit our borrowings. Not because it's uh, not just because it's about intergenerational equity, uh, but because I am concerned that the world is entering um, an uncertain environment, um, and that's why we, if we're responsible, we should be limiting those borrowings. That's what this is about. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Abraham today. Members. Yeah, look, I am surprised. Um, uh, Councillor Hyde usually demonstrates some financial dexterity. In this instance, um, he appears to have none. Um, he has lodged a motion uh, imploring the administration to fund the central market arcade redevelopment from the proceeds of the future fund, which has a balance of $70,000. $70,000. Um, it is a, an oversight on his part, I'm sure he didn't deliberately mean to mislead the Chamber in the motion, um, but the Future Fund will have no money in it until we begin to sell assets, and those assets uh, include, of course, uh, the volleyball courts, which have been discussed publicly, and uh, the Piri Weymouth car park, um, which is providing a return to ratepayers, and which, of course, in order to subsidise the central market purchase will mean that we'll lose substantial income, which I'm not allowed to disclose, and which the administration has so far declined to provide me a percentage on the return of the investment. I'm further surprised that the councillor uh, is asserting that this is going to deliver millions in rates. Um, I am surprised he's not read the Prudential Report. The Prudential Report makes it very clear that the costs of providing the services that are required for that structure will not uh, counter the rates. That is to say, they will cancel each other out. Yes, that is what the Prudential Report says, Lord Mayor. And I am happy, uh, I am happy, and I see the nodding from Tom McCready, I am happy to provide offline the precise paragraph in which Mark Booth says that within his credential report. But more particularly, I do urge, urge members to make uh, uh, statements about the value of this investment and uh, what it's replacing in terms of the value of the asset. Um, there is talk that this will be a $28 million cost. The cost is in, actu is in actual fact $54 million in construction costs. That is the contract. That's the contract we've signed. And Councillor Ho, I know, doesn't believe this. He still shakes his head and says, oh, it's only 27. It's not. It's $54 million. That's on the contract. In addition to that, um, there is $3 million of contingency. There's $10 million in lost revenue from... I haven't finished, uh, but I'm happy for the uh, acting CEO to tell me before I said it, seven million what? I heard the interjection, uh, you know, I, um, and I, I do uh, respect the CEO. And, um, Thank you, Councillor, your time, you've got 17 seconds left. Okay, well, look, I can do without the heckling from the CEO as well. I have it with the team. Having it from the administration as well is disconcerting. But look, uh, I know, Mayor, I know. I'm sorry, Councillor Martin. I'm going to ask you to sit down. I think that's actually really rude. Um, order, thank, you. Order, no, order, order, thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Um, order, I'm going to ask. There were a number of assertions in in that, and I will actually ask the acting CEO whether she'd like to respond to some of those assertions. Through the presiding member, it's late at night. There are a number of inaccuracies in. Uh, what Councillor Martin just shared. Um, we have repeatedly, on numerous occasions, corrected those inaccuracies on the public record. I'm not prepared to be um, doing that again tonight in the, um, you know, I'd like us to get through the agenda, please. Okay, members, we're going to move on. Would anybody else like to speak to the motion? A personal explanation, please. Uh, no, I, I haven't called a point of order, so therefore there's no personal explanation. And I've asked you to sit down. So, members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion before us? If not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Councillor Hyde? And of course, I'm aware of the status of the future fund. And in fact, Lord Mayor, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I moved the variation or the reform to the Treasury policy in order to establish the future fund, um, which I understand some councillors voted against. And of course, we'll see, as we see in the answer 
to the question on notice about asset sales, the city has over recent years sold over $100 million worth of assets. And where did that go, Lord Mayor? Who knows? Your question is, your, your, your guess is point, as point, good as point of order, order, Lord Mayor. So oh, what's was, the point of order, Councillor Martin? Uh, um, uh, the explanation has been provided by no, the what, Sorry, which, what are you referring to in the regulations? Uh, uh, the uh, the councillor just asserted that money that was produced by asset sales had gone who knows where. The administration provided that answer. So uh, you're objecting to... The accuracy of what has been okay, suggested. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, when it comes to financial uh, financial acumen, Lord Mayor, I'd, I'd just draw councillors' attention to what would happen if if the future fund, sorry, if the central market arcade redevelopment did not happen, um, as well as a number of other assumptions, and you're staring down the barrel of four hundred and seventy uh, million dollars in debt in year 10 of our long-term financial plan. That's the financial acumen of Councillor Martin and what he's trying to deliver onto the ratepayers in the City of Adelaide. This project is a good project. Um, it's a fantastic project where people are very, very excited about it. The naysayers and the NIMBYs um, will continue to try and drag it through the mud using all sorts of misinformation, all sorts of inaccuracies, um, uh, but Lord Mayor, we won't stand for it. The majority of the chamber won't stand for it, I don't think, because we yeah. have the interests. We have the interests yeah, of the ratepayer at heart. We have the interests of the greater population of the city of Adelaide at heart. That's why I'm suggesting that we fund this project um, out of the future fund, which within a couple of years, in fact, probably sooner, probably sooner, the proceeds of the future fund will be able to cover the central market arcade redevelopment with even more funding left over for us to invest in other income generating streams. I'm very pleased that we will soon be having a workshop about this as I requested. Um, uh, and I understand there'll be many learned and wise heads around that table um, advising us and listening to our feedback as a council. So um, not only am I excited to invest in this, I'm excited to invest in other such things. And I would encourage members who want to see the city progress, who want to see the city move forward, um, who are interested in lowering the rate burden and beefing up our um, income generation, I would encourage them to really have a good hard think before that workshop comes up and, and contribute to that as well. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Division. Council members, a division has been called to the motion. All those in favour, please stand, remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Carey, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abrahams. Uh, members, that takes us to 17.14. Councillor Hyde, Aquatic Centre Capital Works. Adelaide Aquatic Centre Capital Works. I look for a seconder, members. Thank you, Councillor Abrahams. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. This, this matter has come before us many, many times before, so I'm not going to overdo it, but um, we know by virtue of the questions that, that I put on notice at the last meeting um, precisely what the expected capital expenditure is on the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Um, we also know, honestly, in our hearts that that is throwing good money after bad. Um, we know that it is uh, an aged asset. It's not ageing, it's aged. It's proper aged. It's done. The Aquatic Centre is done, Lord Mayor. Um, what this motion does is it provides clarity, particularly to the other levels of government who we have funding requests in with, provides clarity to them and, and makes it clear that we as a city, we will be willing to keep the aquatic centre open uh, while a new aquatic centre is, is constructed as we've requested from you. And that's why the capital expenditure for the next three years, as highlighted by the administration, kindly provided in their detailed responses, um, uh, I've suggested it remain in there. Um, uh, the remaining years, uh, I don't think the ratepayers would really uh, expect us to be funding that. I think it's a very well aerated issue now. Of course, the Aquatic Centre is a commercial asset, so um, uh, a lot of the time the performance of the centre was kept in confidence. And I think if ratepayers had had clear um, clear lines of sight on exactly what the state of the centre was and the state of its finances were, um, I think there would have been clamouring uh, for us to act on it a lot sooner. Um, now, look, there's a long uh, series of events that led us to this current situation, but I'm asking the council chamber to act financially responsibly um, to remove the capital expenditure past 
the next three years on the Adelaide Aquatic Centre to make a, an unequivocally clear statement um, that we will not keep throwing good money after bad. Um, that is what our ratepayers are demanding we do. We're under uh, financial pressures as a result of COVID and, and other such things. Um, uh, we need to be really responsible and really frugal. We can't be, we can't be uh, spending more money on this asset um, in, in an environment like this, when businesses are closing, when ratepayers are doing it tough. We just can't be. To all to service, to service, to provide an important service and one that we want to see continue. But it's about the cost. It's about what are we not providing to our ratepayers within the city of Adelaide by continuing to prop up this aged former state aquatic centre, the former state aquatic centre. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Abrahamsley, did you wish to speak? Yeah, thanks, Lord Mayor. Just briefly, I think um, anything other than the replacement of the aquatic centre is purely a band-aid solution. So uh, what's being brought in before us uh, is sensible and uh, I commend it to the Chamber. Councillor Cannell. Um, I've uh, noted a, a slight variation to uh, the wording in uh, part three and uh, to, uh, to replace, receive funding to has a viable funding model. Um, and the reason, so if you are uh, happy to accept that. Yeah. Second, yep. thank you. So you may speak. Okay, no, it's just, uh, I mean, uh, we all know that we need to do something uh, and we need to make a decision on, on how, this, uh, the, how we're going to uh, work with the aquatic centre and what the future will be. I think, uh, so, and, and, and we need to draw lines at some time, but uh, we are, we are going to spend a lot of money to retain it as it is. So that's obviously not an acceptable thing because um, we are not enhancing the, the amenity, we're not enhancing the, the, the provision of the various services, the gyms and all the rest of it. Uh, therefore, no matter what we do, besides the fact that it's hugely inefficient as, as, a, you know, as it is now, um, it will continue to lose large sums of money. Uh, you know, the administration's efforts to increase uh, visitations, etc., is fabulous, and that should help inform us how we're going forward with what we, you know, with the aquatic centre. The reason why I put that uh, the change in, in the wording is because you do not want to close doors if you don't have to. And receive funds means that you're expecting to get some. I mean, uh, if we're able to create a, a business model that funds itself in part, uh, and we are saving uh, and it's paying for itself and, and with any luck if you're doing it there really well it has a, a, a surplus, a slight surplus to, uh, to bring whatever it costs down then we are providing a service um, uh, that is wanted uh, and that is sustainable and I think with a new, uh, a new pool <coughs> uh, <laughs> um, but that does mean that uh, we then can provide the latest uh, you know, in services and ladies and, and facilities, and I think that's a really important part. That means it becomes an attractor for the city. That slight, you know, it does get moved closer to the city, etc. That means it's linked more to the city. That means more of our residents and more of our uh, uh, workers here can use that and have better access on on, this, on a street where there's higher public transport. All those things are part should be part of the thought process, enabling people to go there. And if we and if we give ourselves enough breadth that we create the opportunity that uh, a model like what every business does that funds itself and is able to create this service uh, and, and create a business out of it, then I think uh, we all win. I think that's really the important part uh, and, and we do have to make a decision because we can't keep going on the way we are. Thank you, Councillor Members. Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, in, in reflecting on what's been said particularly, by Councillor Hyde, whose motion it is. Um, I remember his boast uh, at the time when uh, uh, he was proposing council consider giving the Aquatic Centre and most of Park 2 to the Adelaide Crows. We are, no, that was under consideration, Lord Mayor, and to object to that, to object to that, demonstrates well, an incident. Point, point of clarification, I never said we should give anything away to anyone. Uh, yes, you did. You agreed to explore with the Adelaide Crows the possibility of them taking over the Adelaide Crows. Lord Crocs Mayor, this is absolute misrepresentation. It's a, it's a lie. Let's That's just call it, it's a lie. 
of this is another lie from councillor martin you that, can sit, that, you've clarified that is a breach. you can sit down that is a breach to call a councillor a liar is a breach and if he does if he does not withdraw that if he does not withdraw it i'll take sorry. it further sorry what is the breach the the breach is he has called me on the floor of council a liar that is not appropriate. It is disrespectful, Lord Mayor, in breach of the code of conduct. He withdraws it or I take it further. It's your choice. Well, it's up to the councillor whether he wants to withdraw that. I politely decline to withdraw and I would welcome Councillor Martin pursuing it with me offline. Fine. Councillor Hyde proposed, along with Team Adelaide, that we entertain with the Adelaide Crows the possibility of giving them the Aquatic Centre and Park 2 in an arrangement. Lord Mayor, do not interrupt. It is absolutely correct. You will have a comment. Oh, Lord Mayor, look, interrupt, interrupt, please. I did not actually utter a sound. Well, you gave me the roll of the eyes and you opened your microphone. Now, what, what now my microphone has remained open through right. this and um, you're wasting All right, time, Lord Mayor, Councillor. I accept you intended to say nothing. And I understand that this process of interrupting me constantly, which has been identified by everyone, is designed to stop me talking. However, I will say to you that what is being proposed here is not what it seems. It is a proposal to make sure that there is no capital funding to address some of the serious issues of the Adelaide Aquatic Centre until 2023, uh, three years from now. And moreover, it contains an assurance that we will keep the Aquatic Centre open until June next year. Until June next year, um, that is on the condition that we have a viable funding model. Uh, and it's been asserted that ratepayers wouldn't expect us to fund anything at the Aquatic Centre. Now, this is this is the most appalling, appalling motion from a member who has no regard, apparently, for the three quarters of a million visits that occur there every year. I would like a minute more, Lord Mayor. Members. And, and that sums it up. That really sums up the nature of this Members, place. I'm sorry. That's up to the chamber. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Just a question to ask, though. Uh, can you tell me the diff I mean, like, from my understanding, from the origin of the motion, that receiving funding it means receiving funds from state government or federal government or other local governments, right? Correct. Right. But, like, has a viable funding model. Does it mean that it will also op open up the door for us to borrow money to build the new upper terminal? I will ask the mover the intent. Oh, come on. I, I, <laughs> no, I, well, I accepted it. I'm the mover. Um, and I spoke with Councillor Noel beforehand, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, it, it actually uh, liberates the motion and the administration so that they can bring a number of um, various options to us. Um, uh, my intent is that it would actually be the still a decision of council as to whether council thinks something is viable or not. Um, but as a statement of intent, it makes it clear. Thank you, Councillor. Right, How thanks. is that sufficient? Um, members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, there's a lot of emotion attached to the Adelaide Aquatic Centre and, um, and it's something that we do not want to see um, gone from, from Park 2. And, um, but, you know, it's very irresponsible for us to keep um, putting band-aid fixes or, or, or improvements on it that we and maybe, maybe looking at, uh, you know, removing or building. I want an insurance from the administration, though, that if it's a safety implication, it, it will be repaired. Is that correct? Acting CEO. Uh, thank you, uh, through the chair. Um, yes, absolutely. If there's a safety implication, um, then we will obviously um, renew that asset to make sure it's safe. Um, Clinton, did you want to add anything further to that? 
uh, through the chair, that's that's correct. Um, anything that would pose uh, any public safety risk would um, have to be repaired. Um, spot. Um, thank you. I just wanted that assurance because we are in um, a, a bit of a crisis here. We really need to look at our finances clearly, um, but at the same time, I don't want it to have an impact on safety. And um, so that, that's really important. I, I do hope that we find a long-term solution, solution for the Adelaide Aquatic Centre. Um, it was um, the first time that we were able to consult on the Adelaide Aquatic Centre when the um, football club put in their proposal. It opened up a very big uh, conversation piece for everybody and the one thing that did come out of it is that it's a very well loved um, centre and so um, you know there is really um, a, a need to keep that centre there or or should I say rebuild the centre so it can have um, a long term future at the park there. Members, if not I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Division. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand, remain standing to all names have been called. Councillor Carer, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canal, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Abraham today. Members 17.15, Councillor Hyde, strategic investment. This is Rundle U Park. Wonderful. I, I move and seek a second. Members, look for a second. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. And I, I want to thank the administration for uh, their ongoing efforts um, in tidying up our uh, finances and our financial planning. Um, obviously, it was a bit of a shock to a lot of us when we started having our budget meetings. Um, uh, our workshops for this current budget we're about to consider later today um, and we find that debt starts ballooning and it took a little bit of digging and a little bit of uh, questioning and probably a few council meetings and and we found that there was this um, rather peculiar assumption of a like-for-like -like replacement um, of a multi-story car park in the heart of the CBT lurking within our long-term financial plan um, and that that would, that would be funded through, of course, borrowing. So, um, uh, and it added substantially to the debt and what have you. Now, this motion uh, is, is part of decisive action to deal with, with what is a key asset, to deal with what is a key asset um, uh, and, and start making decisions about those assets now. And um, I want to commend uh, particularly uh, Acting Director of City Shaping, Mr Tom McCready, for the fantastic work on the strategic property review that's already been undertaken because I think a lot of that groundwork, um, uh, a lot of that groundwork has given councillors a renewed uh, perspective uh, on their assets and so, and so instead of, you know, doing things like selling $108,000,000, $590,000 um, uh, in assets just to go to, to this and that and a bit of this and a bit of what have you, um, uh, we're now thinking about our assets strategically. Now, $50 million uh, to replace a uh, car park when um, uh, it seems that car parks may not be in vogue probably by the time we go to replace it is a pretty silly assumption, um, Lord Mayor. What this motion does is make it clear to the administration um, uh, that uh, we're uh, changing our assumption now of a like for like replacement. Um, uh, we do not intend on, on undertaking that work as is. And in exchange for that, um, uh, or in lieu of that, we want to explore what else we can do with what is a magnificent site. Now, I just want to say, Lord Mayor, that um, uh, you know, had it been my decision, I would never have knocked down the beautiful heritage building that was on that site and put up a hideous concrete car park. And um, good on subsequent councils for um, then uh, putting up uh, some sort of light display on that a hideous concrete car park, even if it does sometimes not operate properly. Um, uh, but we're stuck with it now. Um, we're stuck with it reaching the end of its uh, useful life um, in just under 10 years' time. Um, and so we need to deal with it. This motion deals with it. Um, uh, I think by making a decision now, we can give administration the ability to go out uh, when the market is most opportune for us. Um, and of course, again, I've referred to uh, the recent air rights development that we've undertaken, that, that 
fantastic, lucrative project, which is delivering us um, over $60 million uh, on our balance sheet in an asset um, uh, for the very bargain basement price of $28 million. That's the spirit in which I brought this motion. I commend it to the Chamber. Thank you. Councillor Connell, did you wish to speak? Uh, members, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, um, th this is another one of these, and I will be interrupted, I expect that. This is another one of those actions which is not what it seems. This is about not responsible decision making to uh, ensure that uh, the administration has not miscalculated. This is about adjusting a budget embarrassment. It is about our long term financial plan, Lord Mayor which shows in 3031 that debt has blown up. It's gone up $20 million in the last few months. And currently at 31, we are expected to have debt of three quarters of a billion dollars. Three quarters of a billion dollars. Offset, offset Lord Mayor, only, only by selling assets, none of which are assured, none of those sales are assured, none of those income pluses are guaranteed. And to make it look even better, we're going to start slicing off what the administration has responsibly proposed as an asset that requires renewal. Moreover, the administration has provided uh, great reasons why we should not be doing this. We are committed, committed to a range of tenants until 2030. Now, that doesn't mean to say at some stage in the future we might not contemplate a redevelopment. But it is a severe distortion, and, and I will be pilloried by this, Lord Mayor. Uh, I am the only um, uh, bar one non-team Adelaide member here, so it will be ferocious. We are distorting the bottom line to suit a political purpose. This is really inappropriate. Um, I'm happy for the administration to come back to us and provide us with a report about all of the options, about how that capital cost might be reduced, or the way in which we might tackle it differently. But that hasn't been asked for. What's been asked for is that we go through the budget with a black line and take out $50 million in order to reduce the embarrassing bottom line. Um, it is uh, blatantly a political manoeuvre, not one that is concerned with the economic outcomes for the city, or indeed for future generations. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, this will get up. It will be approved. Uh, the budget will come back with a $15 million taken out of it. And no one will know, although, look, Lord Mayor, I will do my best to make sure the ratepayers are kept up to date about what's happening here in this chamber. But this is uh, about as insincere as it gets. Acting CEO, could I have some clarification as to where we've got three quarters of a billion dollars in debt in our forward budgets? Um, sorry, through the presiding member, I didn't quote that. Um, perhaps Councillor Martin can just um, Yes, I'm happy to provide the information. Uh, our debt forecast at 2031 is $193 million, which is actually $253 million if you don't factor in the asset sales. If the asset sales actually happen, that is to say, if the proposed developer of 88 O'Connell Street actually goes ahead with the development and completes it, if the council doesn't decide, for example, that the Piri Weymouth car park won't be sold, and I know Councillor Hyde has proposed that we look at a different way of doing that, the value of these things will be reduced and they may or may not be delivered. Um, it is an entirely appropriate accounting form to report the true position and to anticipate the possibility of sales. We're doing it in reverse. We're actually saying those sales are guaranteed. This is our debt. $750 million. Sorry, is that $750 million? Sorry, Grace, can you just confirm $750 million worth of debt, please, within um, at the end of 10 years? No, I didn't say that. I said a quarter of a billion. $250 oh, million? I heard, I'm sorry, I, I heard, heard three, three quarters. quarters. I heard three quarters. Oh, I heard so three quarters. I make an apology. Sorry, sorry. Oh, thank, yeah. thank you. Thanks, Martin. Thank That's why I queried it, because three quarters of a billion oh. dollars is $750 million. And I didn't even think in this chamber we could get to that level of debt. Within I, one I, night. I apologise. It's ten o'clock. Thank, thank you, Councillor Martin. That makes much more sense to me. Um, so, uh, members, would anybody else like to speak? Councillor Knoll. Um, 
just on, uh, I mean, uh, obviously we've given a lot of numbers uh, over this last year and so, and this is all, uh, uh, and we've given a like for like scenario, which is a perfectly uh, a sort of normal way of looking at things. But the difficulty here is that there's a lot of assets, commercial assets, that have that kind of other lives that at the end of their time that we can make it into something else. So it is it's not uh, in a, in a forward thinking sense uh, uh, the same by leaving it in there and, and assuming uh, you know that's uh, I consider that to be a less acceptable way than lifting out these commercial assets and looking at them separately because we haven't determined it's one thing to say this is what this is like and this is what's going to happen. And that, and you know, there are lots of assets that do that. But where they are commercial assets, and they become can become something else. This is all about getting commercial returns or finding ways to maximise our incomes and and altering um, our business models so that we are we are up to date. We are able to be uh, an effective council um, and have, use every uh, alternative means to have either income or uh, minimise our, our debts or you know run more efficiently. So it's just to uh, put those sorts of assets in a place where they are there and that, they can, that, that uh, continuing on model can, can be put in as part of that but we haven't determined that that's what's going to happen so uh, and, and by putting it separate for us identifying what options we can have for these assets and looking at exploring each of the uh, ways we can look at this once we've decided uh, that this is um, you know the way that we we need we see this asset uh, uh, going forward we can then slide that into the, the budget at the bottom so instead of working the opposite way which is what we are doing present and just putting it in here that as the as, as the do nothing way we're lifting them out making determinations that we can go forward and say yes we, we look at these assets yes we'll work with them yes here's the options uh, that we can uh, utilize this for we look at the the commercial outcomes because this is what this is all about it's about trying to make money in other forms Forms that you know the community uh, finds acceptable, and, and that we're able to do that, providing good services. And once we've decided that, and we say that's it. Now you can plug that into the bottom, and now that becomes part of what is, because that means we can we put that away, and that that, that, that operates, that allows us to continually look at uh, other models, so that we can look at other trajectories of what we're intending to do. And that's mainly what the way I see this. It's sort of we're lifting everything up we work with decide what's, what's good options and uh, at the appropriate time, then we put them on there and then work forward on other options. And it's more about then not ex not taking artificial future numbers, which, you know, there's still only, only uh, uh, speculation uh, where they have with using assumptions and rather already starting to put something more concrete in there and then talk to those real things rather than making a, a quarter billion or three quarter billion dollar, uh, um, you know, numbers. And that's just how this is to future who knows then i think that's the sort of thing that we need to do thank you members if not i'll go back to councillor hunt to sum up members to the vote those in favor those against division. is carried council members the division has been called the motion all those in favor please stand and remain standing to all names of court Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, we have 17.16. Councillor Hyde living within our needs. I move a second. I look for a seconder, members. Councillor Kerr. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, this is. Uh, this is about getting us back to black and getting us back to black for this coming budget. Um, I, I do appreciate the administration have been driving um, as much as they can. Um, uh, and I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to ask you to drive uh, your savings a little bit further. Um, but instead of just looking for savings, um, I'm imploring administration to also look at uh, budget repair measures that will bring us revenue um, uh, without putting up our existing charges that we've um, uh, in anticipation set on the 15th of December um, uh, because I do think I do think that uh, we are not far away we are not far away um, from getting back to an operating surplus or a minimum break even um, uh, position uh, and we just need to push that a little bit further and so I think um, particularly through the contestability work but I'd encourage I'd encourage uh, through you Lord Mayor our, our administration to uh, not just rely on that work, but to contest contest a lot of the things 
that they're doing, to think about it and to think, can we do this better? Can we do this more efficiently? Um, and in some instances, do we need to actually be doing this? Um, and that's why I've put in there D, looking at looking at programs, uh, historic programs, which may not be relevant in modern context. Now, I'm not, uh, I don't have anything in mind when I say that. Um, I know there's a lot of work that the administration does that I'm not aware of, that I haven't come across in my life as a resident. Um, uh, I know there's lots of work there. Do I know uh, whether it's valuable or not to members of the community? Well, that remains to be seen. But I would like to see the administration make judgment calls on that and then bring it into us. So um, uh, this is about getting us back to black. Um, it's not just um, slicing back fat. I think we've already done that largely. Um, uh, this is this is about pushing a little bit of push, a little bit of pull. Um, I think with our revenues uh, projected to be at 90% of pre-COVID levels, um, we may actually see some of those revenues recover. And this is the this is the carrot, if you will, um, uh, to try and push the administration a little bit more to encourage those revenues to recover, to encourage people to get back into our new parks. It may mean something like more promotions, like the immensely successful park and play. Um, that we ran here at the City of Adelaide, getting people into the city, getting people into car parks, getting them um, using our, our on-street car parking as well. So, uh, look, it's really over to them now, um, Lord Mayor. We're just setting the parameters. Look, we really appreciate the work of our new Associate Director in this area and and and, and the, the, the straightforwardness um, with which the 5.2 mil in savings, which apparently had not much science behind it, it came to being and then came not to being. Um, uh, we're all the wiser for it now, um, but we still want to push, I think. I think the Chamber still wants to push to be in surplus this coming budget. I think we have an obligation to our ratepayers and future generations to do so. Councillor Kerry. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I commend this um, motion to the Chamber. I do want to use the opportunity to thank our uh, administration for uh, doing a wonderful job that uh, they have been doing. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, the month of March here in Adelaide is usually known as Mad March for us here at the City Council. Uh, it's because everyone's rushing around trying to uh, uh, get the, uh, the business plan and the budget together. So uh, I do thank our staff uh, for uh, doing all, they, all they're doing and uh, continue to do for, uh, for us, for our ratepayers, uh, especially for this motion here. Councillor Knoll. Um, I do uh, submitted a couple of variations. Microphone, uh, thank you. Do that. Uh, I've submitted a couple of variations uh, to the actual wording, and it is uh, rather than as you would say, without increasing while maintaining highly competitive. And the other is in, in D, obviously, and it is uh, delivering services to a standard that reflects community needs and expectations. Uh, is that something that would be accepted? Um, I'm happy with the second, but not the first, perhaps. Oh, actually, no, I'm happy with both. I think that's because any, any great charge is such a good So, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kerr, are you happy with that? Yes. Thank you, Councillor Knapp. It's quite simple. Um, I mean, again, uh, by saying no, no increasing, uh, that hobbles our uh, administration. And it isn't just about not increasing, it's about it needs to reflect uh, the services, etc., that we are competitive, that we need the flexibility for them to be able to use uh, their, 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 you know, their various businesses uh, to better the city. Now, that, that means that they may be able to shuffle and do things um, that uh, are still a, a, very, a positive influence on the city while not restricting their ability to still uh, maintain the best outcome they can. And you want the flexibility for the administration to come up with ideas, the same thing with, with AIDA, et cetera, that these ideas are about enabling people to come to the city, using the various assets as drivers uh, you know, for people to come to, the, uh, to Adelaide and enabling us to uh, at least work with our budgets. And the second one is that, and it's a little bit the other uh, uh, side, is that Adelaide needs to be excellent. Now, to do that, then that excellence is in the eyes of, our, of the various visitors and, and residents, etc. The point of that is, is that there will be times that we, we, there is expectations for us to do things to a particular standard. And if we don't deliver that, then we actually uh, decrease within the city, you know, our, our you know, the, the, the 
uh, it is for the desire for people to visit us. And you want to make sure that whatever we're doing, we're reflecting the needs and, and wishes of our customers and our, our residents so that uh, we are that amazing place to visit and we're not just a suburb. And so uh, that's why I looked at those, uh, those two uh, as just uh, enabling one, uh, the administration to uh, act more freely and seeing what they can what they can do and enabling them to use it as a lever to uh, you know improve our, our business position and also uh, the desire for people to come to the city and the other is making sure that whatever we're doing uh, that it is as to a spec that brings people into the city and separates us from the ordinary that is outside because otherwise if we don't have the access and we don't use this properly then we uh, we won't have that amazing place for people to visit and so it just needs a little bit of our uh, ability to do that thank you councillor members councillor martin yeah. lord mayor um there's no point in speaking because i know the vote will be overwhelmingly in favour of this motion, but I will speak because I think it does need to be said that this is part of the suite of measures that are being proposed to tidy up the budget embarrassment. To be able to go out to voters and say, look at this, we delivered a balanced budget and the debt has been reduced significantly. Um, it is, as I said previously, a distortion. And there will be those, and I'm not one of them, Lord Mayor, who will know that, uh, who will say at least, that you anticipated this by deferring the budget item until after all of these matters have been considered. There will be those who say Actually, a uh, point, sorry, I'm sorry, Councillor Martin, that was a, a, I did this in consultation with the acting CEO and her team to make sure that we had the implications of the budgets before us before we passed the budget. Well, I, I'm saying to you, I wouldn't say that, but others might. I do just sorry for the do just want to be okay. yeah, and I just want to be absolutely clear that um, the intent was to make sure that council had all the decisions relating to the budget brought together in a way that made for a um, fully cognizant decision. It did not make sense to present a budget and then have a discussion on a whole range of uh, different motions. This was at the suggestion of our Chief Operating Officer earlier this afternoon. It certainly wasn't to enable um, suggestions that, as you indicated. Councillor. I understand and look I thank you for taking 45 seconds of my speaking time. Um, I do not have any expectation of having any more time from the Team Adelaide majority. Lord Mayor, this is actually about putting the administration in a position where it cannot, cannot play with charges. And all that is left, and the administration makes it very clear in seven, is that there are now further cuts to services. And those cuts will have to be made to deliver what is, after weeks and months of sweat and tears, the absolute bottom line in their judgment. So the decision is now, which services are we going to cut? What about planning? Well, as every conveyancer in town will tell you that the cuts now have been so radical that the time to get projects through council uh, is almost double what it used to be. There will be traders who will tell you that the streets are filthy, that you can actually see the decline in the public realm. Um, whatever those cuts are that this council is going to make, it is for political purposes, not for the well-being of ratepayers. It is not a managed response to a disastrous budgeting uh, fiasco that has gone on since 2018. Not, not entirely related to COVID. In fact, the majority of it is just, we haven't managed our budgets. And here in this lead up to what is the third and final full year budget for Team Adelaide, the third and final full year budget, here is the most desperate action uh, to make it look better than it actually is at the expense of ratepayers. Deputy Lord Mayor. Lord well, Mayor, I actually take complete offence to what Councillor Martin says and uh, um, it, it just astounds me that he makes up this, uh, well, I'm going to be very careful to what I say, but I think I will step back from that, what I was about to say, and um, I would like to uh, say that um, I commend Councillor Hyde actually 
for bringing forward some suggestions or some initiatives to be able to help with the budget. And that's what's important here. We are doing it all tough. All businesses are doing it tough. We're doing it tough. It is sad. It is hard. It's hard to talk about money cuts, etc. It's terrible, but it's the reality. It's just reality. He's not sitting here blaming administration. He's not putting, telling them that they should be, they are responsible for the demise of the city of Adelaide, as he pointed out last a committee meeting. He's not blaming people. He's not dragging anyone through mud. What he's doing is being proactive to coming up with ways in which we can uh, support our city. And it might not be to the to the liking of everybody. It's hard to talk about cuts and and things like that. It's terrible. Yes, but it has to be done during these times. It is what it is, and we just have to accept it. And that's that's the reality of it. So I understand, Councillor Martin, this is hard for 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 you to to um to take on. I understand. It's, uh, you know, you want to uh, condemn Councillor Hyde because you have a distaste for him, you don't like him. And oh, Councillor no, Coros, Councillor Coros, sorry, sorry, I'm chairing. Councillor Coros, withdraw the remarks. Oh, we withdraw that, but it just always constantly feels that way, constantly feels like... No, you can't Councillor, Councillor Martin, Councillor Coros, can like you talk to the motion, please? That we are always Councillor. trying to... Battle this budget, it's very difficult, Lord Mayor, and it, and it's it just takes guts to come forward with some way out of it. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lord Mayor. And I just wanna I just wanna highlight that um, a lot of this has come from my time oral committee, which I found very uh, fulfilling and rewarding and insightful. Um, uh, uh, consequently, I've had feedback from uh, elected members and members of the community that the advice coming out of the audit committee now is a lot better. And of course, you will recall, Lord Mayor, that when I was there, when I was, mayor, I when I was so, so what, I'm sorry, Councillor, what are you what are you objecting the, to? The advice coming out of the audit committee is better since he's been there. That is an affront to the members of the audit committee. Thank well, you. I think Thank you, Councillor Martin. You've good. actually you're, you've objected, so Councillor. Well, I'm merely, Hyde. I'm merely conveying, I'm merely conveying, Lord That's Mayor, the views of people that have communicated with me. Just you know, some might, you know, some might say, but I certainly wouldn't, um, as Councillor Martin just said. But um, look, I would draw members to to the advice to the advice of the audit committee, which. Um, which actually suggested uh, it suggested that we should continue to review services and identify opportunities for further operating budget expenditure reduction through contestability, which is right here uh, in front of us. Opportunities to grow revenue streams, including through new commercial operations delivered by the Future Fund and through incentivising rates uplift through development. These are some of the things that the audit committee, Lord Mayor, as you would know, because we were both there, uh, but it was actually not us that suggested putting them on there. It was the independent members of the audit committee. The independent members of the audit committee, and, and I think we've had some excellent discussions. I think the committee meeting that I chaired at the suggestion of the deputy uh, CEO at the time, um, which included the independent members of the audit committee, where, where Councillor Martin pulls his quotes from talking about unsustainability and what have you um, financially, was only because I, as committee chair, was able to facilitate that and pierce the veil Pierce the veil of, this, of our finances along with the administration. Right. So, Lord Mayor, Lord Time Mayor, is up. Is was that the whole three minutes? I believe so. Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't. Definitely wasn't. Get used to it. Can I just have 30 seconds more, please? Just 30 seconds more. Um, and, and of course, and of course, the, the period of time that Councillor Martin likes to talk about going back to 2017. Um, uh, of course, it was Councillor Martin who was on the audit committee no, no. for all of those big budget deficits. No, no. All of those big budget deficits. The only reason you didn't have debt is because you squandered all twenty eight six Hyde million dollars. To Lord Mayor, that is factually incorrect. There was no debt at the 30th of June 2017. No debt. But of course, the budget for that year predicted $40 million 
um, uh, in deficit. It just so happened that there was a legal settlement. It actually did. If you go back, don't worry, I've been fact checking. Anyway, Lord Mayor, I'll leave it there. Um, I think Councillor Martin knows what's going on here. He's very upset. His newsletter um, is not going to be as doom and gloom. Well, his next one isn't going to be as doom Klein and gloom as his last one. To this one. He can see the political ammunition frittering away. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. All those members in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing until all names have been called. Thanks. Councillor Kerry, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Adler today. And we have got. Um, 17.18, I believe, which is revenue generation. Councillor uh, I move and seek a second. Members looking for a seconder. Councillor Ho. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Just, just finally, this is, um, uh, I've engaged with the administration quite heavily um, on this and I thank them for their thoughtful uh, feedback on the idea. It is essentially the idea that we should be looking to maintain Perhaps this is something that Council might not agree on. We should be looking to maintain revenue generation and assets that generate revenue for us, um, particularly at this time. We know that um, Pure Street is a profitable asset uh, for us, um, uh, and we should be considering any and all opportunities. Um, uh, look, certainly uh, for my part, Lord Mayor, um, I certainly will be looking upon any uh, proposal to remove. Um, that asset that, and that revenue generation um, uh, from the city and its finances, I would be looking upon that quite disfavourably. So this is about um, uh, realigning the expression of interest process so that the administration uh, can have clearer guidance from us around what we expect. Um, uh, certainly, um, when it comes to the uh, volleyball courts, we know that there is a CLFP revocation process uh, underway there. Um, uh, and by virtue of motion that I've brought to this chamber, we are busily looking for a new home um, for the beach volleyball community um, within the city of Adelaide. So, um, uh, but we also do know by virtue of the previous question on notice that the rate of return on that property, I think, is in the region of 0.5% per year um, that was released from confidence, uh, Lord Mayor. It is a woeful uh, return on investment. Um, uh, and, and as such, we should be looking to remedy that. And also, uh, we should be thinking about um, the plan for the City of Adelaide as outlined by Colonel William Lyon. And the plan for the City of Adelaide had that as a block, uh, as a block that would have a building on it, a building that would have people in it, um, uh, whether living in there or working in there or both. That is, that is how that land was intended to be used. Um, the sorts of recreational activities we're seeing there would better be served um, in the parkland. So, uh, but again, this is about keeping our revenue at a critical time. Um, uh, I, I hope uh, the chamber will vote in support of it. It will have a, a positive impact on our long-term financial planning. Um, and through my discussions with the administration, uh, with the administration, I understand it will not really negatively impact the EOI, um, which will be imminent once the CLMP is revoked. Councillor Hogg, did you wish to speak? Uh, members. Lord Mayor, could the administration advise how it will cover all of the contingencies that it canvasses in five in a long-term financial plan in, in respect of this problem? Um, yes, actually, uh, Ms McCready, are you happy to answer that? Thank you, Lord Mayor, through you, presiding member. So, in, in regards to the question, the question that you're posing is request the administration amend the long term financial plan to reflect option 3B, thus including new parks projected generated revenue. In the long term financial plan, uh, uh, Councillor, is we have projected revenue sources from the sell down of assets, but we've also took into account uh, any expenditure reduction and any revenue reduction, should there be any. But I think it's important to note, and uh, it, it probably will talk to this motion and the further motion, is there's never been the intent for us to uh, not come back to Council in regards to, first of all, a return on investment and also looking to recover any foregone revenue or even to protect that foregone revenue. 
any expression of interest that would be going out will actually talk to how we maintain or grow revenue. Um, and that is the intent, and that, should, that would be covered off through a prudential report, which would be presented uh, with any recommendation for council consideration. So in regards to the item five, effectively what it would be saying is, how do we protect the revenue source uh, if if council decided to sell the property, uh, the car park and the revenues were foregone, but we're actually saying that we wish to maintain that and we're looking at ways to be able to do that and council will decide that. Uh, Lord Mayor, I know it's uh, 25 past 10 and we've been sitting on our bum since half past five, but that wasn't the question I asked. I asked, how is the long-term financial plan going to take into consideration all of the options the administration canvasses at five in the range of proposals that are possible for the period Weymouth car park. And those options include sale and redevelopment, sale and leaseback, deferred settlement arrangements, um, uh, air rights. How are those multiple options, as the motion proposes, to amend the long-term financial plan, how will all of those options be covered in the, long, the single long-term financial plan? So through the CEO to Tom McCready, uh, it was five in your response as opposed to five in the motion. Uh, through you, uh, Lord Mayor, just a response. Effectively, the revenue, as I see the motion, would actually be uh, brought back into account in regards to the long-term financial plan. So effectively, that would achieve the outcome, and then we have to look at the return on investment of whatever model we come back to council for consideration so the dollars would stay in. Um, yeah, no, I, he I hear, I'm sure my question's not being understood. If you're proposing multiple scenarios, which the administration canvasses at five, which they're invited to by the motion, which also requires the long-term financial plan to be adjusted, how do you accommodate all of those scenarios in the long-term financial plan? For example, if you sell the site for redevelopment, while preserving your air rights? How do you accommodate the loss of revenue during the reconstruction? How do you accommodate the lower value for the land in the process? How do you accommodate deferred settlement? And how does that work? Yeah, I, think, the I think we've got that. Sorry. Uh, there are about See five that. options. Through you, uh, Lord Mayor. Uh, in response to the question again, and I'll say it very slowly, um, so hopefully it's, it's understood. The options as presented in regards to the response are options that would be considered by council. What is factored into the long-term financial plan at present is potentially the revenues that would be derived if council was to decide to sell that asset and potentially the foregone revenue. To balance it out quite simply, and as I see the motion before us, the revenues from the car park would go back in. We would then be coming back to council to give them a series of recommendations in regards to what is the options you want to look at, and that would then be modelled within the long-term financial plan for your consideration. Look, I, I thank you for that. I now understand. So, as a consequence of, of this motion, though nothing has changed, the administration will put back in the revenue from the Piri Weymouth car park in continuing years in the long-term financial plan, uh, but it will remove or adjust the capital uh, value of the sale of the property, or it will leave it in there as it is. Uh, through the presiding member, I didn't um, hear Tom say that. So, Tom, could you please um, answer to the question Thank again? You, Thank you, CEO. Through the presiding member, effectively, I've got a council decision to to work on this property to look at the options. It is recognised within the long-term financial plan in regards to the value of that asset as a saleable asset. So that would remain until such times as council actually decides that value may go up or go down. We get valuations undertaken on a regular basis, but as such what we would be looking at in regards to this amendment or this motion is to put the revenues back in but to keep the council decision which is the asset and the value of that asset in the long-term financial plan. Yeah well thank you uh, uh, I appreciate that we now actually have the answer I want um, uh, that is the understanding I want not the answer I want yes. Yes. Um, and I'm able to comment Lord Mayor if I may. Thank you. Um, look uh, I, I don't disagree with this broader thinking in terms of considering other options 
options other than the straight out sale. It makes enormous sense if the air rights can be sold uh, to garner that value and maybe even a reduced value for the site in the interests of generating continuing revenue. But of course, what is plain now is that this is measure number four in the suite of budget repair measures. That is to say, by just telling the administration to consider other options, we have now factored into the long-term financial plan the revenue, and I know what the revenue is for this place, but we're not allowed to say what it is publicly, to the budget bottom line. So what happens is that you increase the revenue coming to council in the years in which we thought the car park would not be there, but you have not disturbed its value as part of the $60 million offset of debt. It is a clever dick sort of measure, uh, again, designed to manipulate the bottom line of the budget. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We are sitting through Team Adelaide saying, my God, it's a... Yes, Lord Mayor. I'm sorry, I, what's the interruption for? Well, the interruption is because I've spoken to you several times about the referral of naming people within the chamber, which is in breach of the meeting regulations, and I would ask you not to do that. What do you mean, mentioning Team Adelaide? Yes, thank you. And again, but Lord Mayor, thank it's you, mentioned, thank you, it's Councillor. It's mentioned in the media. I know, exactly. we've already, you brought it through on a question on notice, I answered it. Um, I've asked you not to. So we, I'm you can not talk to, to the mover of the motion. I'm not allowed to mention Team Adelaide. Councillor Martin, thank you. That's three times in a row. I, I understand frequency. Please refrain. If you are would you, like to speak to a member of the council, are you please asking do. me not to? Use I am those asking words. you not to. Well, Lord Mayor, this is just appalling now. I mean, this is actually a curbing of people's right to refer to things which are understood in the community and known and which are read by everybody. This is just Thank you, Councillor. Oh, can we please speak to the motion before you? Yeah, yeah, and then, I'm um, happy to and, do it. Yeah. This is your faction. Councillor Martin, could you please stop and talk to the motion before you? Okay, this is your group of councillors, Lord Mayor, who are meddling with the budget with the aim of presenting a better outcome than might otherwise be expected. Not because they perform some miracle in terms of the economic management of the place, but because they are fiddling with the numbers. It is the worst form of politics, and it happens regularly in federal and state politics. The bottom line is manipulated to show something that is not there. And that is what is happening here. Two, sorry. Thank you. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Um, I appreciate uh, our Councillor Hyde is doing every effort to find ways that we can uh, alter our, our trajectory uh, into the 10-year into the plan and also uh, bring us back to surpluses and come out with the best financial uh, position we can. That is our role. They've been waiting for us, the administration, I'd like to think, are waiting for us to come up with ideas, with theirs, so that we have find ways to uh, improve our position. So, and the, uh, That's, exactly That's what I'm saying. Yes, to improve it, to change it. We yeah. are here to develop ideas that will make a difference and enable us to uh, move forward and re bring our council back into a better financial position. I've never met anybody so so desperate to keep everything the same. No, 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 no. Just so that you get the maximum worst outcome. Because... Members. Now, what, are you, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? I'm actually asking the members to be quiet. Please sit down. Councillor Knoll, please finish speaking. So, and I, over and over again, the administrators have been coming to us asking for us, you know, for our ideas and, and what we are wanting to do, because we are the decision-making body. They, will, no matter how bad or how good, they are going to have to uh, deliver on what we're what we're trying to uh, you know, put out. So. Uh, this is part of our way of coming back. Now, number one, if we can find a way to retain the U Park income, it stays in. And then we find other ways to, uh, to, uh, to increase value and sell things or whatever we're going to do, then isn't it fantastic? So 
that's one of those other ones where here we have a car park that we say, we, what else are we going to do with it? We don't have a definite outcome. We need to look at this separately before we start saying this is what this will be until we've decided. We're deciding here now that let's look at the car park, uh, car park remaining in this, in this case. We retain that income. We're now looking at other ways to achieve our, our improve our financial position. And by doing that, then we will come, it comes back to us, that'll work. So we're making the proposition that the car park remains and the income remains, and then it will come back and then we can decide on that. The other, other uh, motion was around, we don't necessarily want this car park to be a car park. What can it be? Put this over here, let's look at it. Let's look at our options. Let's look at our best business case that we get out of all these things. Then when we've decided, then we put it back in. And then it becomes part of, this is what we're going to do. That gives them certainty. But all the time we're talking, and it's a conversation about changing nothing, changing nothing. That's, that's not a business solution. I never worried about my problem, I worry about my solutions. And that's what we do it. I find it amazing. It's a blank. Members? <laughs> if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Yeah, just to correct some of these, um, some of these mistruths. Um, Lord Mayor, this is not diddling the books, as Councillor Barton would have us believe. Lord this Mayor, is, as so Councillor so Knoll said, this so is so making so a well. decision about the future of an asset. Or moreover, adjusting the decision about a future of an asset. Um, because as Councillor Martin exposed through his questions on notice, um, uh, in 23-24, where as before this motion uh, hopefully passes, we're predicting to have no future revenue from that new part, despite the fact it is a profitable new part. Um, now, actually, at the time, before we, uh, before we went to uh, begin the process of the EOI and noting the strategic property review and what have you, um, uh, the administration will remember that that was my leading concern with that project. Um, and now that I can see a fuller picture, and this was also before the new budget parameters and you know, spending more on infrastructure, replacing bridges and weirs and other U parts and all that sort of stuff happened, right? Um, uh, now I've come to the view that we should be narrowing the EOI so that, as we see in A, um, uh, we're either, we're either, well, B rather, we're either not selling the car park and thereby retaining the revenue, or if you jump back up to A, uh, if we do sell the car park, we are getting the revenue as part of a transaction. It's as simple as that. It is as simple as that. That that is saying that is saying that this council is narrowing the EOI, um, and that we do not want this transaction to negatively impact the revenue that that site would otherwise generate. Now, I think it would have to be a pretty bold person um, uh, uh, to want to want to pay out our revenue. They must really want the site. It is a fantastic site. The fact that the property is bundled um, is excellent. You will uh, now find a, a site like that that close um, uh, to North Terrace and within the Adelaide CBD, which is the key site. Um, uh, and, and, you know, that may be acceptable to us as a council, but, but what we're saying is narrow your parameters. We're not keen on losing an income generating asset, all things considered. We're talking about income generation all the time in this place now. We're not keen on losing an income generating asset. We may lose it under these circumstances, but the income needs to be made up. That's all we're saying. If anything, if anything, this motion is going to ensure that we're actually uh, selling less or devolving ourselves of less assets, or where we are devolving ourselves of those assets, we're getting something in return. It's not diddling the books, it books, it's actually making a decision about assets worth millions of dollars that the ratepayers rely on. They rely on they rely on the revenue generated by those assets. We use that revenue, as we know, only 50% of our revenue comes from rates. The rest of it comes from commercial operations. That's the spirit in which I brought this motion. Um, uh, I think that's the spirit in which Councillor Martin has a, another motion um, on notice, looking at the exact same issue in a more roundabout way, in a less direct way. This is being direct. This is us making a decision, being decisive and leading as we should. Members, to the vote. Those in favour, those against. Division. Council members, the division has been called to the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing until names are called. Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abraham today. 
Uh, we have one left before we go to the budget, that's 17.19, Councillor Martin, Adelaide Aquatic Centre, or just Aquatic Centre. I uh, thought there were two more, wasn't it? Financial advice and administrative don't, rate, don't interest rate they... sensitivities. Um, okay, thank you. No, the advice is no, we're just doing these ones and then we're going to budget and then we'll go back to the motions. Okay, all right, thank you. I appreciate the clarification. Um, I move the motion as printed and I ask uh, uh, someone from this group of people to second it. Members, look for a seconder. Well, that's very generous. Councillor Hyde. That is generous. I, uh, I am surprised at the generosity of uh, the, uh, the leader. I didn't say the words. I am surprised and grateful. Um, now, now uh, Lord Mayor, uh, this in uh, the context of a, a night of uh, accounting changes to the budget, um, and, and no substantial change, just accounting changes, um, is actually about spending money. Um, it is brought about uh, by what I and my community regard as the neglect of the Aquatic Centre and the failure of the City of Adelaide to spend money uh, on ensuring that its doors open um, each and every day. And it does follow only months after it was proposed by uh, the majority here at council, the people sitting here in this room, that um, it should be closed. That was the motion, close the aquatic centre. Um, and instead of closing it, the motion was narrowly defeated and I'm grateful. Point of clarification, this group of people, sorry, you're incorrect, I didn't vote for it. I was just about to say, it's, it's psychic. Um, I am grateful to Councillor Canole for initially arguing for it to close and then changing his mind and voting against the closure, which he did. He did. Uh, look, he has a very selective memory, but anyway, that's okay. So, um, okay, members, uh, can Councillor Mark continue, please? Thank you. Um, and um, I uh, would ask the, uh, the elected body to consider whether, in fact, the proposal that was put forward earlier, which is that there be no capital works on that uh, uh, aquatic centre for three years, whether that will actually achieve the outcome that was proposed and narrowly defeated in January. That is uh, to lead to the closure of the aquatic centre. Now, I note the administration's assurances that no safety issue will be left unaddressed, and I'm grateful to hear that. But the simple fact is that by not spending money, uh, it is likely that aspects of the operation will close. And the administration has already made reference to that in previous meetings. And so it's possible that the gym might close. Uh, it's possible a pool may close. It's possible some other aspect of the operations of the aquatic centre will close. And of course, what's happening is that that process by its nature is nobbling the future of the aquatic centre. People can actually see it declining because the council is spending no money other than when something breaks down. And, and even then, uh, I suspect some of my colleagues would say, spend it reluctantly. But uh, it also has an additional impact, and that is that the revenue declines. Every time there's one of these motions to defer spending, um, God, those three minutes go, and look, Lord Mayor, I know there's no point in even asking. I'll sit down. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to him? I will, I will, Lord Mayor. I will, Lord Mayor, because um, unsurprisingly, I don't agree with this motion. And in fact, it's the, almost the exact opposite um, uh, of the previous motion. What, what, what essentially it's, um, it's looking to do is is bring forward monies that otherwise do not need to be spent in the aquatic centre right now. If there's something we know at the City of Adelaide, it's that our asset management plans um, have absolutely all the funding needed to manage those assets in there. 
Um, and the asset management plan for this building, when translated into the long-term financial plan, had a, you know a, 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 an expenditure item for each year, and that was what it's projected the asset needs. Now, now sometimes things will chop and change, but generally um, that is what all the engineering, and condition audits, and what have you have told us about this asset. Attempts to bring forward expenditure on that asset, just putting aside the decision we just made. Um, attempts to bring forward expenditure on this asset um, are, I think, entirely irresponsible, particularly when we have staff redesigning an aquatic centre right now and then proposing that, as we've done many times in the past, uh, and taking that to state and federal governments to say, hey, do you want to build us a new aquatic centre? Do you want to partner with us? You know, this is what this is the groundwork we've done. What do you think? To, to, to let's say let's say for example let's say for example one of those governments came back to us uh, in 12 months time in 12 months time and in 12 months time at nine months into this 21 22 uh, financial year you probably would have spent no, let's let's assume we don't have any carry falls or anything like that you would have spent millions and millions of dollars more than you need to it's irresponsible. And then this other government comes along and says, oh, we're actually gonna give you money for your aquatic center, but it's no good, uh, you don't need it now. You're flush with cash. Your aquatic centers, you know, will maintain it. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but it's all functioning. This, I think, Lord Mayor, is, 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 is a really, really silly proposal. And the only lens that it makes any sense to me uh, looking at it through whatsoever is uh, the lens of someone who wants to see us in a worse financial position unnecessarily. Because this is not necessary expenditure. You don't need to bring forward this program. Not at all. So that's the lens that I'm treating this with. I, I, I do think, uh, I am disappointed that it's come to us. There is no need to spend this money ahead of when we're currently scheduled to spend it. Um, and so I hope members vote this down. Um, could I ask a question of administration? Um, would I be right in suggesting that the impact of bringing forward 15 million would uh, be in order of 200 million to the long-term financial plan, like in, year, in 10 years' time? It is already in the uh, financial uh, accounts and it's just bringing it forward. So it's it's in the long-term financial plan and we're bringing it forward. But if so you're bringing it forward it. and you're expending it in this first year, doesn't it have an impact in terms of how the borrowings and our expenditure in the following years? Yeah, it will have, will have some in terms of uh, doing that earlier. Okay, we're coming quite far, okay, thanks. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Um, look, Lord Mayor, you're absolutely right. This is in the long-term financial plan and it was deferred until 22-23, but it's now been deferred further uh, tonight by uh, Councillor Hyde. Um, and uh, the cost of proceeding with this is minimal to the long-term financial plan. Uh, it's certainly not $200 million. Uh, it may be a little, but $200 million is nowhere near the ballpark. Um, it is quite incorrect to say that our asset management plans, as was suggested, um, have uh, uh, all of the, uh, uh, the money they need in them. Uh, that's not correct at all. I mean, our asset management is such that we are maintaining our assets uh, well below the expected standard, but 65%, uh, two thirds of what is required by local government standards. So it, it is uh, misleading. But nevertheless, um, uh, in the context of this being an operating centre, which people can see declining because work that is getting relatively urgent is being postponed, means that people will go there less often. And indeed, every time uh, we have a debate about this, and it's proposed, for example, as it was tonight, that we have to have a viable funding proposal by June next year for the aquatic centre, what actually happens is, and the administration will tell you, is that uh, our memberships decline. They just keep falling and falling because no one is prepared to take out a membership of a place which is doomed. And that's the talk. The talk of doom destroys the future of the asset. And it enables the argument that this is not a service that we need to provide. It is a vital service. It's valued by three quarters of a million people. My ratepayers in North Adelaide understand fully 
what an important part of the community it is. But they understand all in, also, and particularly businesses, that those three quarters of a million visits actually result in money spent on the street. And particularly when there are swimming carnivals. When schools come along, parents come along. Parents don't necessarily stay there, they go to O'Connell Street. They spend money on refreshments, they spend money on retail. And the more that you drive that number down, the more you drive patronage of businesses down as well. This is really short-sighted thinking. Um, it is, of course, part of the suite of measures um, uh, to make accounting corrections to the budget uh, bottom line that we're not going to spend anything till 23, 24. Um, I have no expectation this uh, will be approved, um, but let me just say uh, I am very grateful to Councillor Hyde for giving me the opportunity to at least argue. Members to the vote. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is lost. Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour, please stand. Remain standing until names are called. Councillor Martin. Um, members, we are going to go back to item 10.11, which is the budget. Um, uh, which is the approval for the budget to go out to community consultation. Um, so, Lord Mayor, I have circulated an alternate motion, which I sent after the break, so it's probably lurking in the council business team email somewhere. Oh, there it is. I've got it. Sorry, I did have a typo in there, leftover uh, form. It should read from. Um, and so, Lord Mayor, I have, I have um, structured this to be taken in parts. Um, uh, if members are happy to do so, noting that um, those bits and pieces they may want to pick and choose from. Okay. Members, I'm looking for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Uh, thank Councilor you, Hyde. Lord Mayor. Um, look, this uh, fairly straightforward. Um, when we're looking at the city bikeways uh, funding, I think it's it's pretty clear the lack of interest from the uh, state government around this project. We should just be removing that um, uh, from our budget uh, entirely um, uh, and tracking those changes throughout the budget accordingly. Um, we haven't been able to deliver it for. A number of years we're not going to be able to deliver it now we're already in breach of um, what was put to us by i think the chief executive of the department of infrastructure and transport so i don't see that going anywhere it's just time to rip that band -aid. well i already thought we ripped the band-aid off um, but let's rip it off again um, uh, adelaide town hall that renewal uh, project um, uh, noting that this this building is uh, uh, structurally at least a condition two um, I think we can afford to push that back um, to begin the next financial year. It is obviously a $4.5 million project in totality, 2 million of which we were proposing uh, to spend in this uh, upcoming financial year. I think at a time when we do have an operating deficit, at a time when we are borrowing to fund major projects, at least for the moment, um, not with, notwithstanding we've made some decisions to improve our long-term financial position tonight, um, uh, I do think it looks a bit off and it doesn't really pass the pub test to be spending on our own building and making our workplace nice and, uh, and lovely um, uh, when others are doing it tough out there in the community, Lord Mayor. So um, uh, look, we shouldn't be spending that money this financial year, noting that they are conservation works. Um, we should be doing them soon, but I think we can push that back. 
Uh, now, as well, I have uh, put in there a hobby project of mine, and it's the primary reason why I'm asking for this to be taken parts, because I understand some members may not want to fund a feasibility study into what is, um, uh, to my mind, a very brilliant idea, which is the idea of a continuous parklands uh, trail, which is more than just a riding, walking, cycling trail, but it is a, a cultural experience. Um, uh, and an artistic experience as well, and, and one that also highlights our incredibly rich Ghana and also colonial heritage um, as the project would. And I know the project has the endorsement of um, many, many groups from Business SA to APA to the Property Council. Um, and you know, when is the last time you saw the Parklands Preservation Association and the Property Council um, on the same endorsement? So I think that shows to us that this could very well be a winner and something that's worth investigation. Now, of course, um, I thank the administration for their time earlier today in clarifying some points with me. Um, points A and B uh, will obviously uh, have a positive impact on our borrowings, meaning that we've borrowed just under $5 million um, uh, less, um, which I think is, is excellent, especially in the context of what we've just endorsed, which is a break-even budget. There. So again, I ask that this be taken apart. So members, just a few things. Um, not part three says notes uh, the, could you just scroll down, thank you. Part three, given you've got two, uh, is no longer relevant. Um, so I would uh, suggest we delete that or adjust it accordingly. So, uh, one moment, members, we're just going to confer. Um, I will go to the chamber and then I'll make some comments on the on this before Councillor Hyde sums up. Councillor Abraham today, did you want to speak to it? Deputy Lord Mayor. Question, uh, Lord Mayor, that do not need to wait for administration. Uh, yeah, we're just getting clarity around what well, needs maybe, to stay. Maybe you could actually help me with this one. Um, has the state government expressed any desire to uh, fund or the surfer, Ray Bain surfer? Um, my understanding is that there's been no commitment by the state government and that um, there would need to be a commitment from at least one minister. And there hasn't been any commitment? Whatsoever. Not to my knowledge. The question from the Deputy Lord Mayor was whether there had been any commitment from the State Government around the Rainbow Circuit, funding of the Rainbow Circuit. So we, we've been advised that at three we go did incorporate. So just make it past ten so that the, the is, yeah, did incorporate and the same with point, point four. Okay, thank you. Um, so Deputy sorry, I Deputy you, you didn't want to speak to it, you just wanted to ask the question. Okay. Councillor Abraham Zay, you're reserving your right. Uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, a couple of questions, Lord Mayor. It's proposed here that the $3 million set aside for the bikeway, um, which Council uh, decided not um, to pursue, or at least elements of Council did, um, that um, the administration advised that that money should be uh, held within the budget pending a response from the State Government to an invitation to allow the city to redirect, redirect that funding to other initiatives. What is the response of the state government to that letter? Um, acting CEO. 
thank you through the presiding member. Um, I haven't received a response yet. Um, I haven't seen a response. You haven't received or you haven't seen? I, I both. I haven't received one, I haven't seen one. Okay. Clinton, can you just confirm if something has gone direct to you, please? Uh, through the chair, no, I've not received anything either. And, and can I have from the administration an understanding of if the uh, state government responds and said, yes, we're amenable to redirecting part of all, part or all of that money uh, to another project, does the administration now regard that as not possible because of what's proposed here? It would bring it back. Acting CA. Uh, thank you to the presiding member. Uh, no, I would be bringing that back into the chamber. And forgive my ignorance, at C, there is reference to EY Australia, is that? Anston Young. Uh, why are elected members nominating consultants from the floor of the chamber? I would imagine that that is the consultant that is working with the Adelaide Rainbow Circuit. That has been put forward by Jason Redman, as far as I know. Uh, and could I ask, uh, would the administration have consultants it could engage uh, to undertake the same work? Acting CEO. Uh, through the presiding member, um, to, uh, I'm not sure whether the proponent has already engaged um, Ernst & Young with a range of other stakeholders, so there could be other funding contributors and to do the business case and the feasibility associated with that rainbow circuit. Um, if that is the case, then obviously, um, we, you know, we wouldn't be um, propo proposing a different uh, supplier of that service. Um, so I'd need to follow up and understand uh, that uh, relationship. Okay. Thank you. May I speak, Lord Mayor? You may. Look, um, we have witnessed tonight uh, a series of motions uh, from uh, Councillor Hyde, um, whose intent, shut up Siri, sorry, whose intent uh, is to uh, manipulate uh, the budget. That is uh, a creative accounting exercise, which by my reckoning, uh, we have done nothing tonight. There, there is no changed cause. There is no measure to address anything but what the, the motions have done by introducing creative counting is to reduce borrowings, in my view, to around $65 million and uh, to immediately erase uh, the, uh, um, the deficit that we were anticipating in our operating budget of $5 million uh, to be offset by cuts to services or uh, increases in fees and charges uh, which have not ever uh, even been presented to this chamber. Um, this is a massive exercise in what I regard as um, dodgy, dodgy accounting. Um, but look, uh, it, it is... So, sorry, sorry, Lord Mayor, I just ask that that statement is withdrawn. I, I, I would assume that had there been anything untoward, the administration would have highlighted as much in their comments. Look, Lord Mayor, I'm happy to withdraw Dodgy if he withdraws calling me a liar. It's a pretty yeah, fair deal. I, I think we've passed that moment, so... Okay, all right, then let me continue. Um, look, I, I will not agree to this budget going to public consultation. It, it is, in my view, misleading. Um, it seeks to claim that the cause of the city's financial problems is COVID-19. It makes no mention of successive operating deficits. Um, it says COVID-19 is responsible. At best, the administration can summon $28 million, but we have operating deficits that have accrued amounting to almost $100 million. Um, but there's no mention of that here. Um, there is no reasonable discussion of budget measures which have been uh, previously agreed before the budget uh, consultation. For example, there's nothing in here about the, uh, the grants process that determines if we give money to places like the Adelaide Men's Day Care Centre. Uh, all we've done tonight is discuss the policy, which is basically we're out of homelessness. That's up for review and it's not disclosed in this. I don't think that's fair. I don't think it, it uh, serves our community well. We haven't shared information about um, <coughs> major spending openly. It's not disclosed uh, 
that we will spend less on services in the public realm. Uh, I haven't seen that information, but my ratepayers keep saying, just have a look at, at the public realm. Have a look at King William and tell me you think we're spending money on it because most people think it's filthy. Uh, and um, we, say, we say we won't be cutting services and yet uh, that seems to have been what's occurred. Um, Lord Mayor, um, let me ask uh, elected members if I may have 30 seconds more. Members, oh, look at that. You may. I may, well, that's very gracious of you all, thank you. Um, I, um, I say um, also that um, we are not maintaining our assets to the standard required. The budget, uh, draft budget discloses that about two thirds of the um, expected standard is being met. But look, I, th I think um, the bit that lacks the most open approach is our debt. It has grown by $20 million um, uh, up to 2031, since the last time we looked at it seriously. And in 2031, unless we can sell our assets, our borrowings were going to look like three quarters of a billion. Now that's come back. I concede that tonight. Sorry. Can we just not say three quarters of a billion? Oh, because I'm sorry. I meant, we, yes, I we, meant quarters that's of a billion. about right. five times you've actually said that. And if yeah, I see that quoted tomorrow, no, no, um, we'll, uh, we'll have nobody to. Nobody, please report that. Code of, three we'll quarters. have to code of conduct the media a, if that's It is a quarter of a million. Right? I'm sorry. A quarter of a million. Correct. Quarter of a billion. Um, and Lord Mayor, I, I, I concede that um, we are um, proposing uh, that. Uh, we will reduce that further by these creative accounting measures. But it is still not an open budget, not an honest budget, not an honest consultation, um, and, and I regret that, and therefore I won't be able to vote for it. Thank you. If I could correct just a few small things that were in that statement. Um, things like the funding to the Men's Daycare Centre are through our community grants program and won't be affected by the policy on homelessness and social housing. No, I understand that, Lord Mayor, but for every budget that I have been a member of this council, part of the process is that the allocation for such organisations are determined by this time. No, um, no that's yes. not. Sorry, I'm sorry, Acting Lord Mayor. Uh, no, <laughs> I'm tired. Acting CEO. All right, it's fine. Acting CEO. <laughs> Thank you. I think, like you, I'm struggling to string a sentence together that's coherent. Thank you, presiding member. Just to be absolutely clear, the funding allocations for community grants is always given in June. In June. Yeah. That is uh, not my recollection, but I thank the uh, the acting CEO for the clarification. And, and you wish to correct me again, Lord? Yeah. No, that's fine. I just really that the the bow between uh, the community grants and the thank housing you. policy was just um, wanted to correct that. Members, do we have any other comments? Are you taking this in parts? Did you say that you're taking this in parts? Uh, the movers have taken in parts. Um, uh, there's a few comments. Um, I do want to, uh, uh, I'm not quite sure where the condition rating two came from, but I am concerned about uh, the delay of all of the work on the town hall. I'm not sure how that breaks down in terms of the renewal project. Uh, but um, I would need some advice on that. So you can give me any advice, Acting CEO, Clinton? Uh, through you, Presiding Member, uh, condition rating two that's referred to um, is the condition rating that's applied to the whole Town Hall building. So there are parts of the building that are a condition rating one, in other terms, um, very good. Um, there are aspects of the building, such as the facade, that are a condition rating four or five. So the condition rating two referred to um, on the screen is in relation to the entire um, Adelaide Town Hall building. Um, have we got any detail in terms of how the budget figure splits into what needs to be done where? Because I know it covered off on several aspects. Acting CEO, are you happy for me to direct back to Director Dimish? Uh, through you, presiding member, yes, we do have that detail. Um, further detail was provided to elected members um, uh, today and yesterday uh, in regards to that. Um, I've also provided elected members with the um, detailed condition reports um, on that. Um, I will say that there is work to be done on, on the facades. There is also work to be done on the bell tower, bell tower. as well. Yeah. Um, 
I think that's it. We made those corrections. Good. All right. Members, if there's no further, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, of course, it is overall a, a, a two, and that's that's the basis upon which I brought that forward. That, and I just don't think it's appropriate that we spend uh, millions and millions of dollars in our own glory when um, there's probably better things that we could be doing with that money. Noting that we are, you know, we are we are borrowing a lot as well. But um, but Lord Mayor, what, how about this? Why don't we why don't we do the bells and have the bells chiming again when we're back to surplus? well and truly, and when we've got our debt down um, uh, well and truly as well. That's what I would like to do. I think that's the sort of project um, that's a great feel-good project for the community, and to do it then would be would be really appropriate. I'd love to see you bringing those Albert Taylor bells uh, down there. Talk about the facade, Councillor. And hold on, but this is, of course, the project was presented to us unbeknownst originally, but upon further interrogation, we found out that there was another two and a half million dollars to that project for the next financial year, um, uh, which is what I'm talking about. But I just, I just want to touch again. I just want to touch again on on, on Councillor Martin's um, reference to creative accounting, um, uh, and of course, I expected uh, these arguments as such to emanate from that um, area of the chamber, Lord Mayor. Of course, they're not creative accounting. What it is is us making decisions now about assets in the future. It's not creative accounting at all. It's bricks and mortar. It's bricks and steel. It's 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 cement and steel. It's car parks. It's assets. It's dirt. It's dirt that is worth a lot of money. That we're either saying we're selling less of, or we're going to do something a little bit different with. We're either selling less of it, or we're doing something a little bit different, as in a, a joint venture. Or sorry, uh, we don't think it makes sense to to just build a fifty million rebuild a fifty million dollar car park in ten years time. That's not dodgy at all. And, and I take umbrage with the use of that word um, twice now by Councillor Martin. What it, is, what it is, is good foresight and good, uh, good decision making. Um, um. <laughs> what, it is, Lord Mayor, what it is, Lord Mayor, is good decision making and it's the sort of decision making this council chamber should have been doing for a long time. It's the sort of decisions that this council should be making for a long time, and had they made those decisions, of course we know that we know that finance, the government. I like to compare it to a freight train. Uh, it, there's momentum there, Lord Mayor, and if you want to shift it, well, that inertia takes a lot of energy to shift, uh, and that is effectively what we've been doing. Those those operational deficits that we're talking about here, uh, they were the wheels were in motion for that years before I even contemplated coming to the council. Years before, in those years that Councillor Martin was on the audit committee, perhaps. Well, that's that's when the wheels were in motion, Lord, Lord Mayor. Lord that's Mayor, when the infrastructure progress was being rolled out. I, I have, have provided him with an explanation of our debt-free status in 2017, and he keeps telling me that I'm somehow responsible for Team Adelaide's debt. I, I, just, said, I just said you were on the audit committee that we go flagged again. these issues to the Thank previous council. Thank you. Council. Time has um, finished, Councillor. Oh, I'm happy, to, I'm happy to leave it there. Um, I commend all of it, um, but I do understand if members don't want to back the very good project. That's members, we're going to take it in parts, which uh, we will go uh, part 1A, Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Part 1B, Division. those in favour. Division. Council members, a division has been called on part 1A of the motion. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing. All names have been called. Councillor Carrow, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Ibrahim today. Part 1B, members, those in favour, those against. Vision. Those in favour, please stand. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Carey, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, and Councillor Abraham today. Councillors, uh, Part One C. Those in favour. Those against. Division. That is lost. Council Members, a division has been called on that part of the motion as well. All those in favour, please stand. Remain standing. All names have been called. 
Councillors, Councillor Hyde, one, Councillor Abraham today. Part 1D, those in favour, those against. That's carried. Please stand if you're in favour of that part of the motion. Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canal, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members, do we require the rest of the motion? If you could scroll up, that would be great. If you, do we require the rest of the motion to be in parts? No. Right, so we're going to now vote on part two, three, four, five, and there is a six, which we can't see. Thank you. Uh, members, for parts two, three, four, five, and six, those in favour? Those against? Division. That is carried. Council members, the division has been called. All those in favour, please stand and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Kerr, Councillor Ho, Councillor Canole, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde and Councillor Abraham today. Members, that takes us back to motions on notice and we will go to 17.2, uh, which is Deputy Lord Mayor, uh, motion on notice, expanding events. Deputy Lord Mayor. That's the one. It's a long night, um, so I will be uh, brief, but... Uh, I need I'm, a seconder. I'm seeking a seconder. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what I'm uh, basically asking is for uh, administration to commence discussions with um, the South Australian Tourism Commission uh, regarding the 2022 Taste in Australia and investigate an opportunity to take a more of a citywide approach with the event and, and include Food Street and O'Connor Street as uh, key components in the program. So I'm just instigating that for next year, bearing in mind the Tasting Australia is just around the corner, so obviously not for 2021, but hopefully we can have these discussions and widen the event throughout the city. Thank you. Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak? There is a Members? Councillor Martin? Yeah, look, Lord Mayor. I, uh... I actually agree with uh, Councillor Kouros on this. Um, I think Tasting Australia ought to be expanded um, uh, to uh, Gujar and O'Connell Street. Uh, O'Connell Street and even Melbourne Street, if the administration would take that on board. Uh, as we know, North Adelaide has some of the best eateries in the city and they too should be celebrated. If so, I, If I may, Melbourne Street and O'Connell Street are already part of the winter weekends program. Okay, um, I was just referring to Tasting Australia. Um, and I endorse also um, the 2020 week, Winter Weekend Program being expanded uh, to Guja Street. But anything uh, that celebrates um, food and uh, gatherings in North Adelaide is, I know, a welcome boost uh, for hospitality in our area. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Um, Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, Do I have that recorded as unanimous, thank you. Um, that takes us to 17.3, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, I seek a seconder regarding... Okay, I have a seconder in Council High, thank you. Thank you. Um, basically, uh, Christmas is... Uh, something that really needs to be celebrated and as a capital city we need to take it up a notch um, but in doing so um, I'm asking um, that we request uh, a, the Lord Mayor to write to the Premier to support activations to, to create greater opportunities for Christmas in the city and that I mean by um, infrastructure like lighting, lighting up our city um, uh, down all our main streets, O'Connell Street, Melbourne Street, Hutt Street, Guja Street. And in order to do so, we should make our um, city uh, a really big attraction for Christmas. Um, we've lost the, 
the brewery. We don't have that attraction there anymore, um, for which gathered families and uh, to come together to look at the lights. And so it'd be great if we can take an opportunity to speak to the Premier in regards to um, increasing the uh, attraction of having Christmas in our city. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak? No, thank you. Members? Councillor Knoll? I just have a lot of Christmas. <laughs> Not actually. Uh, no, no, I do commend the, this this motion as well. The simple fact is, is that for the city and that to find its way out of the COVID uh, and you know, to uh, make our efforts in this coming year uh, to attract people back into the city, uh, the city needs to own these special times of the year, whether it be Christmas, whether it be Easter. Um, and because we have the ability to do really amazing things, and if we are able to get support from the from the uh, state government, uh, that enables us to do even more. I mean, it's in everybody's interest to uh, encourage people back into the city for all the all the things that we have, and really make it that centerpiece and that really that magic that that uh, uh, has been missing in this last year. That we can re regain that, and we can do that as part of our uh, you know econ economic recovery. Councillor yeah. members, if not to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Just that um, you know, we are a capital city and uh, we, all the other um, in Melbourne, Sydney, I know, get a really extra funding from their state government in regards to putting on Christmas. It would be great if we could collaborate with the state government and uh, really uh, bring the magic, as uh, Councillor Connell said, to our city. Um, and uh, I hope that uh, he will listen and, uh, and we could have a really magical Christmas. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, can that be recorded also as unanimous? Um, we go to 17.7, uh, no, yes we do, 17.7, uh, which is Councillor Abraham today, Toy Library. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed as second seconder. Yes, I have Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, Lord Mayor, this was no child's play. Uh, we actually toyed around with the idea a bit. They're all the jokes I want to make. They're all the jokes okay, I, 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 I promise. Um, uh, I, I will, I will uh, um, take the opportunity to thank our staff for uh, discussing the idea with me at, uh, at length, uh, exploring some uh, uh, different options and opportunities. And obviously what we have before us here uh, about the UNESCO uh, themed city, well, sorry, the UNESCO City of Music themed uh, toy library. I'm actually very excited to uh, see what, um, uh, what comes back to council and uh, what this potential toy library could look like. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Did you wish to speak to one? Members? Quick, uh, Councillor Martin. Yeah, quick question, and uh, I have no objections to this. Um, the uh, $20,000 uh, cost attached to it, would that come back as a QF amendment or is it going to be factored into the uh, and uh, amended within the uh, draft budget and business plan? I can see you. Uh, thank you, through the Chair. Um, if the motion's carried, we'll present a report back for consideration in June 2021. Then the indicative budget um, uh, capital investment is just there as an indicative amount. Obviously, by then we'll have um, the final budget as well, so we'll try and integrate that into a consolidated view for members. Okay, but you will have a report in yep, June. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, just before we sum up, I think it's a great idea. I had several um, people come up to me and, and talk to me that have children in the city and they thought it would be a, a lovely addition to our library service here. Um, Councillor Abrams, would you like to sum up? Uh, Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Can I also have that recorded as unanimous? 17.8, um, Councillor Abrams, today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. I have Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, I'll, I'll be brief. There's three points in this motion and uh, I'll briefly address uh, each of those points. So point number one, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, we'll look at our current initiatives. We've got a female Lord Mayor, we have a female Deputy Lord Mayor, and I know that our, uh, our staff do a lot of work um, internally around International Women's Day, White Ribbon Day, uh, or, uh, or, or any other uh, sort of day where we um, 
to celebrate uh, gender equity and, and diversity. Um, point number two, Lord Mayor, um, that's something that I guess is uh, is up to uh, our CEO and the administration to to go and investigate. But it might be anything and everything from. Um, uh, looking at the elected member uh, inductions, looking at uh, some training material, looking at uh, any other ways where we can make uh, the, the, the the chamber and um, and I guess uh, us as a, as, as a council more inclusive, uh, where we can um, celebrate diversity and gender equity. And of course, uh, Lord Mayor, point number three is uh, uh, essentially um, uh, allowing administration to consult with the agencies that are required in order to make this happen. And I do want to stress that this motion is not necessarily about uh, this council. It is about the current council, but it's also about the future councils as well. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak? I'd like to say that I commend uh, Councillor Abraham for bringing this through. Um, it's a, a, a very great initiative. Um, I'm hoping that um, we will encourage more people um, to put their hand up of different cultures, um, different genders, um, and uh, we have a great mix of people in local government. Thank you. Members? Councillor Martin. Um, yes, look, I, I thank uh, Councillor Abraham today for this motion. And I'm wondering if you might consider a, uh, a variation to two, um, uh, where he suggests we further promote diversity to add the words with emphasis on First Nations people, comma, and then where he refers to gender equity, um, including uh, members of the LGBTIQ plus community. I just, I just think it's important, and if gender equity, including members of the LGBTIQ yeah. community. Yeah. And, and um, sorry, I didn't actually see whether the mover and the seconder were happy to accept that. And the seconder. And the seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, yes. I'm Sorry. looking to you to see whether you are happy to accept that variation. Oh, I just thought that that's what the whole motion was about, but if it makes for uh, Councillor Martin to have that included, and, um, well, thank you. Thank you, and I, I do thank the, uh, the mover and the seconder for that, and I, I have to say that I think it's important to include those groups. Uh, and I'm particularly keen to see that we mention First Nations people. Um, I do understand we have a reconciliation committee. I do understand that we're trying to meet targets which have not been attained in many circumstances. But uh, this uh, elected body has, to my knowledge, never had a First Nations uh, representative. And how wonderful it would be if there was on this council someone who represented that community. That would really distinguish this council among uh, councils across the nation. And I do think that um, if we do include uh, the, the reference to um, uh, LGBTIQ plus uh, groups, uh, we make it clear that we are interested in gender uh, in a much more sophisticated way than just that binary choice. Um, and I, I do uh, thank the mover for that. I think it's a, a, an outstanding uh, initiative uh, and uh, let's hope we can achieve that. Members? Councillor Hart? Mm -hmm. I want to thank Councillor Abraham today and Deputy Lord Mayor as well. Um, I am concerned about singling out groups um, in this. I, I, I'm concerned about it um, because we're, we're trying to talk about promoting diversity amongst all groups of people and then we're actually just naming a couple as well in there. I, I'm, I'm also um, uh, concerned and I'm going to indulge in a wokeism here, but the confusion between gender and sexual orientation as well, they are distinct concepts. Um, and you've got your LGBTIQ P plus, um, which may well be your sexual orientation. That is distinct from your gender identity. Mm -hmm. 
It is. It is. It is. They are considered separate concepts. Now, they're very interwoven and linked throughout it, but they're different concepts. But honestly, I mean, honestly, if I was going to suggest a variation, I'd say get rid of gender and just say diversity and equity. You know, diversity. It's a catch-all. It's a catch-all. Anyway, look, I'm very happy to support this. Um, I do somewhat disagree with calling out specific groups because if you start getting into that sort of territory, you're inevitably going to, to miss someone. I know that a large part of earlier tonight, we were talking about differently abled people. Um, and that is missing from here now as well. Um, but look, very happy to support this. I, I do think differently abled people would be promoted, would be, would be captured by the diversity, the use of that term. Um, so I'm satisfied with that. Um, but I just, I just wanted to flag that if, if I was someone who isn't a minority and isn't one of those particular groups that are listed, I would feel a little bit left out. That's all. Members, would anybody else like to speak to the motion for them? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And summing up, I uh, um, I note what Councillor Hyde is, uh, is is saying, and and I guess uh, uh, you know there's an old saying where where uh, they say you can't be what you can't see. So really, for us to look at look at ourselves here in this chamber, uh, and, and especially for me personally, Lord Mayor, uh, uh, when I saw the uh, former Councillor Osama Aviad here in the chamber, I thought, oh gee, a Muslim guy can be a councillor. Um, it, and, and I think what, what Councillor Martin said about First Nations people, we haven't, I mean, we haven't uh, had a uh, uh, Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander councillor here that, that, I, that I know of. So it'd be great to, to, to uh, encourage um, uh, you know, diverse people from all, all walks of life, different backgrounds, to put up their hand, uh, be engaged uh, in, in council and actually um, have a crack, because it'd be great to, uh, you know, to, to have more Muslims, to have more um, uh, people from, from all continents, all walks of life, um, all um, different abilities uh, to, to be part of this council. So uh, um, hopefully part three allows uh, that to happen when you engage with any other agencies that uh, uh, the administration needs to. So uh, I'm yeah, happy to leave it to them and their subject matter experts. Members to the vote, those in favour? <laughs> Just checking. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Can that be recorded as unanimous? I think we should always do our meeting as we go later into the evening. I think we've done five unanimous in a row. Um, we are going to Councillor Ho, Moonter Street. Councillor Ho. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I would like to move the motion as printed and I seek a second. I have Councillor Knoll. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. Firstly, I stand the council for supporting this project and fund together with the state government. And I also like to thank our, our administration for setting up a project management team and update our stakeholders and traders in the area about the, about the progress of the project on a regular basis. The traders especially thank our administration for providing those updates in both English and Chinese. Well, a few weeks ago, I mean, right, very much like since the project started, uh, I mean, because you know, I'm in the area of almost on a daily basis. And sometimes when I'm walking on Winter Street, I feel quite disappointed about the project. On one hand, it, it has been delayed. On the other hand, sometimes when you're walking on the street, yeah, you just have to cover up your mouth when you walk on the street because there was rubbish bins being left over. And, uh, and the space on, on the other side of the pavement are really dirty. However, after reading the administration's comment, I am appreciate the actions our admin have taken, and I'm not going to criticize them any further. I look forward to see positive outcomes from all those actions. Thank you. Councillor Knoll. That's me. Yeah, yeah okay. Then. Um, uh, uh, thank you very much uh, to, to Councillor Ho for his motion, and, and uh, I also obviously support it. I mean, uh, I see the effort we went to uh, at Gawler Place, and you know how we you know, tried to ensure that the businesses were able to function. I mean, it, I do feel a little bit that we've let them down in the first breath with the with the scale that we were working on, where I thought it would be a little bit more modest and enabling more businesses to function longer. 
but you know, when, uh, when, once it's all been ripped up, you, you can't go back. So, um, you know, I do appreciate that. And I know the administration is doing an amazing job uh, as much as they can to support our businesses through all these sort of times where we do need to upgrade, we do need to make things better. And I, I do appreciate it. It's a complicated uh, thing and you don't always know in the beginning what uh, you know as you uncover, you know, some of the magical things underneath the pavement. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, there's a bit of pain for a bit of for you know we, we get through this um, the works there and uh, worked. Uh, I've been speaking to the community there on Community Street, and yeah, we did start off on a little bit of rocky start, but uh, I think we're um, we're working towards something a better communication within the with the Asian community, um, and so I appreciate all the efforts that administration have gone through to ensure they support the businesses on the street. And um, I look forward to um, the, uh, the project complete. And this, Councillor Just a, a question, Lord Mayor. I mean, what is the policy in circumstances, and I'm assuming there's a policy, and this is seeking a variation to it, what is the policy when there is construction activity and cleanliness and uh, accessibility become an issue? Thanks, Sia. Well, thank you to the presiding member. Do you, do you mean in relation to upgrades um, and renewal works that yes, impact yes. businesses? Do, do we it's provide a, extra cleaning? It's a case by case basis. Um, so normally what we do is uh, where we know we're uh, doing an upgrade or a renewal um, project and it's impacting businesses, we usually work closely with the businesses through that area. Um, we like to make sure there's good signage, we like to make sure that dust is minimised. Um, so it's case by case rather than a specific policy I think that you're referring to. Um, Clinton wants to also add a comment. Uh, through the presiding member, thanks, um, Acting CEO. Just to add to um, what the Acting CEO said, things like uh, minimum 1.5 metre wide um, access paths, um, site cleanliness are also items that we add into our contracts so that there's an obligation on the contractor performing the works to actually keep those things in place during the performance of the works. And just one final question. Um, I, I know the administration comments that once a week the site was cleaned. Um, I'm surprised that that is, you know, what it is one, once a week. Um, uh, to what number will that be increased? It just simply says it will be increased. I can see. Oh, thank you to the presiding member. Um, I don't know. So, Clinton, do you know, please? Through the presiding member, um, monitor daily is the response to that. Um, scheduled cleaning once a week, but if we need to uh, up that for any particular reason because of different work stages, then we'll undertake that. Thank you. Members, Councillor Hyde. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. I would just once again draw members' attention to uh, the reports on particularly Gawler Place that were commissioned by uh, Director Devonish um, uh, and highlight that one of the recommendations was that if we want to avoid things like that in the future, we need to be better in the planning stage. Um, that means uh, more thorough or just even some reference designs at all would be nice. And I think had we done that, look, I understand that they um, uh, took, a, took a, a sample from, from one end of Moonta Street uh, but it would obviously have paid to take a sample from the other end of Moonton Street as well to understand the concrete that was underneath that. Um, I know hindsight's 2020. Um, seems like something we would expect our engineers to do. I just want to draw members' attention to that. Otherwise, fantastic project. And thank you to Councillor Ho for advocating for his community. Members, if not, back to Councillor Ho to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Could I have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. Uh, that takes us to uh, 17.11, Councillor Ho, Night Markets. Right, thank you, Lord Mayor. I would like to move the motion as print and I see a seconder. Okay, have Councillor Hyde seconded. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Councillor Hyde. Members, 
The idea of this nine market is actually raised from our previous Gujarat Chief Fist event. In the past few months, we have had held two Fist events on Gujarat Street. These events have, have, have not only been welcomed by our own repairs, but also attract many people to the CBD. However, these two events also expose many shortcomings. First of all, some event, such events are not regular. In this case, it is difficult for us to do effective marketing. Moreover, the cost of each event is relatively high. As we, if we are able to turn such a popular event into regular, we can not only greatly reduce the cost of each event, but also make it easier for our administration or aider to promote our events. Therefore, achieve better results. For me, this night market needs to include the following three elements. First, road closures. Turn and turn Guja Street, part of Guja Street from the Central Market car park entrance to the corner of Morphic Street and Guja Street into a pedestrian street after 6 p.m. on Thursday. Rem second, remove all of strip car parks after 6 o'clock and give up the position to put our stores. It should be noted that the things shown in this temporary boost should not be in direct competition with our traders in the area. After 6 p.m., third, after 6 p.m., encourage more baskets to perform in the area so to attract more people to the city. Of course, these are just some of my own ideas and suggestions. I hope our administration and ADA can have a better and more complete plan for this night market. In other places in Adelaide and in other capital cities, we have already had many successful examples that we can learn from. My purpose is actually quite simple and quite clear. It is to find a way to attract more people back to the city. Hence, we can give our ratepayers more support and help to recover from the COVID. Thank you. And oh, by the way, encourage the members to support. Thank you. Councillor Hart, did you wish to speak? Um, only to thank Councillor Ho for bringing this. I think the um, uh, when we went down there uh, with him and, and looked at what he was proposing, to me, it, it seems like an excellent idea to trial pedestrianisation um, of a little bit of the street on, in, an, in, an easy, in an easy manner. Um, and, and we do know that uh, we need to start doing things differently on our main streets. I know you've put a, a great emphasis on main streets um, uh, in your time as, as, as Lord Mayor. So uh, I think this, this carries on uh, and expands a little bit of that focus um, uh, as well in conjunction with the other motion, which is on, on the agenda. It looks at ways that we can, um, without foregoing too much revenue, um, support the patronage of such of such a night market. So uh, I will be very interested to see what the administration comes back with. The um, uh, of course the what we did on on Gooch Street uh, by virtue of the um, what was that thing that we didn't really want to do and then we weren't doing it and we did do RCC. That's the one. Um, RCC the 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 the, the, the Gooch Street feast. All of that all of that support for the precinct plugged in there, seeking to uh, make the best of that situation, see if we can get an east end unleash type thing happening there in the western, um, southwestern corner of the city. So I think this builds on that. It's got the traders um, thinking and, and talking and uh, look, we'll be very excited to see what the teams come back with. Members, if not, go back to Councillor Ho to sum up. Councillor Ho? Sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried. Could I have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. I have 17.12, which is Central Market Car Park, Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord. Excuse me. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I would like to make a variation on my motion. Would that be all right? Okay. Yeah, and oh, sorry, I have not sanctioned. Only a few words changed, though. Investigate and provides a report to Council by 31st of July 2021 on options to provide free parking every Thursday after 5 p.m. in the Central Market car park to patrons who spend money in the CBD. Um, oh, sorry. 
free parking. My apologies. Uh, in the central market car park. No. Uh, so, sorry, Lord Mayor. Just, just in the last bit. Just to check, out an abundance of caution, noting that the Section 42 subsidiary, of which I'm a paid board member on the council, receives income from that car park, and this may be uh, cutting some of those income in the future. I just want to declare an actual conflict of interest, and I'll just pop out. Thank you. Um, uh, every Thursday, was that evening or sorry, after, said after, after six? five p.m. After five or after six? After five. After five p.m. Uh, indeed, please uh, delete to patrons who spend money in CBD. Yes, apologies. Just to be confused. Um, and the, yeah, I explain. I explain why. And yeah, can I see a second of this? So, well, just just a moment, Councillor Ho, just to see if I can accept that's quite a bit of a change. <laughs> Members, I'll seek a seconder. Councillor Kira. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Well, members, let me let me make it quite clear. The intention of this motion is to encourage more people to come to our city in the evening by sending them a clear message, which is free parking. We all know that the major reason why people don't want to come to the CBD because either they can't find a car park or just think that the car parking fee is a bit too high. I read the comments from our administration, and I must say the parking ticket validations it's not rocket science. If no cinema can do it, why couldn't we? So instead of offering free car park to those who come and spend it in the city, we might just be better off offer free car park to anyone who come to the city on Thursday evening. Just because we are unable to do that, do what no cinema can do. On Thursday night, we not only have the late night shopping, but might also have the night market in the, in the area. Quite often, we saw people just driving around and around in the area looking for a parking space. People not just looking for a free car park, but also looking for a place that is close enough to where they're going to go shopping or dining. If we, are if we are able to offer free parking in the central market car park, which is barely occupied on Thursday evening, we could, on one hand, send in a clear message to the public that we want them back to the city. We want them back here. On the other hand, encourage those, those staff of the local business to park their cars in Central Market car park. Therefore, leave all of those off-street parking for customers. Because people, believe it or not, if you go to the Central Market car park on Thursday evening after six, all right, there will be 10, 20, 20 cars parked in the park in their car park, whereas on the street is full and the restaurants are empty. So really, it is the staff who are parking on the street, whereas the customers, the customers driving around and around and could not find a park. What's the point to have our central market car park almost vacant over there? On the other hand, when you see the customers could not find a spot on the street, yeah, I know, after 5 or 6 o'clock, all the off-street parking are free anyway. But it's the staff from those businesses taking those car parking space on the street, where, whereas the Central Market car park on Thursday night are barely occupied. So, members, please support this motion and let the admin bring back some plans for us to have a trial and you see the outcomes. Thank you. Um, Councillor Ho, I'm just going to take some advice because there's several things in the motion. Yeah. Uh, one is that the central market car park is actually run by a subsidiary, ACMA, so we can't make decisions that actually will affect their budget because it's actually their decision and it hasn't been through the board. Um, the second thing is that in changing it from every evening and night to Thursday night and from taking it away from patrons who spend money, it actually changes the administration comment. So we have no information to inform us as to what the impact will be uh, of 
uh, particularly uh, in terms of the budget of revenue for the car park. So um, I might, with leave of the chamber, actually ask this to be put on notice at the next meeting so we can get the proper information to inform. Um, and in the meantime, we'll have to refer it back to ACMA for uh, some for, for some advice from the Central Market Authority. Well, in case for case, let's say next month will be in May, or can the administration get funding in line? Let me know whether or not they are still able to provide a report back to the council advisor in terms of July. It will be leaving this in the next video. I'm getting an undertaking from Acting CEO. Are you happy to? Right, that? that is the case, I'm happy to wish you and I'll okay. be back. Thank you, and I apologise for that. Um, it's just it changed it uh, in terms of the advice that I was able to. So that one will come back on notice in May. Um, and in the interim, we'll also get some advice from ACMA. Um, members, that takes us to... Oh, sorry, I need Councillor Hyde, wherever he's gone. 17.17. So, 17.17, Councillor Hyde. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I move to seek a second. I look for a seconder, members. It's the consultant's um, motion. Councillor Kerra. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor, and I know the administration comment um, uh, was unsupportive. Um, the administration know that um, nine times out of ten, I will agree with them and defend them to the hilt. On this occasion, it's not one of them. Um, I, as an elected member, uh, am accountable to my ratepayers and to my voters. Um, those ratepayers and voters came to me with substantial concerns over what appeared in the Prudential report, um, particularly on the bikeways. Um, and that's what got me thinking, well, $250,000 can be spent without us even knowing about it, really, to be honest, Lord Mayor. And, and I saw nothing really in, in those bikeways reports that was that much over and above what we already thought we knew it would be this and that and what have you um, uh, and and you know it is what it is and we've got rid of it but the fact we spent that much money in the meantime was really concerning to me. Um, I do appreciate that this level of transparency may place um, a slight administrative burden um, upon our staff. I suppose in response to that Lord Mayor I would say that I would have actually hoped a lot of this was being tracked anyway really. Um, and I would have hoped that, uh, assuming we use some sort of accounting software like Zero or what have you, that these sort of lines um, are kept in that and perhaps are easily to extract. If, if, if the administration comment is suggesting that we may need to look at more resourcing in order to get that done, um, uh, that's unfortunate. Um, I still stand by it because even if you had to um, spend a little bit more time pulling together all the information. Yeah, I think it is important for us to scrutinise. And as I said, and as I've said to um, members of staff, you know, it goes both ways as well. It's not just about us looking through line by line and thinking about, oh, well, why are you doing this and why are you doing that? If we ask staff in committee, well, why did you engage person X to do task Y? And they say, oh, well, um, we actually got rid of the person that did that because we didn't think they were that necessary. For example, for example, and then we as a council could have a have a think and, and we could think of do we need to actually talk to our CEO around more resources in that area? You know, are we are we actually at the point where we engage enough consultants in this area where we should be maintaining the capability and advice for that section in house? These are the sorts of questions, Lord Mayor, um, uh, that I do wonder about. Um, having the ability and being transparent uh, in, in looking at and looking at those consultants and who we engage and why we engage them, when we engage them, what the purpose is for, that will assist us as a council being in being accountable for that five million dollars in expenditure. 
Councillor Carrow, did you wish to speak? I'll reserve my right. Acting Sarah, do you want to make some comments? Uh, thank you to the presiding member. We do have the information. Um, so just to be absolutely clear, we do track um, our consultant expenditure. Um, what the admin comment was referring to was the length of time that it will take similarly in terms of how we report on credit card expenditure, um, just to um, make sure that the um, information is presented in a way that's suitable uh, for public um, display. Um, we are absolutely committed um, to um, being accountable for ratepayer expenditure. So just be absolutely clear and to do that as transparently as possible. So um, the admin comment was more in relation to the fact that this will take time. Um, sorry, I have Councillor Abraham today, then I'll go to you, Councillor Martin. There I do have a Slide a moment. Thank you. So it's uh, essentially point to what I've um, what I've suggested is to increase that threshold from two thousand to ten thousand, uh, and also um, uh, for those reports to be provided to the audit committee uh, quarterly. Um, don't necessarily want to tie up our staff with um, any internal red tape. Um, you know, I'd rather see them. Uh, spend time on, uh, on actual projects and, and delivering things rather than reporting, even though reporting is, a, is an important part of, um, part of the work, but uh, I feel that uh, this brings uh, some, some balance to, to this motion. Now, I need a second for, for that um, amendment, unless it's a variation that the oh, okay. movers... Yes, that's very happy. You're happy to accept. You're happy to accept. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Yes, look. Uh, uh, in light of that variation, could the administration advise uh, if its advice about the delays and additional costs are mitigated in some way? Um, not too sure. Obviously, with audit committee, there's um, therefore different um, approach in terms of um, needing to get um, reports together, get on the agenda, get public uh, published. So it's a different sort of level of resource impact, which um, yeah will impact more across the organisation. So a, a broader spread of impacts, you mean? Is that correct? Yeah, um, I would have thought so. Just looking at um, you know the processes that we go through to get our um, reports published. Thank you. Um, I'm, uh, may I speak? Yeah. Thank you. Um, look, uh, I, I won't be supporting this. Um, I have to say that I, I, I do understand the sentiment, and that is, and it's a common criticism I hear from business people, uh, one well-known business identity said to me quite recently, the first thing you guys have got to do is cut consultants. You don't need consultants, you're paying people to provide you with advice. I get that. But I do understand that there is a need for um, a range of uh, inputs uh, that are informed by experience that may not be within the organisation. And, and so um, I have to accept the administration's advice that it is um, using uh, consultants judiciously. And I know that it's planning to reduce ex expenditure on consultants by 20% um, in the, uh, the coming financial year. Um, I note also that tonight uh, much of the discussion has been about cutting costs um, and finding ways that we can present services um, that are reshaped, not necessarily of historic value, um, so that we can manage our finances better. And, and this actually, um, while it provides uh, some transparency in its original form, 
that is by providing a report to elected members is now in a minute so it goes to the audit committee um, whose minutes will not include this sort of information unless it's specifically requested and so the transparency that was sought is evaporated by adding the words audit committee unless we include specific requests to include the information in the minutes um, but moreover um, the administration is telling us that there is a cost in all of this um, and, and I have no idea of the dollar value, but it seems to be suggesting that uh, we are talking about adding substantially to their costs. Um, so uh, wh while I understand um, it is very difficult, particularly in the context of having considered providing, and, and I don't have any argument with any of the things that have been approved, but a toy library which was going to require money, um, thousands perhaps, um, uh, requiring reports related to uh, diversity and gender equity, extra cleaning in Mooter Street, um, and uh, night markets in Gooja Street. Um, uh, now reports related to central market free parking, which will have an impact on revenue. All of these things have been discussed tonight. So in the context of saying uh, to us um, uh, this evening, the majority members here uh, have been advocating that we tighten our belts, that we behave responsibly, and we have been generating enormous costs through these motions. Now, I understand we're not talking millions, and it may only be tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousand. But I do believe at this time, um, while it is important to have oversight, we do need to be cautious about the costs that we're generating. Councillor Kerr. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I will support this, um, having seconded it, um, but I will support it. I think that the, um, I don't believe that the, um, I don't believe that the requirements imposed A uh, to F um, are items that ought to be too onerous to include. I would expect that they were items that are already um, are present uh, in, the, in the administration's work um, and they ought to be really, but I, I, I just don't see that they're uh, so onerous that it outweighs the uh, transparency and the, and the, the benefit uh, that would be provided by this motion uh, to ratepayers. Uh, in having this this overall level of uh, oversight, and I think the ten thousand dollar increase um, will make a substantial difference to the um, time uh, impost. And I also think that look, uh, it is open to the administration uh, to come to us and uh, after implementing this change, uh, Lord Mayor, it's open to the administration to come to us and say we're having trouble. Uh, there is friction here. Uh, we need this to be amended or improved in some way. We we are very open, of course, uh, to doing that. Um, but I. I at, at this stage, I see that the variation in particular, uh, it looks to me that the uh, benefits are way there. Thank you. Okay. Members, if I can just draw your attention to a few things within this. Um, as per the admin co comment at point three, currently there's no delegation under associate director, um, whereas in uh, the, if, if you could scroll down in 1.a, it says that the approval for an associate director starts between 10 and 50. So that means anything between zero and 10 yeah, so, doesn't sorry, have Lord, an no, approval. No, no, so no, no, it doesn't. Um, it I should say that in my up opening, to, in my opening up to for, um, if I can just finish, if I can just finish, Councillor. Sorry. Yeah, Hi, sure, have you finished? Sure. Thank you. Um, so that should actually say to the, uh, up, up to the value up to 49,000 will rest with associate director, which is very clear that anything less than 49,000 is signed up by an associate director. Um, the other thing point that I would make is that um, we are not going to put names of approving officers. We should not be doing that, naming staff within our reports. Therefore, I would say, if you could scroll down, please, part E of the contracts approving officer, it could have the officer title but not name. Um, that's not how we do our reporting, so that we're naming staff publicly. Um, uh, while I also understand the sentiment behind this and the transparency around um, wanting to see where consultants are being engaged and uh, and what for. Um, I don't want us at this point in time to bind our 
administration up in, in further red tape to the point that they're actually not able to deliver on the work that they're supposed to be doing rather than writing endless reports for, um, for us to view. Um, so I would uh, ask for the amendment at uh, E to be a um, I either delete it or actually just have the title of the officer approving um, and that the delegation has changed. And I'll leave that with you, Councillor Hyde. I'll go back to you for that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that, Lord Mayor. I didn't intend for names to be in there. I meant for titles to be in there. So, also, I've forgotten enough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure why that, why why a job title is important if it's been signed off by an associate director. So it says what it's for, it says who the team that's engaged them. Why Why would you need the title of the person that's done that? Accountability. Mm, I, don't I think know, the why, accountability why is, why is sits within the administration. Officer, why is there an approving officer on the comment for each of our motions? So we know who's written it. So we know who's, this is so that we know Look, I don't, want to, I don't want to debate outside of my allotted time. But. Well, you'll find the contact off. There's a contact officer, which is the um, um, generally a director. Um, so, I mean, I, while I, while, and as I said, while I, I understand what um, council is trying to do, I, I'm very concerned that we're going to bind the administration up in further red tape. And there's a few things that need to be adjusted there. We shouldn't be we shouldn't be naming officers in reports. Lord, Lord Mayor, I, I will put to the mover whether he wishes to vary this to a initially seeking a report on these measures rather than implementing them straight away. Um, no. Uh, so uh, again, I'll ask the mover if that value between ten and fifty thousand can be amended. Uh, so yeah, up to. Look, I'm, I'm a bit befuddled, Lord Mayor. The report said implies. I never imply anything in my motions. Um, so, yeah, I'm happy to have up to, but if you're talking about having, having delegations that would otherwise sit with ADs, sitting with someone below ADs, it doesn't actually say that. And to my mind, that's not the implication. I'm just saying if it's, it needs to be AD and higher. If that gives the administration clarity on that point, then I'm happy with that. It was, it was I think never the thing about. is that there's no, otherwise there's no delegation under 10,000 is the point I'm trying to make. Right, 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 okay. Okay, because the only de delegation is with the associate director. There is no delegation below as an associate director. And therefore, who's going to sign off something if it's less than 10,000? Yes. That, that was the point I'm trying to make. So are you happy to make that amendment? And the second one is in terms of the contracts approving, I, I think, The approving officer is actually the associate director, um, so I'm not sure who, what, what it is. Which associate director? Whichever associate director is approving the, the con consultant, because that's that's where the delegation sits. I think the, the, the main point, Lord Mayor, is that I want to know from which part of the organisation this is emanating from and which team and department feels it necessary to engage consultants. So, You've got the team or department. You've it was, got the it was just to, it was to flesh it out and have a thorough. That's what it was there for. Um, yeah, perhaps actual CEO. Thank you. Perhaps to assist um, when we bring something to audit committee, if this motion is passed, that we ask um, the audit committee members to provide feedback um, on what this quarterly report looks like and the value it's adding in terms of transparency and accountability um, that the council members seeking. I'd be happy to advise the council. The so it really comes back to you. Yeah. Well, the 
Members, would anybody else like to speak to that? Councillor Martin. Yeah, question. Oh, a question. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, it is early in the morning uh, and I am a bit befuddled, but I did hear Councillor Kira say that this shouldn't involve too much on the part of the administration to provide this information. And I understand that the staff costs um, are referred to, but not itemised. Um, but is it correct that there will also be some financial cost in delivering this associated with systems changes? And does systems changes mean systems for handling information, including IT programs? I can see. Uh, thank you through the chair. Um, the admin comment does refer to potential system changes associated with implementing this decision. Um, I don't have, we can't be certain with regards to the system configuration required as an additional cost because um, we actually would need to um, work through that and then let council know through obviously QF or further down the track what the cost is if it would be more efficient for uh, the system to be um, reconfigured. So, sorry, and just an another comment that um, the report may have to stay in confidence because you've got the name of the consultant and the value of the contract. So, just, just to be noted. Um, members, would anybody like to speak? Sorry, Councillor Canol, you are waving madly at me. I did see you before. Apologies. Oh, I have your name written there. <laughs> I thought I was becoming the invisible man. No. But <laughs> now I personally can't support the motion um, because at a certain point, uh, my my questions around uh, asking about uh, uh, consultants, etc., is why? Why do you need them? Uh, what are the parameters uh, that we use to ask for consultants? Because again, we've we changed the organisation. Um, in that, uh, is that now have we taken out resources? I mean, there was a comment in between. So there's a lot of things we need to consider. There's reasons why you uh, why you get consultants in, and our business does the same, uh, but not terribly often. The point I'm making is that I, I'm not here to stifle the organisation. Uh, I need to be able to trust the organisation, and I don't really want to micromanage them by putting in things that are that are going to tell me just high level uh, information without necessarily giving me the why. And uh, so I, I don't need you to tell me you know, all of those other uh, crucial aspects about you know the, the, the amount that they're charging and who it is as much as why do you need them and is this a systemic issue is this something we can do or something differently uh, is that you know uh, just and hold accountability but I need to be able to trust the administration to deliver that to me and and, and that certainly we should be asking these questions and asking how do you get there and how do you define that and there must be then means by which the inside the organization they, they, they have a, a policy by which they use uh, to determine that yes we can we should use a, a consultant this is why this is uh, this is the outcomes we expect so these are all internal things um, certainly if uh, uh, you know and as obviously we have decreased the amount that uh, we're using consultants etc which is fabulous so, but again, it's a question I ask you, um, you know, how do you control all these things and, and what is that when we talk about contestability and all sorts of things. So uh, I need, you know, for me, it's about bringing that back to me and saying, well, this is how we do this, this is why, rather than necessarily just giving me a report, which is still only give me numbers and, and certain things, but it doesn't tell me uh, the reasoning behind it. And so the outcomes you expect and the, and the savings and the extra information that you're going to acquire out of that, because I mean, that's what you're getting consultants for, because that, that, that lacking within the organisation, whether it be resources, capacity or whatever. Um, and so I think, you know, and I need for myself, if I cannot trust my organisation to that degree, then I must question my organisation. And that would, that's a bigger question for me. Um, so, and again, it's about uh, 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 working with administration to pull it out, 
and then so that I can understand that because that I, that lens I can put over then uh, ongoing uh, uh, issues and ongoing uh, you know why we do things, and then I can I can delve into uh, the, the the core of what we're doing rather than just you know looking at the crucial numbers. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Where to begin, Lord Mayor? Um, the more someone tells me that they don't want to show me something, the more I want to see what it is. Honestly, honestly, the first thing I spoke about in this council chamber, the first Sorry. thing I asked questions of, no, that's just a statement about how I feel. That's not something that needs to be addressed. The more, the more. Sorry, I would just, to the presiding member, would just say you're linking it to quite an important point around transparency of public money. Mm. So I would just make that really clear that how uh, your first comment and this, it's really important that you absolutely understand that as acting CEO, transparency of how we spend public money is really important. It is important and that's the spirit within which I've brought this motion. And it's, it's, a, it's a long and sordid history just from what I've been able to see, Lord Mayor. Now, so let's say that we spend six and a half million dollars a year on consultants. Right. $6.5 million a year on consultants. The projects that I take issue with, the first one that I took issue with, sitting just over there, our first council meeting, first item that came up, draft sustainable event guidelines. Draft sustainable event guidelines. And notwithstanding, I may philosophically disagree with the whole concept. The issue I really took with it was that this council spent $150,000 engaging a consultant to draft those guidelines, which are not hard or fast rules, which were telling people to ship their event infrastructure in using trucks that have biodiesel, such stupidity. We would pay $150,000 for that work when we had 12 people employed in our climate change and sustainability departments here in Council at the time. That's the sort of stuff that I'm looking at. You may remember Lord Mayor coming into APLA. Coming into APLA were some uh, public realm changes around around the parklands and I think it was Jolly's Boathouse, or one of the boathouses at the time. And you would remember that that report actually never came to council. And it never came to council, I think, um, in part because of what uh, the feedback was at APLA. And that feedback was, we had a motion from Sandy Wilkinson to look at putting in a heritage gazebo and a heritage lamppost. And the, what happened from there was departments got hold of it, our designers got hold of it, they engaged consultants to look at the project and they said, oh, we need to do a bunch of other things here. You know, we need to look at some of the parking controls, take out some car parking for good measure just because that's what we do here. Um, look at the public realm, look at the drainage, look at how it goes into the river and what have you, right? So tens of thousands of dollars in consultants fees later, the project balloons out to a potential one and a half million dollar project and it comes into Applet and I, I asked them, so where's the gazebo, where's the lamppost? Oh, we thought it was outside of the scope of what we're looking at. If I go two more minutes, Lord Mayor, because there's lots of examples here. This is the sort of stuff I'm looking at. And when consultants reports come in to me in some capacity, whether it's Applet, Audit, Council, whatever, and I see money wasted, I see red. I confess, I see red when I see money wasted. And Councillor Noel wants to talk about a lack of trust. And um, I'll be honest, you know, there, there are parts of the process. It's not a lack of trust in people, it's a lack of trust in process. And process wise, I'm responsible for the dollars that are spent. This council chamber is responsible. And uh, this was a look at the look at the parameters with, with, within which um, the administration is spending that money. Now, um, Look, ultimately, Lord Mayor, if councillors don't want to be privy to that information and they don't want to interrogate that information, well, that's up to them. Um, that's ultimately up to them. And if they're happy for an amount of money to be spent, for an amount of money to be spent, which is greater than our operating deficit, as it was in the earlier budget considerations tonight, um, and not actually have a clear line of sight over that, that's their that's their prerogative. Um, the concerning thing is in the admin comment is not only have they vehemently defended um, uh, through the comment uh, uh, their 
desire to engage, to, to, to maintain the status quo effectively a lot of men. Not only have they done that, but they actually haven't given me, we talk about transparency, they haven't given me an alternative. They haven't given me another suggestion. Am I supposed to put a question on notice each council meeting and say, oh, how many consultants did you engage this month? Am I supposed to do that? Because that's the other thing, Lord Mayor. I come up with this because I see a problem. I try to solve a problem. And there are no alternative solutions that have been presented. And of course, we're going to see Council Martin for the first time ever vote against a transparency measure, which is the other, which is the other peculiar thing. But I come back to it. I come back to it. The more someone doesn't want to give me information, the more I want to know what it is. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Members. To the vote. Those in favour? Those against? It was a carry? Yeah. Okay, it was carry. Division. Division. Council members, the division has been called the motion. All those in favour, please stand, remain standing until no has been called. Councillor Carer, Councillor Ho, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Abraham today. Um, members, could I also encourage you at this hour, we only have two to go, that if you are looking at alternate solutions from administration that you might ask them or put forward your motion in a way that seeks uh, a solution from the administration on what you're trying to achieve uh, rather than um, directing the solution and then or directing something and then saying you didn't get an alternative. Um, we will go to the last two motions, 1720. Um, I think the quorum just collapsed. Councillor Martin. No, we still have quorum at six and I'm here. Oh, okay. That's all that counts. Um, Lord Mayor, um, I think this is partially covered by the earlier motion from Councillor Hyde. I'm certainly prepared um, to withdraw this pending the further advice by administration on the modelling that it will present in the long-term financial plan. If the administration will give me that undertaking, I'm happy to withdraw it. Acting CEO, are you happy to give that under undertaking? Uh, thank you, Presiding Member, yes I am. Thank you. That takes us members to 1721. Councillor uh, Martin. Yes, Lord Mayor, uh, I seek a seconder. Um, to the motion. Thank you. <laughs> Lord Mayor. Thank you. Um, look, this is just a request for information. It doesn't require much deliberation. I note that the administration is asking uh, whether I wish to see particulars in the sensitivity analysis report. That is what I'm asking for. If that information exists, that is all I'm asking. Uh, and I would believe that the administration would have run a whole range of interest rate sensitivities in the preparation of its financial reports. So that is all I'm asking for. Um, if the administration can provide that from the work it's done, then it requires um, uh, nothing along the lines of what I'm asking for. Um, well, it does actually. I'm asking for the results of modelling on interest rate sensitivities. So if that is already there, I'm saying um, nothing further needs to be said. Uh, acting CEO. <laughs> I'm not quite sure I understood that myself. Okay. If that's all it's saying, then nothing more needs to be said. No, no, Lord Mayor, let me, let me clarify. I have asked for the modelling on interest rate sen sensitivities used in the forecast for the long-term right. financial plan. Yep. The administration's then said, yes, we can do this and that and that. But should the council wish to see any particulars in the sensitivity analysis report, it is requested this be clarified in the motion. Now, if it is the administration saying to me, do I want to see the particulars of the interest rate sensitivity report, which it has already done, that is all I'm asking for. Great, okay. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Members? Uh, uh, actually, yes, I will. Um, I'm just, uh, just like to say that I support this motion. Um, it's part of good business practice to do so. Um, I, think, I believe that uh, the, uh, you're saying that the administration have really done work in this area. And uh, uh, so um, I think it's something that all companies or businesses that I know always do um, as part of their uh, forecasting. So I think it's a, I support the motion. 
Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Hyde. Um, just as I'm incredibly pleased that councils tonight voted to reduce its borrowings over the next 10 years by well in excess of $100 million. Um, I'm very pleased also to ask for this extra rigour around uh, what the scenarios may be if interest rate rates went up. Of course, we don't think we're really going to go down. Um, uh, so very, very interested to see this work. Members, if not back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. And I thank um, Councillor Hyde for now explaining that the exercise tonight was about reducing borrowings by $100 million, which is what I believe uh, the exercise was. But nevertheless, um, this is um, important uh, information. It simply enables us to have a bigger picture of uh, what might lie ahead um, if, uh, if there are variables that we have not considered. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, can that be minuted as unanimous? Members, are there any motions without notice? Uh, 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 on that note, we will close the meeting. Thank you very much for your attendance tonight.